Becoming Alpha, written by Akair Samar. Helena Hope. There were hunters in the forest. That's what everyone was saying. But I didn't know what that meant. I only knew that my parents were away and my brother and I were all alone. They had a job to do, a responsibility to the pack. But I was afraid. They will be okay. My brother told me. They are hunting the bad men, and then they will come back and everything will be alright. He insisted, but I had a bad feeling. I couldn't sleep. I kept watch at the window, hoping to see my parents coming back, but I saw nothing. I eventually fell asleep, and woke up to a heartbreaking howl. Is that dad? I asked my brother. It sounds like him. My brother sounded scared, and was never scared. I don't hear mom, I said, expecting her answering howl and not hearing it. Come here kids. My grandmother called us. We have to wait for your father to come back. Something happened, something bad. I said. I know. My grandmother answered, and it wasn't what I was expecting. I wanted her to say that everything was okay and not to worry. It took another half hour before we could finally see a group of warriors coming to the pack house. I saw my dad in the front, and he was carrying mom in his arms. I ran out and went to him, but he ignored me. Mom was not moving. I called her and she didn't answer. Mom, mom, wake up. What's happening? My dad had a blank look on his face. It's like he couldn't see me. Dad, what happened? Leave him alone. One of the warriors said in a hushed voice. He is not in a good state of mind. The hunter shot your mom, and she didn't make it. I heard him, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. I followed blindly behind my dad, and it was only later that I realized what everyone was saying. Mom was dead. She was killed. Dad was in mourning. His true mate was dead, and part of his soul was gone. I was crying for my mom and for the future, and for whatever was going to happen next. My father hid in his office for three days, and only came out in time for my mom's funeral. I stayed by his side all day, trying to seek comfort from him, and I think he was able to find some comfort in me. He hugged me and kept me by his side, his hold at times painfully strong, as if he was afraid I was going to disappear at any moment. Everything was weird for a few days after that, but I didn't realize how much until I tried to get out of the house by the end of the following week. Where are you going? Dad asked from the door to his office. I'm going with my friends to the river. After being inside the house for so long, I needed some air, and my friends were willing to try and cheer me up. You can't go out, it's dangerous. Dad said, his eyes a little crazy. I'm not going far, just to the river. I repeated. No. My dad roared so high that I'm sure he was heard all the way downtown. You won't go anywhere by yourself the world outside is dangerous, and I won't lose you till you will stay here. If you want to go anywhere, you need to let me know with time to spare so I can make sure it's safe, and to get a few warriors to escort you. It's only to the river. I repeated, dumbfounded by his change of attitude. It's dangerous. He yelled, coming at me and grabbing me by the arm, dragging me back to my room. Stay here. I don't want to hear that you left for any reason, understood. But dad. I tried to protest, but he wasn't listening to me. No excuses. I'm only trying to keep you safe. He left, and a while later I heard some of my friends coming over. Dad said that we couldn't go out, but we could hang out in the pack house. I didn't like it, the feeling of being trapped, but I wanted to be understanding. He was afraid after losing my mom. I thought that I could endure it for a while, but it only got worse after that. After a while, I couldn't even go to school. Since high school was outside the territory, we were such a small pack. I started being homeschooled, 
and my dream of going away to college was looking farther and farther away. My brother leaving was the final blow. He was already old enough to go looking for his own true mate, which meant traveling to other packs. He was also under our dad's control, but being of age, he had more freedom to do what he wanted. He left under the cover of night when dad was sleeping and unaware. He left me alone to face him, his anger and his fear, and his control got tighter and tighter until I couldn't even leave the pack house unless it was with him by my side. But dad didn't like to venture outside during the day, and at night, he ran in his wolf form, looking for hunters or other threats that were not there. My dad was losing his mind, and I was trapped with him. For the first years, my grandmother was there to keep me company, but then she also died heartbroken, both for the daughter she had lost and the power she had missed. Before dying, she gave me my alpha name, Hope. She told me I was the hope of the pack, and that I had to face my dad, and make him understand that fear was not the way to lead. The pack needed a strong leader and alpha, that could protect and guide them. My brother was gone, and he had never shown any desire to become the next alpha, so it was on me. I had to become the alpha of the pack, and for that, I needed to become stronger, something that I had no idea how to do, not locked inside the pack house, under the watchful eyes of every warrior in the pack and my dad, who wouldn't let anything touch me for fear, I could be hurt. Hope. What's going on? I asked one of the pack warriors as I heard a commotion outside the house. It looks like the prodigal son just returned. He said with venom. No one liked my brother, after he had gone away without waiting for our dad's approval. More than anything they hated how it had affected him, making him even more paranoid, if that was even possible. Did he find his true mate? I asked because I knew that was what he was looking for. Looks like it, he is not alone. He came with a girl and an older man. Maybe her father. I don't know we will have to wait to know more. He said, we had to wait because I couldn't get outside, not even to greet my brother. I hated the situation, but I thought it could be a good thing. I was still angry at my brother. He could have at least told me about his plans. I more than anyone understood where he was coming from. But more than anything, I was feeling a little conflicted, since I still loved him. Even if he had abandoned me, I cared for him. I had been so alone, and with him gone, it had been so much worse. I wanted him with me, and he had left me behind without a word. He could have helped me, but only made things worse, for my father couldn't risk me leaving too. I had been twelve when my mother died, only fourteen when my brother left, and fifteen when my grandmother died. I was just a few months from turning eighteen, but I knew that under my dad's rule, I wouldn't be able to escape as my brother had done, not even with him back in the pack. I saw my dad moving towards the door, flanked by a couple of his warriors. I moved behind him, but I only got as far as the terrace, my path blocked by the pack warriors. I was sure that he had issued orders about me, before leaving the house. I see you are back. My dad greeted my brother, without warmth in his voice took you long enough. I couldn't stay here. I needed to be free. I needed to grow to be the person I was supposed to be. My brother replied, his voice full of challenge. I hated to see them fighting, but I also understood. Did you find your true mate? Dad asked, looking at the woman next to my brother. I found out something during my travels a true mate is a liability. You had one and losing her made you crazy and weak. So I have a chosen mate. She is everything I would like to have in a partner. She will make me stronger not weaker. My brother explained, but that sounded crazy to me. Fool, you have no idea what you are talking about. A true mate is a gift, and something that makes you stronger. 
Dad replied, with conviction in his voice, even despite the pain. I didn't go looking for a true mate. The older man said. I chose a mate, and it worked very well for me. From what your son told me, you lost your way and your mind when you lost your true mate. I'm here to free the people of your insanity. I challenge you for alpha of this pack. How dare you? Is this the reason you brought him here? To take what's mine. You will regret this. Dad said to my brother, and I could hear the rage in his voice. That worried me. I had just found him again. And I was sure my dad would drive my brother away again, if they kept fighting like that. I'm doing what should have been done a long time ago. You are no longer suited to lead this pack. And I know that I'm not ready to take your place. But I found the right person to lead us. My brother said, and I felt shivers down my back. I couldn't believe what was going on. But I couldn't go outside. I couldn't do anything but watch, as they started preparing for the fight. I couldn't believe that my brother had brought an outsider to challenge dad. But part of me understood where he was coming from. We were all limited by my dad's commands. I was getting the worst part, being locked inside the pack house. But the whole pack had been restricted. But there were other ways. He could have tried to talk some sense into him, instead of trying to get him out of being the alpha. I watched as they set the limits for the fight. My dad was not willing to back down from a fight. But I had a bad feeling about the whole setup. I couldn't even recognize my brother, the indifference on his face, as he observed the preparations. It took them a few minutes to change to their wolves, and they both looked huge, telling me that the other guy was also an alpha. I tried to get outside to get a better view, but I was detained by my bodyguard. It's dangerous outside please, let your father take care of this. It will be done in no time, so don't worry. He said soothingly, but I couldn't help but feel afraid. I do worry and that's my brother there. I need to talk to him. I replied, trying to get outside. Please, my orders are to keep you inside where it's safe. As soon as your father takes care of them, he will come here and bring your brother. Then you will be able to talk to him. I wasn't so sure about that. I didn't like the look of the man that had challenged my dad. I tried to get my brother's attention, but he wasn't looking in my direction. He was only focused on the fight. There was a fairly big crowd gathered around, and they were all silent. No one was cheering my dad, or saying anything at all. I felt scared and alone. I knew that the pack wasn't happy with the way dad was handling things. But I never thought they would be so apathetic, if he got into a fight. No one was cheering on the other side, but neither they were cheering on dad, and he was their alpha. The warriors at least looked invested in the results, but I wasn't sure what they were thinking. They were very good with their poker faces. As the fight progressed, I realized that the challenger was in control of the fight. It looked like dad had the upper hand. But in fact, it was the other guy, who had everything under control. When dad started to get desperate and increased his attacks, the challenger finally took the initiative and attacked. It was so fast that I missed part of what was going on. I just saw once he had dad by the neck. I saw the blood spilling and dad trying to break free, and being unable to do so. My dad's movement started to get slower. And then it became obvious he had lost. Why isn't he letting go? He won. I asked. Looking with horror as my dad stopped moving. Some fights are to the death. The warrior said. I didn't let him hold me back again. I ran outside. And by the time I was down the stairs the challenger. Had already let dad go. His body unmoving broken. Dad. I ran and knelt next to him. Setting my hands on his fur, shaking him, and trying to make him react. Dad. I knew he was gone, but I refused to believe it. He is gone Helena. My brother said. You're free now. Why?
Why would you let something like this happen? I asked him. He was sad. He needed help. But he didn't deserve to die. But he did. He was a bad alpha. He lost it when mom died. This was for the best. My brother said in a calm voice that made me want to hit him. How can you say something like that? He is your father. You will see how things will be so much better now. We will have the alpha we deserve. Don't worry, everything will be better now. He said with the same calm voice, as if everything was going to be just fine. But it wasn't. I didn't even recognize my own brother, and dad was gone. I had no idea what was going on. It was a nightmare. A nightmare I couldn't wake up from. I think I screamed, and I know I cried. But most of what happened next is just a blur in my memory. Hope. For so long all I wanted was to get out, to be free of my dad, and have a normal life. But in all the scenarios I saw, I never imagined that he would be gone. When I woke up in my bed, I almost believed it had all been a nightmare, and that I would find him once I got downstairs. I changed as usual and made my way to the kitchen, expecting my dad to be there with his warriors. But it was my brother and unfamiliar faces that I found. Good, you are awake. My brother said. I'm sorry, you were kind of hysterical last night, so we had to sedate you. He added, explaining my foggy thoughts and the fact that I didn't remember going to bed last night. My dad died yesterday. How did you expect me to be? I asked with just a little resentment in my words. Dad was crazy. He had to be taken down. It was for everyone's sake. He said, his tone begging for understanding. The problem was that there was not an ounce of remorse in his words. I don't even know you anymore. I said, feeling a little sad and overwhelmed. I had wished for my brother to return. But I had never expected something like this to happen. Is that your true mate? I finally asked, looking at the woman by his side. No, she is my chosen mate. True mates are a problem. Their link is so strong that they can't survive each other. It was what ended our dad. He couldn't survive losing his true mate. So I chose a woman that's perfect for me. His words felt rehearsed, hollow. But still, there was conviction behind them. That's crazy. I couldn't help but say, and I could tell that none of the people there agreed with me. They were looking at me with diverse feelings. I got hostility from his chosen mate, curiosity from the new alpha, and lust from the new unfamiliar face. I did this for you to you know. My brother said, a little angry. I wanted to help you, Helena. I go by hope now. I corrected him. Grandmother named me before she died, and since she was the alpha before dad, her word stays. You don't need an alpha name, little girl. The new alpha said. Maybe she does. The other guy corrected him. If I'm going to become the next alpha, and she agrees to be my chosen mate, she will need an alpha name. Excuse me, I had to be mistaken. There was no way he had just said that. That's my mate's brother, and since I don't want to be the next alpha, he might take my place. My brother said, as if that wasn't a big deal. Have you lost your mind? What had happened to him while he was away? It was ridiculous what he was saying. First you throw your true mate away, and now your rightful position as the heir of this pack. And what about me? What if I want the position? Your father lost to me, so now the rightful heirs are my children. The Alpha spoke for the first time. But danger is right, you could be a good partner for him. But you are young, not even 18 yet, you have time to get to meet him, and make up your mind. But being his chosen mate, might be your only chance to be an Alpha in this pack, that now belongs to me. He smiled. But it wasn't a good smile. It was predatory and dangerous. I turned to walk away, disgusted with the situation. Where are you going? 
I thought you were going to join us for breakfast. My brother said. I lost my appetite. I replied as I walked back to my room. It wasn't until I was inside that I realized I should have walked outside. It was just that I had to remain inside for so long that I didn't know anything else. Not five minutes later, there was a knock on my door, and before I could answer my brother opened the door and offered me a plate of food. You need to eat. And we need to talk. I kind of understand that you are upset. I left you alone with him, and I guess he convinced you that he was right in what he was doing. He started. I knew he was wrong. I was practically a prisoner in the house. But I also knew where he was coming from. He needed help, not to be killed. I tried to reason with him. There was no other choice. Doom knows a few cases like this, and it never gets better. My brother said. Who is Doom? I asked. Our new alpha. He looked at me, as if I should have known this. He shouldn't be here why did you bring him here? If you didn't want to take control of the pack, then you should have left it as it was. Doom is the brother of the alpha of another pack. He was working as the beta there, but he needed more. So it all worked out. Again, it was as if my brother couldn't understand what he had done wrong. No, it doesn't work out at all. He killed our dad. How can you be so casual about that? Losing our mom wasn't enough for you. I wanted to hit some sense into him, but I couldn't move. We lost both of them that day. The man our dad became. He wasn't our dad anymore you should know it better than anyone. He became so focused on keeping us alive that he forgot to let us live. There was bitterness in his words, and I knew he was right about that. Still he had gone too far. It was just for a few more weeks, then I would have turned 18, and I could leave for a while, look for my true mate, and then come back, maybe take over. That had been the plan for a long time. Something I had spent hours discussing with my grandmother. A true mate is not the answer you might think it is. And what if your true mate is not alpha material? You will see that this was the best option. You might not like it right now. But in time you will. Now eat something and rest some more. We will have a party this afternoon to celebrate our new alpha. He said again dismissing my feelings. With that, he left, and at that moment I hated him, for everything he had done. For leaving me, for betraying our ideals, and taking a chosen mate, for putting an outsider in charge of our pack, for causing our dad to die, but mostly, for pretending he was doing me a favor. I stayed in my room most of the day, but when I saw out of my window, that people were gathering, I decided it was time to get out and see what the rest of the pack thought about this. Glad you decided to join us. Our new alpha son said, and I just ignored him and kept walking. But he came and grabbed me by the arm. I know that losing your position as the pack princes is difficult, but you can get it back very easily. You think that's what I'm worried about? I don't care about that my dad just died. Why is it that no one was getting that I was mourning? From what I heard, he wasn't a very good father. You should be glad he is gone. He said as if they had done me a favor by killing my dad. You know nothing. Stop talking nonsense and leave me alone. I told him, almost yelling and getting some attention. One of my dad's warriors moved closer as if he was going to offer help, but stopped before reaching us. I pushed the infuriating man away and got free, then walked away from him. No matter how you play it, you will be my chosen mate. Mark my words, I always get what I want. His words were both a threat and a promise, and I hated the fear I felt because I was afraid he might be right. I didn't like it, but there was not much I could do about it. As the son of the Alpha, he had the upper hand and I feared what that could mean for me. I felt very alone at that moment. Hope. I watched as everyone around me celebrated the new Alpha. 
I felt betrayed by that, but everyone was so animated that I started to realize that I wasn't the only one suffering from my dad's paranoia and felt bad about it. Still, how could they accept the new Alpha so easily? He was just a usurper that had taken something that didn't belong to him. And what kind of Alpha name was Doom? That didn't sound very comforting. Even if I didn't like him being here before, learning his name only made me feel worse. I could feel the Alpha's son moving behind me, and I wanted to kick him and push him away, but I didn't want trouble, not yet. I moved among our people, and soon some of the warriors moved closer, not stepping between me and the usurper's son, but close enough to send a message. I felt glad to see they still held some loyalty to me. Everyone there was happy to see me. I could see their pity, and didn't like that, but I knew that they at least cared for me. A few even offered their condolences for my loss but most of them just congratulated me on finally getting out of my prison. I wasn't sure what to say about that. I was happy that I wasn't under my father's control, but I loved him and wanted him back. What I wanted from my brother was his help healing our father and teaching him how to be himself again, not to murder him. I couldn't ignore the facts. It was my brother's doing even if he wasn't the one to deliver the fatal blow. It was hard to love someone so much and hate him at the same time. But mostly, I was so disappointed in him. Maybe it wasn't fair, but I wanted him to be my savior, and he let me down. Thank you all for coming today. The new Alpha called. I know it's been a few difficult years for you all, but I'm here to right the wrongs of your last Alpha. At that, many people cheered, and I felt awful. Were people really that unhappy with my dad? Today will begin a new era. You will see some things starting to change, starting with more freedom. We will no longer be restricted by fear. But we will be prepared to, all men will be required to train to become stronger, and able to protect themselves. Also, I want to point out, that the legacy of this pack, won't be lost, as my daughter is mated to your old Alpha's son, and I hope that my son will find the same happiness with his daughter. I know he kept talking, but I wasn't listening. How dare he? I wanted nothing to do with him and his family, but people were clapping and cheering at that, some looking my way with smiles. Asi, everyone thinks is a good idea. The monster's son whispered in my ear. I pushed him away and ran back to my room. It was the first time in a long time that I was able to be outside, but all I wanted was the safety of my room. I heard a few concerned calls and one of the warriors followed me to the pack house, but no one followed me inside. I didn't think anyone understood what I was going through. The only one who should understand me was on the side of my new enemy. I could hear the party going on. People celebrating my father's death, while my heart was breaking into little pieces. A while later someone came to my room. I expected it to be my brother, but it was the new Alpha. I saw you leaving. He said simply, In a few weeks, I will be able to leave and look for my true mate. I have no interest in your son, and I doubt he will be my true mate. I hope so, at least. It would be incredibly cruel for him to be my true mate. True mates are overrated. It would be in your best interest to give my son a chance. I could make that an order, but that's not my style. Instead, I will give you a choice. If you want to retain this room and your life as the pack's little princes, you will have to spend at least an hour of each day with my son. Otherwise, you will be given a room in one of the barracks and will have to start working. He didn't even give me a chance to reply. He left, closing the door behind him. I was shaken, with everything that had happened. I never considered that I wasn't going to be allowed to stay in my room anymore. It had been mine since the day I was born. I knew I would have to leave it eventually, but it was something in my future, once I left the pack. 
I even believed I was going to be able to return one day. But I had options. I didn't want to go to the barracks. Once upon a time, the barracks had been the place where the warriors lived and trained for the good of the pack. Then things and needs changed and the warriors were given proper houses. The barracks then became something else. Most were unused and the ones still being inhabited were used to house those who couldn't hold a job or were deemed not useful to the pack. Pack law didn't allow for homeless people within the territory, but it didn't say anything about the kind of accommodations they needed. Still, I wasn't going to let them manipulate me, so I started to pack my stuff. I was pretty certain they wouldn't take that from me. It was my personal stuff. But just in case, instead of taking everything I owned with me, I hid my most precious things in a safe place for later recovery. It had taken me a while to hide what I deemed important and pack what I thought necessary but expendable. Mostly my clothes and a few things that I needed for my every day. I was just preparing to go outside when my brother arrived. What are you doing? He asked as he saw my bags. Your new friend threw me out of my home. I said, with all the venom I could. It seems that with the new alpha here, I'm no longer allowed to stay. I don't believe that. He said, You are my sister, and my family has a place here. No, he said it very clearly. I will be moving to the barracks for the time being. I replied, The barracks? That place is awful. No, you must have misunderstood. Let's go talk to him. He grabbed me by the arm and dragged me back downstairs, not giving me a chance to protest. I was still holding one of my bags, but there was still more stuff I wanted to take. I just hoped I could go back for more, or convince someone to get the rest for me. Hi darling. My brother's awful mate smiled at us, as if nothing odd was going on. Where's your father? I need him to clarify a few things for my sister. He said with urgency, not returning his mate's flirtation. I'm here boy. What's wrong? The Alpha asked. My sister seems to think you are throwing her out of the pack house. My brother said. I told her that things have changed, but she is allowed to stay here as long as she wants. He said. I see. It was a misunderstanding. He said, finally letting me go and looking satisfied. Really? I can stay here. No conditions. I asked the Alpha. Is it really that awful to spend some time with my son? He asked. Yes. I yelled back. I'm giving you a chance at a better life. You would prefer to lose all your privileges than to spend an hour with my son. He asked his tone threatening, as if daring me to say yes. But it was a dare I took. I hate you. I hate your daughter and I hate your son. I think it's better if I go. That way I won't have to see any of your stupid faces anymore. And I want to make this very clear. I don't want to see, talk or spend any time with your son. He better stay away from me. I said, ignoring my brother and trying to walk away. You are being unreasonable. These people came here to help you, to free you, and you are being rude to them. We are your family. My brother yelled at me. No. My family is dead. My mother was killed by a hunter, and my father was killed by the man you love so much. And you, I don't know who you are, but you are not my brother, you are a stranger. At the last part, I heard my voice breaking, betraying the pain of losing my brother. I don't want to do this, but you are leaving me no choice. My brother said, before slapping me so hard that I fell and my world turned dark for a moment. You will come to understand that this is for your own good. Until you can start making better decisions, we will have to make them for you. He dragged me back to my room, and once there, he locked the door. I was right back where I started, a prisoner in my own hope. There was no point in trying to break free. I had already spent years trying that and it was useless. 
I only needed to bid my time until I could be free of the pack and the new Alpha's ties. In the meantime, what were a few more days of isolation? I had always believed that I wouldn't be able to get out until my 18th birthday, and that hadn't changed. I had already showered and changed when I heard the door opening. I turned, expecting to see my brother, but it was the Alpha's son who entered, carrying a food tray. What are you doing here? Can't you understand I have no desire to spend time with you? I asked him. If I say my presence is required in exchange for giving you food, will you say you prefer to starve? I just glared at him, and he laughed. Yeah, I told my father that would happen. No worries, I will leave your food and get out. But, you should give me a chance, I could be a good mate. My sister and your brother have no desire to inherit the pack. But I do. And if you do to, being with me is your only choice. I could fight you for Alpha. I said, only for him to laugh even harder, as if I was being ridiculous. From what I've heard, you have never trained. You were a pampered princess locked in her tower. I have trained since childhood, and since my father wasn't the Alpha in our previous pack, I needed to find a way to become one. Your only chance is to be my mate. I will treat you well, and this way. The pack will continue in your family. He leered at me, and by his smirk, I could see he believed his words. If I'm unlucky enough to be your true mate, then I will agree to that. But if not, then I will go find my true mate elsewhere, and then come back and take back what's mine. I challenged, but he wasn't taking me seriously. True mates. Would I joke? You should understand that's not your best choice, but anyway. I will leave you to eat and will come back later. You will have to talk to me, every day, for as long as it takes for us to become friends. I wanted to point out that's, not the way to make friends, but I realized that it would only continue our talk, and encourage him to keep thinking we could be friends and even more, so I remained silent. I wasn't sure that I wanted to eat but I needed to for my health. Once he left, I went over my options. I wanted to stay in my pack. I wanted to be the Alpha. My grandmother had named me Hope. She taught me I was the hope of the pack, and most people seemed to believe that before the new Alpha arrived. I wanted to live up to those expectations, but for that, I needed to become strong enough to reclaim my pack. Something that I couldn't do here and couldn't do alone. I needed a plan, and I needed to find help. Maybe talking to the warriors could help, they could train me, or at least give me pointers on what to do. But there were many flaws to that plan, starting with the fact that warriors were loyal to the Alpha, and if the Alpha found out what I was planning, he wouldn't allow me to train. What I really needed was to get away, and be able to get to a safe place where they couldn't influence my actions. I needed to mourn my father, but having them so close only made me angry, and that wasn't helping. Just like before, I needed to be free, only now for a different, more important reason. I had practiced being alone, but this time it felt different. I missed my father, no matter what he had done. Even when he was being unreasonable, he always took his time to let me know just how much he cared for me. I was staring out of the window and contemplating my life circumstances when I saw people outside running to the pack house. I just knew something big had happened. I was curious and a little angry that I had no way of knowing what was going on. I saw people coming in and out of the house for a while, and then I saw a car coming in. It wasn't one I recognized, but I could tell that it was a new, expensive model. Two people got out, a man and a woman, and by the way, they were looking at each other, I could guess they were a couple. The car drove away, but I didn't know if there was just one more person or two inside. I was intrigued by their presence, and wanted to know who they were. But since I was locked there was no way for me to find out and I refused to ask about them, if it was that guy who came again. 
I decided that no talking would be a clear sign that I had no interest in him. Luckily, it was my brother who next opened the door. You are going to join us for dinner, but you need to behave. It's very important that we present a united front. He said, looking over his shoulder. Why? He seemed very upset, and I felt worried about him. The Uber pack is here. I think they are trying to take over the pack. He said, closing the door behind him and moving closer to me. I know you are upset, but right now it's very important that you don't talk to them. You must remain silent and avoid saying anything about what happened here. He sounded almost scared. The Uber pack doesn't take over packs. They are supposed to be like a police or something. I pointed out. They were mostly a legend, and not many people had contact with them. My father had talked about them a few times, mostly angry at them for not taking care of the hunters before they killed my mom. That was before. Recently they have been very involved with other packs, and I heard that recently they even took over a pack. First, they sent a couple of their warriors to check the place and then using the excuse that they had found problems there. They challenged the Alphas and took over. You don't want that to happen here, do you? He asked, staring at me with intensity. I wasn't sure. Would it be better to have the Uber pack in charge of the pack? I felt like it would be more difficult to take it back from them, since they had a lot of backing. I thought that it could be better to just keep my mouth shut for the moment, and avoid their attention. Then I would be able to come back and take over the pack. Everyone knew that the Uber pack was just as strong for any simple pack to stop them. If they wanted to take over, they would do it. But they couldn't just do that just because they needed an excuse, and I wasn't going to give them one. So, what do I need to do? I asked. Just follow my lead and try not to talk bad about Doom. Just acknowledge him as your alpha and tell them that you have no objections to him being in charge. I could see him reading the objections in my face. At least for today. Try to be agreeable, okay? He pleaded with me. I'll try just keep your brother-in-law away from me, or I don't respond, okay? I hated to think they would take advantage of the situation to try and force me to be with that guy. Seriously, what's your problem with him? He is a good guy. You should give him a chance. I just glared at him, and he sighed. Okay, I'll talk to him. But please, try to keep an open mind, and overall, act a little less grumpy. I can't promise that. I said. But I would try. I had to start by keeping the pack safe from the Uber pack. Then I would find a way to keep it safe from Doom. My brother could see that I wasn't convinced. But after a moment he nodded and took a deep breath before opening the door. Get ready. We must go and meet the Uber pack representatives. Hope. At first sight, they were not what I expected from the Uber pack. But then I moved closer and I felt them. Their strength was making my skin crawl. But I was glad to see it was the same for the rest of them. Everyone looked uncomfortable, including the Alpha. Nice of you to join us. Now we can head to the dining room. Doom said. Hello, I'm Rachel. This is my true mate, Ice. The woman introduced herself and her mate. She was smiling warmly and it was hard to imagine someone like her could be here to take over the pack. Risk, remember, you're an alpha now. Use your proper name. The other one reprimanded her, but his tone didn't have a bite. It was more a tone of exasperation, as if it was something they had discussed earlier, and was still bothering them. It's weird getting used to that. She complained, but with a smile on her face. It was unnerving how she kept smiling. I'm Hector. This is my sister Helena. My brother introduced us. Hope. I'm Hope now. I reminded him, and he turned to me with a glare. S.E. That's how it's done. She accepts her alpha name with pride. 
The guy told his mate. Hope, that's an interesting name. Rachel said warmly. I wasn't sure if that was a ruse, but I felt like I could like her. My grandmother gave it to me. Shortly before she died, that's why it is important to me. I explained. I'm sorry for your loss. She said, her smile finally gone from her face. So what's your relationship with the Alpha? Ice asked. To this one? I asked, pointing to Doom. None. I'm the daughter of the previous Alpha. After their father went crazy, the boy got away and visited a few packs, my own included. There he found my daughter. When he explained the situation here, I agreed to help. Doom said, as if he had done us a great favor. And what was the situation? He asked. My dad went crazy after mom's death. He started to get overprotective, insanely so. For a while, it was just his desire to keep us safe. But then he started to restrict our movements. We couldn't go to school, then not even get out of the house. I escaped when I turned 18 with the excuse of looking for my mate. But my little sister had to stay here, where she was a prisoner. That's awful. The woman said. I knew it was out of love. I tried to defend my dad. But it was difficult. But now, thanks to Doom, we are both free. I had to clench my teeth not to respond. But I knew it was not the time or place to say what I really thought about all this. So it looks like this was all done correctly. The guy from the Uber pack said, almost to himself. So, are you going to take over the pack after Doom? He asked my brother. I don't know what might be me, or my mate's brother. We expect him to mate with my sister, so it will still be in the family. Well, true mates can be so random, but good luck with that. The woman said, and I noticed how nobody corrected her saying that true mates are not good. Food was brought out and we started eating. They kept talking about the pack and Doom's plans for it. And I tried to look happy when all I wanted was to get out. The couple congratulated him on his decision to allow girls to train for warriors and on other of his plans for the pack. I felt sad having to admit that most of those ideas were good. Some were things that my father had forbidden after my mother's death, and some were things that I guessed they had in their previous pack. One thing he wasn't saying is that he didn't believe in true mates, and therefore, he was going to forbid our people from going to other packs to look for their true mates. He was going to force us to choose mates within the pack. We have prepared rooms for you. We can take you there any time you want. Doom said. That's so kind of you. But we would like to take a walk before going to bed. The woman said. Of course, of course. Do you need a guide? Someone to show you around? Not today. But maybe tomorrow. The man said. Why not you? He asked me. My sister has spent the last few years locked in this house. Maybe one of our warriors would be a better guide. My brother said. I would offer myself. But I spent a few years away too. So I can't help much either. That's okay. We can see about the guy tomorrow. For now. We will just walk around. He said. Stepping out. I wasn't sure what to do. Since my brother had warned me about the risks of losing the pack. I didn't want to run out. Or try to escape and attract the attention of the Uber pack representatives. But I wasn't ready to go back to my room. Why don't you and my son head out for a walk as well? Doom asked. I would prefer to return to my room, and be locked away than to spend more time with him. I answered. Why do you despise me so much? He asked. Why do you even care? Just leave me alone. I want to find my true mate not settle for the son or my dad's killer. I actually felt guilty after leaving them, like I was in the wrong for not wanting to be with him. But I had my reasons, and they felt valid to me. I needed to be more open-minded and wait until the full moon ceremony to see, if there was a chance, we could be true mates.
because if that was the case, I would do my best to accept him. But if not, then no one would force me to be with him. I understood where my brother was coming from. It was scary what had happened to my father. But I still could remember how happy our parents had been when they've been both alive. And I couldn't help but be reminded of the love you could feel between the uber pack couple. That's what I wanted. I wouldn't set for anything less than that. I wanted to be one with my mate, because something that could hurt that much, had to be worth it. As time went by and no one came to lock my door, I started to feel hopeful. I waited until it was dark, and jumped out of the window with my backpack, where I had put my absolute must-haves. I knew of a place where I could hide it, in case, I could get a chance at getting away. It was looking more and more as if I was going to need to take drastic measures, if I wanted to get away. They were convinced that I would be happy staying here, and doing what they wanted me to do. But it was not that different from before. Only before I was under my dad's thumb, and now I was under the power of people that I didn't know. I managed to get to the hollow trunk, and hide the backpack, and I was on my way back, when one of the guards found me. Hope. What are you doing here? The new alpha said that you couldn't be out unless. Unless his son was with me. I needed some fresh air. You know how much I needed this. But I can't stand him, so I got away by myself. They are not that bad. He said, and then blushed when he realized what he had said to me. I guess not, I know most people are happy with how things turned out. But it was my father. You know, no matter how mad I was at him, it's not easy to see him gone. I said, I could see him looking at me with pity, and I hated it. I think, and I'm sorry if I'm overstepping, that you miss the person you wish your father was, and not who he actually became. He was a great leader when your mother was still alive, but lately, he was a completely different person. He was not the best alpha for us. And doom is. I couldn't help but ask. But once I did, I feared the answer. He is a better choice, but he isn't our hope. He smiled at me, and I knew what he meant. I don't know if I truly deserve that title. I said. But you do, of that I'm certain in time. You will be an even greater alpha than your father. But for that... You must find the right partner. I know what Doom wants. But if you think his son is not right for you, then don't let them force you into accepting him. He said, confirming my thoughts. I won't but I have to wait. If there is a chance that he is my true mate, I need to try. But not until then, and never if he is not. Good, now. I'm afraid I need to take you back to the pack house. And I will have to inform the Alpha that I found you outside. I understand you are just following orders. I accepted as I walked back to my pretty prison. There was no one there when we got back. I knew everyone else would be sleeping. I also knew that the guard would inform Doom of my late night walk. I needed to be brave and don't allow him to force me into anything. The years I had endured dealing with my father's grief had prepared me for this. I wouldn't succumb to their antics. I would do my best to prove to everyone that I was the Pax Hope. Dagger. Welcome back, cousin. I greeted Ice. It had been just a few days, but it felt like longer. It was never the same without him. It's good to be back. I really like our trips. But there's nothing like being back home. I smiled. So, how was the trip? I only knew the basics, an alpha had killed another and taken over the pack. Most of the time we didn't bother with things like that. But after what had happened with Menace's pack, we needed to make sure everything was by the book. It seems legit. The alpha had gone mad and the new one challenged him as a way to save the pack. It was the previous alpha's son, who asked him to do that so it was done correctly and for a good reason. The pack seems happy with the change. I don't know. Risk interrupted. There was something of about the whole thing. I felt like they were keeping something from us. 
and the previous Alpha's daughter. She looked really uncomfortable. Like she wanted to tell us something, but was holding back. Her eyes were unfocused, like she was looking at something in the past. But you heard her brother. They did it for her. She was practically a prisoner under her father's control. Ice replied, dismissing the comment. And still, she didn't look that happy or that free for that matter did you notice how she was always being followed. Risk asked, staring at her mate. That first night, the warrior that escorted her back to the pack house looked more like he was dragging her back inside than like he was just making sure she was safe. If she was treated as a prisoner before, maybe she was being reckless about being outside and they were bringing her inside for her own protection. I suggested. I don't know I never got the chance to talk to her alone. Risk said, and she sounded sad about that. I didn't see the need to be truthful. Ice added. We can go in a few weeks and see how things are going. I don't think there's any need to worry. I said. I'll go debrief with our parents and grandma. Then we will see what to do. What are you up to? Ice asked me, leaving risk concerns behind. It was not that he didn't care about his mate's opinion, just that sometimes he worried she was too worried about everything. I'm thinking of going to visit some packs, maybe attend a full moon ceremony. I said, trying to sound casual, looking for your true mate. Risk asked, yes, I'm starting to feel a little lonely. I had to agree, but I know that if it's destined, it's going to happen like with you too. Yes, it will. Ice agreed. I walked away. It was hard to be around them when they were looking at each other like they were each other's world. Besides, it was my turn to train the warriors. I loved the energy and the chance to be with others. And it distracted me from the fact I still didn't have my true mate with me. The Uber pack is full of alphas, the kind of people that can't be in other packs because they are too strong to follow a weak leader. But my family is not weak, and we need to keep reminding everyone of that, to keep the peace in the pack. Boss, what's up? Carla, one of our youngest greeted me. It's true Ice is back. Yes, he is back from his mission. I wanted to go with him. She pouted. I bet she thought it was sexy, but in truth, it was kind of annoying. I wasn't sure what to think about her. She was always trying to get closer to me and ice. But it felt like she was only following us for a chance to climb the ranks. It was not the way it worked, and it was time to remind her and the others about it. I let my alpha aura out, as strongly as I could. To the stronger ones, it would only be uncomfortable. For others, like Carla, it was unbearable. I could see her almost collapsing to the floor. Others were also reacting. Once I had everyone's attention, I dialed it back a little, but not cutting it completely. Hello everyone. Are you ready for today's training? I asked but didn't wait for anyone to respond. Well start with a run through the forest in our human forms, and then, we will change back to our animal forms, and do a little tracking. I'll race you all to the lake. I say, before starting to run. I needed to burn some energy, and this was a good way to do it. I was fast, but I also knew my limits and how to push them. At first, some of the others were running along with me. One even got ahead for a while. But the distance was long, and soon most of them got tired and started to fall back. Some went all the way to the group in the back. Others were able to maintain their speed, but no one could keep my pace. By the time they started to arrive, I had already been there for a few minutes, and had been busy preparing everything for the next step. As wolves, hunting was a very important part of our lives. When we were in our animal forms, our instincts were very strong. It was important to train in both forms, to help them become better warriors. As part of the Uber pack, we also needed the training to keep our places in the pack in check. 
We were full of alphas, most in here, could have their own packs if they wanted, and because of that, it was important to help them burn their energy and show them their place. Only a few of them were truly unstable, but for the sanity of everyone, it was important to keep everyone aware of who was stronger than whom. And it was important for me and my family to show them we were on top, or they would stop listening to us. The betrayal of one of our own a few months before had shaken us all. It wasn't like we were going to start mistrusting everyone, but it made it clear how important it was to maintain the status quo. Even Grandma had made a visit to the training grounds and shown some of her strongest warriors why she was still the alpha of the pack. I knew that my parents and my aunt and uncle had done something similar, just to remind everyone who was in charge. I also noticed that since we had started to take a more active role in policing the rest of the packs, we were all happier. It gave us a purpose, something to do without time other than focusing on ourselves. I said a few things for you to find in the forest. I said once everyone in my group had arrived and had a few minutes to rest. First, you have to change to your animal forms and then get the scents from here. I pointed to three rags with scents on them. With this, you must track the scent and bring back here what you find. I didn't need more explanations. It was something we usually did as exercise, and they already knew the routine. They didn't waste any time shifting to their wolves' forms and going after the prize. The winners usually just got bragging rights as a prize, and for most of them, it was enough. And I liked that this was more about their abilities and not their strength. We did plenty of sparring and ranking fights, but we also needed to keep other talents. Some of them needed better incentives, but for now, all they needed to do was to follow my orders and do what I asked them to do. Sooner than I expected, a cream-colored wolf ran back into the clearing where I was waiting. It was being followed closely by five others, but he reached me before the others with the rag I had hidden in the forest. We have our first winner, I announced to the annoyance of the rest of them. The second and third ones took longer to arrive, but they all returned before sunset. The rest were already in the water, playing and relaxing, and soon everyone was there, letting of steam and just being young. I was happy with the results, they all looked relaxed and more secure in their positions, and without bloodshed, which was always a plus. I knew that soon I was going to have to schedule a tournament, but for now, exercises like that were enough to keep the peace. I went to join them, being careful to keep my alpha aura in check to not set anyone of. It was time for camaraderie. While I was there, I couldn't help but think about Ice's last mission. Some of the settings reminded me of Menace's circumstances, and it was odd to me that the children of the former Alpha were okay with the new one. How terrible did you have to be for your own children to be happy you were dead? And not only accept, but encourage another Alpha to take over your position. It was definitely an odd situation, one that I would have to go and investigate. It wasn't fair that Ice got to have all the fun. I wanted some of it for myself. Hope. I didn't trust the new Alpha. I couldn't. For some reason, his words sounded fake and his actions were always suspect to me. The fact that my brother worshipped him also had me on edge. I couldn't stand his adoration for the man that had made us orphans. At least I was no longer limited to my room. I had been granted access to the rest of the house, but I needed an escort if I wanted to go outside. The problem was that they weren't giving up. I was still required to spend some time with the Alpha son, at least during meals. I had made an art out of ignoring him, but it didn't seem to affect him. He still kept talking to me and approaching me as if we were best friends. Not being the top dog in the pack teaches you to be humble, you know. He was saying to me, Dad says it's a good exercise if you want to become the Alpha.
because you know how it feels to follow orders, and therefore, you are better prepared to lead. He was smiling, but I could see his frustration at my lack of response. I had to admit it made certain sense what he was saying, but still, something didn't feel right about him and his family. My brother was sitting on the other side of the table with his mate, and for once, the Alpha wasn't eating with us. It's also part of the reason most future Alphas like to travel, to get a sense of what it is not to be in charge. My brother said. I ignored him too. You are being so childish, sis. The silent treatment. She exploded when I ignored him too. I'll talk when I have something to add. Preferable, when I'm no longer a prisoner being forced to be somewhere kind of kills the mood. I said. Well. I would think you would be used to it since our father kept you locked in here for years. He replied and I hated that he kept bringing that up. What he did was wrong. But he did it out of love and concern. Not to try and force me into a future. I don't want I told you. If he ends up being my true mate. I will accept him. But I'm not you. I will not settle for anything less than my perfect fit. I said. But I could tell I missed the mark. He didn't care about my little dig. He truly believed he was in the right for getting a chosen mate. You will be risking yourself to the same heartbreak our dad suffered. You could go crazy like him. It's not worth it. He said sadly, and I wanted to shake some sense into him. But I could see it would be pointless. That's not for you to decide grandma said. That our dad was broken. That he blamed himself for what happened, and that not being able to accept reality, is what drove him to behave the way he did. But for most, it's not like that she lost her true mate, and was able to survive, the same as many others. No, I won't settle for less than what I deserve. And what if you don't find him? My brother asked. I won't stop looking for him, not until I find him. That will be difficult, the Alpha said, stepping into the dining room. Especially once I stop the exchange with other packs for the true mate ceremony. What, you can't do that? I replied. I can, and I will. But that won't make me change my mind, and will affect everyone in the pack, not just me. I couldn't believe he was being so irresponsible and hurtful to his pack. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for everyone we have been slaves to the true mate myth for too long. It only makes you weak, and I plan for this pack to be strong. Stronger than ever before. I want us to be able to face anyone, even the uber pack. You are crazy. No one can face the uber pack and win. They are absolute. You are crazy if you think you can win against them. And why would he need to face them? It made no sense. I had no idea what he was planning, but I didn't like it. You don't have to like it. You are not the one who gets to decide. Now, if you were to accept becoming part of the family, maybe in the future, you could be part of the alpha pair, leading the pack, that if your brother decides not to fight for the position. He smirked. He knew my brother had no interest in becoming the Alpha, leaving the position wide open to his son. I have no idea what you are planning, but I don't like it. It doesn't feel like you have the pack's best interests in mind, and people won't like it. They will leave to look for their true mates, if you don't allow people to come here. I tried to reason with him. That's what you think. But after watching your father losing his mind, most of them will be happy to ignore the cal of their mates, and find one of their own, without crazy instinct getting in the way. You don't seem to understand just how much damage your father caused this pack. I'm surprised you still deny reality. He told me. For a moment, I considered his words and almost believed them. But then I realized he was just messing with my mind, and that I couldn't allow him to do that. Well. You are free to think that, I suppose, but that doesn't change facts. I will only accept him, if he is my true mate, if not, I will leave and look for him.
I got up and walked away. I was done with them. But as usual, they weren't done with me. My brother also got up and started following me. I'm happy with my chosen mate. He started. Happier than you could imagine. And I chose her because she is perfect for me. When you make decisions based on instinct, you have a bigger chance of making a mistake. I made my decision using my mind. Pure logic. That sounds so romantic. I said. That's the point this isn't about romance or fairy tales. It's about reality. About making the right decision. To have a better future. To be truly happy in the long run. He said as if he truly believed that. No. What you are doing is protecting yourself by settling down. You are so afraid of being hurt. That you are letting go of true happiness. You only think you are happy because you denied yourself the opportunity to find the perfect person for you. You are being cautious. No, you are being a coward and hiding behind this nonsense. I thought you would understand, but you don't you have no idea of what a true mate really is because all you have heard are the stories you have been told. But if you used your brain, you would realize that they are nothing but a weakness and a shackle holding you down. You should really reconsider your options. You will only be happy if you do what Doom is asking. I knew that talking to him was pointless. I wouldn't change his mind and he wouldn't change mine. Instead, I walked to the river with him following in silence. I had so many memories of our family here. We used to have picnics next to the river. We sometimes went into the river for a swim. But only when our parents were around. Since we were close to the rapid, and that could be dangerous. I remembered all the talks I had with my mother and her stories about the river. I wasn't sure if my brother still remembered the same. He was so focused on the bad stuff. But I couldn't understand his attitude. He wasn't here for most of our dad's paranoia. He left as soon as he could. Why was he so convinced he was right? Something just didn't make sense about all this, and something told me that it was Doom's fault. I just felt like I was hearing Doom talk, when my brother was discussing true mates. I wish I understood him better, but since his return and what felt like his betrayal, I haven't been able to act toward him as a sister would do. We weren't the same as before. He felt like I wasn't being grateful enough. For what he felt was an act of kindness to me. From his point of view, he was my savior. But from mine, he had conspired to kill our father, a sick man in need of help. He had made me an orphan. I felt so alone, and like no one was on my side. Even those who were willing to help couldn't betray the new Alpha. So I had no one in my corner. I miss the old days. I said to break the silence. I miss my brother, who understood me and was on my side. I am your brother, and everything I do is in your best interest, believe me. He sounded so sincere that it brought tears to my eyes. If only I could feel the same way if only I could believe his love. You have a new family, and no matter how much you try to force me into it, it's not mine, and it probably never will. You don't get it. But you didn't free me from my cage, you only changed it. I wish you could understand me. I pleaded, looking for the brother I used to know. I do know what's best and believe me, you will thank me for all of this some say. He said with such finality, that I knew how pointless it was to keep talking. My brother was truly gone, and I had no idea who the man in front of me was. Dagger. I was glad to have a new mission. But I wasn't sure what my parents and grandmother were thinking when they assigned me. This was supposed to be my cousin's mission. I said said everything looked fine on the outside. But Risk had a feeling something was not right, therefore. I was sent to investigate more about the situation as a neutral party. That's how I ended up in Doom's previous pack, asking about him. Welcome to our pack. Devil. The Alpha of the pack and Doom's brother greeted me. I could tell right away that there was something damaged inside of him. 
It was nothing easy to see, but it was there. Was this what Risk had noticed? Was there something odd about the brothers? Thanks for having me. I said formally. Was there a choice? He asked through gritted teeth, some aggression emanating from him. There's always a choice, but you know I'm not here about you. I'm here to ask about your brother as you know. He got himself a pack. I was watching him carefully, waiting to see if there was envy or anger about his brother's new position. Yeah, I know all about that. That pup, Hector, came here a few months ago, and fell under my brother's charm. But let's go talk inside. He said, looking around as if searching for spies. I followed him to this office. He closed the door and locked it. If I wasn't sure I was stronger than him I would have worried. There was something about the whole situation that didn't sit well with me. So, what do you want to know about my brother? Did he do something wrong? The way he asked was as if he was expecting me to say something bad about him. Not exactly. He took over the pack by following the rules. He even got the heirs of the previous Alpha to support him. I said, wondering if he didn't know or was trying to confirm things. Yeah yeah. He has always been charming. If he had been able to take this pack from me, everyone would have accepted him without protest. He said bitterly. So he tried. I asked. He did, but not in the usual way. He tried to turn people against me. But he has weird ideas that people just didn't agree with. He said and I felt like I was finally going to find the piece of information I needed. What kind of ideas? I asked. He blames true mates for what he calls our pack's weakness. We had a big family. Unlike most alpha families, we were five siblings, all alphas. Three males and two females. Our parents couldn't keep their hands of each other true mates all the way. Only problem, my mom was human that I wasn't expecting. I knew it was possible, but with so many wolves around, it was almost unheard of that we would pair with a simple human. And the fact that they still managed to produce alphas was remarkable. She got sick, and dad was focused on her all the time. My brother felt like he was not taking care of our pack as he should. But then I found my true mate and dad decided to give the pack to me. Doom tried to challenge me, saying that I would be as bad as our dad, but failed. Did you allow him to stay after the challenge? I asked. It was odd since most alphas would have kicked him out. That's how many of our recruits ended up in the Uber pack, after having failed to take over a pack. Most alphas didn't want to have a possible challenger in their own pack. Of course, he is my brother. And then the rest of my siblings found their true mates and started leaving. I wanted to keep at least part of my family with me. Then he said he had found his true mate. Only later we found out that wasn't the case. The one he joined was a chosen mate. He lied to us, so we wouldn't talk him out of it. Why did he do that? I asked. Well, by then my father had moved to one of the human cities so he could give our mom better care. And we were fighting another pack that said that we were invading parts of their territory. That particular conflict took years until my daughter turned out to be the true mate of that pack's heir. So we decided to stop the fight and are even considering joining the packs. Once my daughter and her mate take over, since we are both small packs, it's doable. He reflected, and I had to admit that was a good way of ending the conflict. I also felt annoyed that was another problem my pack hadn't been aware of. And let me guess, your brother didn't like that. I guessed. Of course not. He took it as a sign of weakness. He wanted us to take over, not compromise. So when Hector came here and talked about his father, crazy from the pain of losing his mate, your brother decided to take care of it. I guessed. I'm sure that for him it was a win situation. He always believed 
He could be a better alpha than me. And he has the charisma to lead. He actually caused a few issues here, with people trying to put him over me. But since the only way of taking control is through a challenge, it never went anywhere. Do you think that his new pack could be in any danger? That was the important thing. The issue we needed to address. My brother doesn't have bad intentions. I think he is trying to prove that he can be a better alpha than me. But he is most likely going to try and force his ideas on others. How well this will work, I have no clue. By the time they left, Hector was really into the whole true mates are a bad idea school of thought. But from what I understand, he found his true mate here. At least that was what I understood from Ice. No, he chose my niece as his mate. But he never found his true mate. In a way, I don't think he was really trying. It was kind of traumatic what happened to his parents, and he was ready to buy into my brother's nonsense. He was angry, but I wasn't sure if it was at his brother or the situation. I have a bad feeling about all this. I said out loud, even if that was just my thought. If I really thought my brother was a bad guy, I would have dealt with him a long time ago. He only has weird ideas, but he is not really a bad man. He will try his best. He said, this time his aggression turning to me, and I had to recognize he was a loyal brother. He was conflicted about all this, divided between his loyalty to his family, and what he believed was right. Thank you for all of your help, I said, knowing that I had all I needed from him. Staying for longer could end up with us fighting. His mood was too unstable. I hope you are not going to try and get away. He said. The new moon ceremony will be in a couple of days. Why don't you stay? There are a few strong females here. You should try and see if one of them is your true mate. I wasn't sure how to take his invitation. But it was tempting. I needed to find my true mate and you never knew where you could find her. I still have a mission to complete. I tried, but the more I thought about it the more I wanted to stay. I wanted my own true mate after all. It's just a couple of days. You could also talk to a few more people here, to try, and get a feel of who my brother is. That's your mission, right? He was back to calm and collected. I let myself be convinced of staying at least until the full moon ceremony. It did turn out to be a good idea to do a few more interviews. People seemed to be divided between loving Doom and being wary of him. It looked like he had a campaign against true mates. I knew that if Menace had heard him when she first found her mate, she would have agreed, even if she had a very different idea about it now. It looked like some people in the pack had started to avoid the full moon ceremony, to avoid accidentally finding their true mates, afraid of becoming weak. True mates were one of the basics of our culture, and it was worrisome that someone was campaigning against it. From what I had found from his talks with other kinds of shifters, it was our true mate culture that had helped wolves become the predominant shifter kind. Others were on the border of extinction, because not all matings resulted in shifter kids, only a true mate bond could warranty a shifter heir. Devil's Pack was proof that true mates were important to keep our kind growing since even a pairing with a human produced shifter kids. I liked running with another pack, even if I had to suppress my power to avoid intimidating the other wolves. The only downside was that despite my hope, I didn't find my true mate. It felt like a waste of time, and it was hard to hide my disappointment. I decided to go back to the Uber pack for a day, or two to report my findings, before moving to investigate Doom's pack. I needed to go incognito, if possible, to see how things were going. It was not always easy, but I felt it was necessary. Doom had been very careful with ice, so I had to assume it would be the same with me. If I wanted to find the truth, I needed people to open up to me. I had to agree with risk on this one. 
There was something odd about Doom. It didn't mean that what he had done was unlawful, or that there was any reason to think that his actions hadn't been correct. But I was worried about his attitude about true mates and the impact it could have on his pack, Hope. It was finally the day of the full moon ceremony. I was both eager and afraid. It was my chance to find my true mate. But I hoped it wasn't Doom's son. My problem was that there was no one else in the pack that I could imagine being my mate. I was an alpha and needed an alpha mate. The upside of the situation is that I would finally be an adult and I would be free to do what I needed to do. Doom wouldn't be able to keep holding me there as I wouldn't be a minor anymore. I already had my dress ready and went to the ceremony with so much hope for what would happen. But I was also sad that it wasn't my dad who was there to see me become an official member of the pack. The full moon ceremony was another thing my father had restricted. We all gathered as usual and shifted into our wolves to howl at the moon. But only the warriors could run through the forest. The rest of us had to stay where it was safe. Now, for the first time in years, we were all going to go for a run around the territory. I walked outside, and I could feel the excitement in the air. For many of us, it would be the first free run in years. Welcome everyone. Part of being a pack is sharing experiences. That's why we celebrate the moon, and why we run together, letting our instincts lead us for a while. It's how we become one, how we become strong. By letting our most primal part be free. Today is special because we welcome our Helena. I glared at him, and he smirked. I mean, our hope as an adult. Come here. He called, and I moved reluctantly. Everyone, let's welcome her and accept her. I'm glad that I can finally run with you all as an adult. I said, and people cheered and congratulated me. I felt accepted and happy. You are one of us. You have always been, but now it's official. Doom said. And tonight we truly become a pack. We run together. We run as one. Now, shift. Shifting was always a weird experience. But I loved it. It was like letting go of your worries and problems and being free. It had been hard with all of my dad's restrictions. Because the animal part of me didn't understand that. But now there were no limitations. Despite the warnings that it would be difficult to find my true mate, I couldn't help but move toward the single wolves, trying to see if one of them was my other half. But no one felt special or different. It was all the same. I felt relieved and sad at the same time. I knew I needed a strong mate, and none of the single wolves in the pack really filled that description. We started running, and I let myself be guided by my instincts, and the happiness of being able to run without restraint. I could feel the same happiness coming from the rest of the pack. As time went by, the wolves started to separate into groups to go explore. I started to notice a wolf following me, one I didn't recognize. Granted, I didn't have much chance to see the other wolves. But I believed I knew most of them. This one wasn't familiar at all. I just knew that it was Doom's son. I wasn't going to let him get close to me. I started to run faster. I didn't like the idea of him being close to me. And I was sure that he was not my true mate. All he inspired in me was rage and contempt. I was keeping my distance from him when another wolf cut in front of me. I was surprised to recognize my brother. The moment of hesitation as I tried to avoid running into my brother caused the other wolf to be able to catch up to me. He jumped on me and tried to push me to the ground, trying to dominate me. I fought back, but he was bigger and it wasn't easy. At first, he was trying to just make me submit to him. But when I fought back and hurt him, he changed and started to really fight back, and try to hurt me. He scratched my side and managed to get a hold of my neck. It was easy to see what he was doing. I must either submit to him, or have him tear my throat out. 
I was acting on instinct alone. I wasn't thinking of consequences or what could happen next. I just knew that I would never let someone like him be over me. I kept fighting, not taking into account the danger I was in. He was bidding down, already drawing blood, when another wolf growled in warning. When he let me go, I pushed him away and started running away. I didn't notice that he had managed to open a wound on my neck, or that I was bleeding from my side, until I started getting dizzy. I could hear wolves running behind me, and I got afraid. I kept pushing to run faster and faster back to my house, but I could feel myself falling back. A couple of big wolves came out of nowhere and flanked me, only spiking my fear and making me push myself faster. I was too far gone to notice those were warriors and that they were protecting me, not trying to attack me. I reached the clearing behind the pack house and started shifting. That helped close the wounds, but I had already lost a lot of blood and started falling as soon as I tried to stand up on two legs. Easy there. One of the warriors was already back in human form and ready to catch me. What happened? I was attacked, but I didn't recognize the wolf. I said, and it was partly true. I didn't recognize him, but I suspected who he was. Are you okay? My brother asked. He sounded worried, but it had been his fault too. What's wrong with you? You see a wolf hunting me and you help him. I yelled at him. It wasn't like that. I never would do anything to hurt you. He insisted, but his words sounded hollower every time they said them. Then what was it? I demanded. His wolf was courting you and you overreacted. He said. He almost killed me. I yelled at him again and got dizzy as a result. I was too weak. I had no idea how bad the wounds had been, but my neck felt tender, even after the shift. The wounds were closed, but the process of fixing the open flesh had consumed a lot of energy and calories, and there was nothing to replace the blood I had lost. I'll take her to the clinic. One warrior said. She needs to be checked over. I'll walk her there. My brother said, moving to where I was, and I flinched away. No, you did enough already. I replied, moving away from him. It was not that I was scared of him, I was wary. He was no longer my family, he belonged to Doom now, and I wasn't sure what he would do for him. He had sold our father to him, and it looked like he had no trouble selling me out to him too. I tried to head to the clinic, but after a few steps, I started falling. The warrior lifted me into his arms and carried me. I thought of protesting, but I knew it wouldn't be a good idea, since I would most likely be unable to walk on my own. I hated feeling so weak. It felt like I always ended up being the weak one, and I hated it. I wanted to be strong, strong enough to face my enemies and beat them. And I hated to even think about it, but my own brother was among them. What do we have here? Sylvia, the old healer of the pack asked. She was attacked during the run and lost a lot of blood. Not much to do, let's get some food into you, and I'll prepare in for a good night's rest, and you will be as good as new by tomorrow. She said cheerfully, easing my fears. Thank you. I said, as they put me into bed, and prepared the four. The healer came with a cup of broth, and I accepted it gladly. I was starving, and my body ached. I finished my food and was falling asleep, when I heard voices coming down the hall. I heard Dune's voice and prepared myself for what was coming. I had a feeling he was going to put the blame, for what had happened on me. There you are. He said as if he had been worried and felt relief at seeing me. I heard what happened. And? I asked. If you hadn't overreacted, it wouldn't have gotten so bad you know it's harder to control our instincts when we are in wolf form and my son only wanted to court you. That was not courtship. He attacked me. He wanted me to submit to him. I said, 
Already knowing it wouldn't change his mind, he had already decided that the fault was mine. He wanted you to accept him, and dominating you was his wolf's way of doing that it's not his fault, that you fought him back, and it ignited his instincts. But don't worry, you won't be shifting again. That way everyone will be able to keep a cool mind. No shifting. What do you mean no shifting? I had a very bad feeling. Until you and my son reach an agreement, it will be for your own security to stay in human form. Right now it's a request, but I can make it an order if you need it. I'm an adult now, and I can make my own decisions. You can't force me into anything. I challenged. As long as you are part of this pack, and I'm your alpha, you will have to do what I tell you to do. That's how this works. Then, I renounced this pack. I said, feeling a little sick. It wasn't fair, it was my pack not his. But this was the only way. No, you can't do that. He said angrily. And it won't help you if you think I will let you walk away. You are very mistaken, young lady. You will stay here in the clinic until tomorrow, and then you will be going to your room. It seems you are used to that. You might even like it that way since you refuse every chance at freedom that I've given you. I'm no longer part of this pack. You will have to let me go. I insisted. I could feel my ties to the pack breaking, as the conviction behind my words started the process of me breaking free from the pack. Well, if you are not part of the pack, then you are an invader. Would you prefer to go to prison? I'm sure a few days in a cell will change your mind. He threatened. Alpha. A nurse greeted him, walking inside and holding a needle in her hand. The healer asked me to give her something to rest. Go ahead, I'm done here either way and keep an eye on her. Let me know as soon as she wakes up. We'll do Alpha. The nurse put whatever she had into my fore, and before I could further protest, I was already asleep, Hope. I'm not sure how long I was asleep, but I was back in my room when I woke up. I felt tired and very hungry. I got up and opened the door, and found one of the pack's warriors standing there. He was avoiding my eyes, and I could feel how uncomfortable he was. Let me guess, I can't leave. I said. I'm so sorry, but those are the Alpha's orders. He said, and he sounded really sorry. We have been in the same position before. But at least my dad did it out of concern for me. But I had no idea why Doom was trying so hard to force his son on me. It was such a weird situation. Yeah, I understand. Nothing you can do against Alpha's orders at least could you get me some food. I'm starving. I asked, knowing full well that I needed to rebuild my strength. Of course, I'll let your brother know that you are awake. He said and closed the door. I sat on my bed and I felt the spear trying to get a hold of me. I felt like crying but refused to do that. I just needed to get out and find the right place for me to start again. I needed to become strong enough to reclaim my pack. Anger was winning over despair. By the time the door opened again, it was my brother, carrying a tray of food. I wanted to throw it in his face, but I needed it, so I had to accept it. It's good to see you are feeling better. He said, and I glared at him. I know you are angry at me, but I was actually trying to help you. Don't. I said. Just stop lying. Everything you are doing, you are doing for yourself. It has nothing to do with me. Well, yes, it's about me. But only about how you can better use me for your own gain. I don't know what happened to you while you were away. But you are not my brother. Don't say things you might regret later. He warned. I won't regret saying the truth you betrayed our father and you betrayed me. That sicko almost killed me. Mostly because you helped him. I'm faster than him. I could have avoided him long enough to remain safe. But you got in the middle. And it hurt so much that it was my brother who had done that. I felt like I could trust no one. 
you were only inciting him more. Running from a predator only wakes his hunting instincts. He tried to justify himself. Then you could have stepped between us and stopped him, instead of helping him. It's clear you don't care about me. Stop it. He screamed and he scared me a little. All I do is for you. Even if you can't see it just stop being so stubborn and give him a chance. You will see you will be much happier with him. You only need to give him a chance. I felt like it was not him talking. But Doom, he was brainwashed. And why should I? He is not my true mate. I get you don't believe in that anymore. I said before he could interrupt me. But I do, and you should respect that. You just can't see clearly. Give it some time and you will see this is for the best. As part of this pack, you have an important role, and to keep the peace. But I'm not. I cut him, and I could see he didn't understand. I'm no longer part of the pack. I cut my ties with it last night. At least I thought it had been the previous night. For all I knew I could have been out for days. I want to go. You can't. He sounded desperate. S.C., you are not better than our dad. No matter how much better than him you believe you are. And Doom is even worse. It's not like that. Stop trying to make us the bad guys. We are only trying to protect you. And what do you think dad was trying to do? I asked. Just try okay. Give us a chance. I won't do anything for the people who are keeping me prisoner. I said, and I stood up. But I moved too fast and I felt dizzy. When I saw Hector's worried face, I exaggerated my dizziness, and I could see that my brother was genuinely worried. What's wrong? He asked, and I acted as if I couldn't stay on my feet. Helena. He grabbed me and hugged me closer to him. I didn't even try to correct him anymore. I don't feel so good. I said. Let me call the healer. He said. No, I'm okay. I said and acted as if I was trying to stand by myself. No, you're not you need to be checked. Maybe you got me out of the clinic too soon. Why don't you take me there? The fresh air might even help a little. I said. And I could see that he didn't like the idea. But he finally agreed. I still think it would be better to have someone come to you. But just so you see that I worry about you and care about what you want, let's go there. We started walking outside, but I kept most of my weight on him, still acting, as if I was going to faint at any moment. I was feeling nervous, not really sure what I was going to do, only knowing that I would only have a chance at getting away, and I had to take it. I knew that my brother was not going to let me go, without a fight, and that I needed to time my escape very carefully. I couldn't allow him to go after me, I needed time, a head start. I didn't like that I would have to hurt him, and badly, if I wanted to get away, but I couldn't stay. Once we were outside, and on our way to the clinic, I started to search around for something to help me, and I found something that could work. Let's stop for just a moment. I asked while moving toward a three. Just a minute to catch my breath. I said. I can carry you to the clinic. He offered. No, please. I want the fresh air. I insisted, and he accepted. We were at the back of the pack house, and I didn't see anyone around. I knew it was because of the hour. Not many people were outside at that time. And I was in luck because of that. I was leaning against the tree, waiting for my brother to be distracted. It didn't take long. He has always been very impatient. So he turned his back on me and took a couple of steps away, looking around, as if expecting someone to walk and help him with me. I took the chance to jump and hold onto a half-torn branch of the tree and then used my body weight to break it completely using the same momentum to bring it down on my brother. He started to turn when he heard the noise, but he wasn't fast enough to avoid it. It was a big branch and a heavy one. It hit me on the shoulder and it hurt. 
but I knew it was worse for my brother. I let the branch fall over him, knowing it would take him a few minutes to recover from the blow, and then get free from the tree branch over him. I only took a second to make sure he was all right, and then I started running. I only took a quick detour to grab my backpack, the one I had prepared with a few essentials, and then I ran towards the river. The river was the limit of the pack's territory, but also my best option for escape. I had been thinking about my mom and the river all day, and now I knew what I had to do. It was a big risk, but it was my only chance at getting free. The backpack was slowing me down, and in the river, it would be an even bigger risk. It would slow me down and probably weigh me down, but I needed it. I didn't have much time to even think about it, because I could hear someone running after me, and I knew that soon more people would be on the chase. Stop, Helenu. Don't do anything stupid. My brother yelled at me, but I only responded with a rude gesture of my hand as I kept running and then jumped into the water. We were already close to the part of the river where the rapids started. It would have been enough for me to let the current drag me, but I needed to get away as fast as I could, so I started swimming until I lost control of myself and was left at the mercy of the current. It was too much and I started to believe I had made the wrong choice. Sister. My brother was yelling at me. By then we were in the part where the river ran through a canyon, the walls standing a few feet up. I could barely see my brother. Try to hold on. He said, and he threw a rope at me. I didn't even try to hold it. I had already committed to my actions, and I would keep going until the end. Soon the roar of the waterfall reached my ears. This was the most dangerous part of my plan, and as the water tossed me from one side to the other, I started to fear I had made a huge mistake. I reached the end, and I started to fall, with water pushing me down. I was at the mercy of the waterfall, and I felt like I didn't have enough strength to climb out. Darkness surrounded me, and I couldn't see anything anymore. Dagger. I arrived trying to go unnoticed. It was always difficult in small packs, as any outsider would be noticed right away and they normally patrol their borders with care. But there was no one to block my way. That should have made my job easier. But as I moved closer I noticed something big had happened, and I couldn't stop from getting involved. I moved closer to an old lady, and tried to find out what was going on. Our princes fell into the river. The old lady explained to me when I asked. She was out with her brother and she fell close to the rapids. She couldn't get out of the water in time, and she was dragged by the current. They said the last time, they saw her she was falling in the waterfall, but no one saw her after that. She was at the border of tears. You think she drowned? I asked. I hope not, but they haven't found her are you going to help with the search? I haven't planned on that, but I needed to get involved. If she was alive, she was most likely injured and in need of help. We needed to go find her. I'll do my best. I promised her, and moved in the direction she gave me. When I was close to the river, I finally found the people I was looking for. A few warriors were walking down the river bank, and eventually one of them noticed me. Who are you, and what are you doing here? He came at me aggressively. I could understand he was angry, and that he needed someone to fight. But he had chosen the wrong target. I'm Dagger, from the Uber Pack. I said, letting my alpha aura out. It was so strong he fell on the ground, as if a huge weight had fallen on him. I came here to talk to your alpha, but I couldn't find anyone, and I was told you were searching, so I came to see if I could be of help. I contained my aura allowing the warrior to move again. There was no point in trying to go incognito. My priorities had changed. I had to throw out all my plans and go on instinct. We lost our princes. He said mournfully. The Alpha's daughter. I asked. 
The previous Alpha's daughter are Hope. She had been having some problems, she had a few hard years. She was having a stroll with her brother, and fell into the river. We are looking for her, she must have come to shore at some point, but we haven't found her yet. I could tell the warrior was truly worried about the girl. He cared for her. The Alpha should know where the members of his pack are. I said. It had been long enough for him to make a connection to his territory and the people in it. Where is your Alpha? This way. Let me take you to him. I followed the warrior to the waterfall, and there I found a man who had to be the Alpha with a group of people around him. Alpha. We have a guest. The warrior introduced me. I don't have time for guests right now. The Alpha roared, but he didn't impress me much. I just moved closer to him, testing his Alpha aura and finding it wasn't as strong as mine. I'm Dagger. My cousin Ice came here a while ago. I'm just following up on his visit. I heard you need help. I tried not to antagonize him because I wanted to be involved in the search. I appreciate it, but no help is needed. My people are already taking care of the situation. Why don't you head off to the pack house and wait for me there? He dismissed me. Part of my job is to help packs in need. But I'm surprised you haven't found her yet. Can't you feel her location? Do you think she is already dead? I whispered to him. I could feel him tensing up. But I wasn't sure of the reason. I won't believe she is dead until I find her body. He replied. You would be able to feel the death of a member of your pack, right? I insisted, already feeling something wasn't right about the situation. Look, kid. I appreciate your offer of help. But this is my pack. So let me take care of this myself. I apologize for not being able to entertain you. But right now. As you see, I have other things to do. Take him to the pack house, and make sure he has everything he needs. He told the warrior that had taken me there. Of course, Alpha. The warrior said. Please follow me. He told me, and I followed him. I wanted to help, but I couldn't cause trouble. It would only affect the other's actions and take from the search. We got to the pack house. And I saw on our way many people worried about what was going on. It looks like everyone is worried about the missing girl. We all love her. She had a hard time after her mother's death. And despite everything her father did, she was having a hard time with his death too. We have barely seen her these last weeks, and now she is gone. I felt bad for him, because I could tell his pain was real. I'll go back to help with the search. Of course, thank you for bringing me here, and good luck. I went inside the pack house, and I found a young woman in the kitchen. Who are you? She asked, and I could tell he was ready to fight me if needed. Dagger from the Uber pack, here for a visit. I explained. We already had some of your people here. A man said. He had a bruise on his face. And right now it's not a good time my sister is missing. He said mournfully. So you are the son of the previous Alpha. Tell me, did you get that bruise trying to rescue your sister? And for that matter, how did your sister fall into the river? I asked. Look, it's been a difficult day. And I'm not in the mood for interrogations my sister might be injured. Ah, ah. Look. Just make yourself at home and don't bother us, okay? He said before walking out. You sure pick the worst time to visit. The woman said. This has been very difficult for my mate and my brother. I understand about your mate. I said. Guessing she was the Alpha's daughter. But why would this be hard on your brother? Because he wants her to be his mate. He is going to be the next Alpha of this pack. And everyone loves her. They are a good match. So yeah, he is worried about her. I was reminded of Doom's mindset, and his anti-true mate's propaganda, and I understood he was still up to his tricks. Are they true mates? I asked, 
and I think that she understood her error when I asked. It was a sign of how worried she was that she had said as much as she had. Neither has found their true mates, so I think they should look for a match instead. But there is still time for that. He is only fond of her, as we all are. Now, if you excuse me, I need to go talk to my mate and my brother. She left, and I knew she was running away. She had said more than she wanted to say, and now I knew of their intentions. I was starting to suspect that there was something more behind this accidental fall. But there was no way I could find out more about it here. I needed to wait and talk again with the Alpha, and then head back to the Uber pack and report the situation. I couldn't talk with anyone for a couple of days until they finally gave up on the search. They had all assumed that she had been dragged down the river beyond the limits of their territory. I heard they were planning on going outside the territory looking for her. But I had the feeling they weren't going to find her. Something about the situation reminded me of Menace. I'm sorry that we couldn't give you the welcome you deserved. Doom told me during breakfast. No worries. I was just here to see how things were going. And it looks like your pack is working. At least it looked like they were all working well together during the search. It's a pity that such a young woman has gone missing. I truly hope you find her. We will I'm sure she is alive. She can't be dead. There's no way. Her brother said. And again, it struck me as odd that the Alpha wasn't able to know her whereabouts. Or at least tell if she was alive or dead. I needed to go back and tell them about this latest development. No one had been happy to know about Doom's background, and the fact that everyone seemed to like this missing girl was something to consider. I don't know why, but on my way back, I decided to stop in a nearby town, one that was also on the side of the river. I had a good breakfast at the pack, but still, I wanted to stop at the town's diner and get something for the road. I had no idea what would be waiting for me there. Hope. I don't know how I managed to reach the cave behind the waterfall. I remember falling into the icy water, and getting lost in the whirlpool at the base of the waterfall. And then I was out, already behind the curtain of water. I remember our mom telling us about it, and I only hoped my brother had forgotten about it. If he still remembered about it, my escape wouldn't last for long. He would know where to look when they didn't find me down the river. I know that after my little trick, they are going to be looking for me, and I have to do something. Waiting was my best bet. I would wait for a couple of days, rest for a while, and then keep going. I didn't know how the Alpha's powers worked exactly. I know that an Alpha knows where and how everyone in the pack is, but since I was no longer part of the pack, I wasn't sure if he could tell where I was hiding. He was supposed to know if there was an outsider on pack territory, but I'm not sure how exact that power is. I decided to shift into my wolf. It was easier to fight the cold and rest in my animal form. The instincts of my wolf also helped to keep watch, just in case my brother decided to remember our mother's story. I fell asleep. But it was a restless sleep. I was afraid that at any moment someone was going to break into my little sanctuary and drag me back to the pack. I only had food for a couple of days, so on the second night, I decided to go out. I could still hear people moving in the forest, but under the night's protection, I swam down the river, using a log to hide, just in case someone decided to look in my direction. I wasn't sure at what point I got outside the territory, but soon it became easy to see that I was in the land of humans. It was still night when I saw a small town near the river, and I got out of the water and shifted back to human. I laid my clothes on a rock and waited for them to get dry. I only had a small bag inside my backpack to keep things dry, and I used that for my few valuables. Like the money, I will need to start my new life. Once my clothes were dry, I headed to the town. It was still early when I arrived, and I walked around, trying to get a feeling of the place. 
I went to the bus station, but it turned out that the bus only goes through twice a day. The one in the morning had already left, and the next one was still hours away. I knew that I needed to put more distance between me and the pack, but I didn't know where to go. At midday, I headed to one of the diners at the edge of the town. I needed some real food and some time to think. While I was enjoying a huge club sandwich, I felt a wolf walking inside. I tried not to be noticed, but he looked around and headed straight to my table. I was about to run when I felt a strong alpha aura, and I was frozen in my spot for a moment. By the time I regained my wits, and I was about to get away, he was already sitting next to me in the boot, blocking my exit. Hi, I'm Dagger from the Uber Pack. I'm assuming you are the famous Hope. He asked nonchalantly. I have no idea who you are talking about. I lied, but he laughed at me and didn't move. Are you running away? I can give you a lift. Where are you going? I wasn't sure if I could trust him, so I kept silent, and he called the waitress and ordered food, while I tried to think of a way to get out of the situation. I had a feeling I needed to stop here, just like my sister-in-law had a feeling that we needed to go back to your pack and do another search. So tell me, what happened to drive you away from the pack where you grew up in? I have no idea what you are talking about. I insisted. I'm on your side that's what the Uber pack is all about. Helping those who need it. Really? I thought it was all about taking over packs too weak to defend themselves. I couldn't help but say. And where did you get that idea? He asked, with a calmness that was getting on my nerves. I heard about the pack that your people visited a few months ago. You left a couple there to supervise, and when the pack alphas least expected it, they were taken down. At least that's what I had been told. There was a chance my brother had lied to me. Wouldn't be the first time. I think I know which alphas you are talking about. He said, You mean the ones we found had been keeping a girl as a slave, a girl their son, and their beta son, had been abusing for years, while they turned a blind eye to the situation. One who turned out to be an alpha from a fallen pack. Yes, we took over, but just after making sure that they were not suited to lead the pack, only after we confirmed that this poor girl was not the only one to be abused, or neglected under their care. Look, I know we don't have the best reputation. Most people fear us, and others hate us. But we are trying our best here. We found that our inaction had led to some alphas abusing their positions, finding loopholes in the rules, so they could abuse their power. That's the reason we have been visiting your pack. So often we had a similar situation explode in our faces, and we have learned from our mistakes. So what? Are you going to find a reason to take Doom down and put some of your people in charge? Then pat you on your back and call it a good job. I knew it was a bad idea to antagonize someone from the Uber pack. But I couldn't help it. Well, from what I found out, Doom might not be the best person for the job. But that doesn't mean we are just going to get him out. If he hasn't done anything bad. But it's different with you. I could tell, these past couple of days, that everyone loves you. So if you are willing, we could help you get your pack back. I couldn't trust him, but I wanted to. It was too late to pretend I wasn't Hope. I had all but admitted it by then. Help me. How? I asked, still unwilling to trust him, but curious about his intentions. Well, for starters, I guess you need a place to stay. Come with me, to the Uber pack, and let us train you. Once you get strong enough, we will support your return to your pack and your challenge to the current alpha. But I must warn you, it might take a while for you to be ready to fight the current alpha. He might have some ideas we don't approve of, but he is strong and capable. He warned, and I was curious as to why they were so willing to help me. And what do you want in exchange? It sounded too good to be true, and because of that, 
I wasn't going to just take his word. Nothing. As I said, it's our job to keep things fair, and to police wolf packs. All around the country you are the daughter of an alpha, and even if we can't find any fault in Dune's actions, we believe your pack would be better under someone else's command. We don't want the rumors of our people taking over packs to extend, so our best choice is to return the pack to the heiress. I wasn't so sure about his words, but I wanted to trust him. I was aware that I needed help and training. I wouldn't be able to do this on my own. Look, why don't you come with us and see what we have to offer? If you don't like it, you can always leave. From what I saw, you have no trouble walking out if you need to. How did you manage to escape? Everyone was convinced you had fallen into the river. I did. I confirmed. But no one could find you. I saw them looking for your exit point, and no one found any traces of you. Well, that's my secret, I said, not willing to let him know how I had done it, just in case I needed it again. I like you, Hope, he said, as the food arrived and he started to eat without any worry. That gave me time to think about my options. He was right, I needed help, and the Uber pack was famous for its power. It could be very bad for me, if they decided to keep me prisoner. But if they were truly willing to train me, I couldn't ask for better teachers. So, what is it going to be? He asked me once the food was gone. Are you really giving me a choice? I had to ask. Of course, I'm not into kidnappings. He smiled, and I had to fight not to smile back. I guess I will go and see how things are. I accepted, and his smile got bigger. Perfect. You won't regret it. I really hoped he was right. I was already afraid I was making a big mistake by going to the Uber pack. But only time would tell if it had been the right choice. Dagger. It had been pure luck that had helped me find hope. As soon as I saw her, I knew she was the one Doom was looking for. Even if she didn't notice, she was emitting her alpha aura. It wasn't enough to frighten anyone, but I could see her effect on humans. She looked awful, her hair in disarray, her clothes wrinkled and a little dirty. In fact, she looked like prey. In any other circumstances, there would have been a group of men around her, trying to take advantage, but her aura was enough to let everyone know that she wasn't one to mess with. It was keeping her safe. I wasn't sure she was going to accept my offer. I could tell she was reluctant to believe me, but she was smart enough to recognize I was her best option. She was an enigma. She was really different from menace. She didn't have the same her against the world attitude, but she was strong in her own way, and I could already tell she was going to get her way no matter what. Let's go, I said leaving enough money on the table to cover both our meals and a little extra. She looked like she was going to protest and then changed her mind and followed me. She only had a backpack with her, and from the condition of her clothes, I guessed she didn't have a change of clothes. Do you want to put some distance between your pack and us? As fast as possible. She confirmed. Why do you ask? I was wondering, and don't take this the wrong way. But, do you want to stop to buy some clothes? Or maybe stop at the laundromat? I suggested, hoping she wouldn't take it the wrong way. My clothes got wet in the river, but I already dried them. She said, a little defensively. But your clothes look wrinkled and a little stiff. I think they might not be very comfortable. I pointed out, how far is the Uber pack from here? She asked instead of responding. A long way I'm afraid we won't reach it today. We will have to stop for the night. Well, then I will wash my clothes when we stop. I could see she was a proud woman, and I liked that about her. She knew she needed help, but she wasn't going to accept more than she needed to. I had to respect that. Do you need anything before we start our trip? Don't be shy. I added. And she glared at me, 
then turned away shyly. I'm okay this is better than what I was planning to do. She mumbled. And what were you planning to do? I asked. I was going to take the afternoon bus and get away as far as I could. And then I was going to look for a job and a place to stay. You just turned 18 right? I asked. Yes. Finding a job is not easy. And the kind of jobs you can find with your age and experience don't pay much the ones that do. I don't think you would want. She was silent and looked kind of scared. Even if she was doing her best not to show it. Would I be able to find a good job in your pack? She asked. I think so you can be a warrior. Your job would be to train and patrol the pack territory. Maybe go on missions, but that will take a while. On the plus side, all that will help you get where you want to be. You will be able to train with the best of the best. Most of the people in the Uber pack are already at Doom's level. I said, and I could see she was interested. And how do you know? Have you seen him fight? She asked. Not really, but I have felt his power, and I wasn't impressed believe me. Most of our warriors are strong enough to challenge any alpha and win. My family is on a whole other level. Grandma, even in her old age, is a force to be reckoned with. Just don't tell her I said that. I hurried to add. Are you afraid of her? She sounded a little worried. I love her, and she loves me. I'm not afraid of her in the sense that I don't think she will harm me. But she is the alpha of our pack, and I respect her. Believe me, many have tried to challenge her, and even at her age, she can make you submit to her will. I only know of one exception, and still in a fight, I'm sure grandmother would have swept the floor with menace even with all of her unwillingness to submit. That sounds a little scary, to be honest. She said, Wait until you meet her. You will see you have nothing to worry about. Grandma is very invested in being a good alpha for everyone. She is tough but fair. And I'm sure that once we explain everything that happened she will accept to help you none of us. Like the rumors of Doom's propaganda. Against true mates that bond is our most sacred custom. Recently, other shifters have also discovered the real benefits of it. Mountain lions are on the border of extinction. Because they refuse to believe in it for generations. Everyone seems to love doom. I just hope that when my time comes they will accept me back. She said. They will. I could tell just how much they loved you in the time I spent there. I'm not going to lie. It looks like your father was failing as an alpha. So they are happy to get someone new. But with time, and depending on how strongly he pushes his anti-true mate's policies, people will start to resent Doom too. I assured her. I don't get why he feels that way. She said. So I explained everything I had found about Doom from his previous pack. She listened to everything I had to say. And then she was lost in her thoughts. I knew she was worried about her former pack. And that was understandable. She had alpha blood. And wanting to protect your people was part of that. I drove in silence for a while. Before realizing she was sleeping. It made me feel happy to realize. She felt safe enough to sleep. While I was driving her. When she woke up. The landscape looked very different than the one near her home. And I could see the fascination on her face, as she looked all around. I decided to take the panoramic route, so she could get to see everything the world had to offer. She hadn't been able to leave her pack, so it was likely her first time, seeing something different from it. By the time the sun started to set, we were close to another city, but I stopped at a lookout, so we could watch the sunset. She was silent. But I could tell she was loving the view. Once it got dark, I started the car again, and drove the last few miles to the city. I already knew where we were going to stop. I don't think I'll have enough money to cover this hotel. She finally broke the silence, once we arrived at our destination. Can you lead me somewhere else? The pack owns the hotel, 
It's just one of our business ventures. It makes sense to have a place to stay everywhere we go. Don't worry. It won't cost me or you anything. The rooms are already set apart for us. But someone must be paying for this. She insisted. Even if the room would be empty otherwise, the hotel must pay someone to clean it up after we leave. Then let's deduct the cost from your first paycheck. We will give you pack rates. I said. She didn't look convinced, but I didn't give her a chance to try to get out of staying there for the night. I was tired, so I just took my suitcase and her backpack and marched inside. Glad to see you, sir. The woman at the registration desk greeted me. She was human, but she understood all about us, after working for wolves for years. Your usual room. Two connecting rooms, please. And my companion needs to do some laundry, if you could show her the way. Oh, I can take care of that. If you give me the clothes, I will have them ready for you by tomorrow. She offered with a smile. I would prefer to take care of it myself. Hope said shyly. I'll send one of our workers to you. But she will say that it's easier to do it herself than to show how to use our equipment, as I understand it. It's all industrial size. They will be taking care of laundry during the night. So taking a few more clothes won't make any difference to them. I um. She looked at me and then at the woman. I'll send her anyway. She will explain everything to you and then you can decide, is that okay? I knew I had to look more into the worker. If she wasn't on the list for a promotion, I would suggest her. She was good at her job and her customer service was top notch. Okay, that sounds good. Hope accepted. Great. Do you need help with your bags? I shook my head. Okay then, here are your keys, you know your way. And someone from the cleaning staff will go to your room to sort out the laundry issue. Have a nice day. She smiled at us in a warm way that made me at ease. Thanks. I said, and guided Hope to our rooms. Hope. I felt like everything was getting out of my control. I ended up accepting the people of the hotel. Taking care of my laundry. I even accepted a change of clothes, while they washed my own. I knew that they were used to having wolves here, and that extra changes of clothes are normal. Still, I felt like I was doing something wrong. Like I shouldn't accept their help, or I would get into trouble. I was walking around the room, when I heard knocking. But it wasn't on the main door, it was coming from a door on the side, and I remembered Dagger asking for connecting rooms. I went to open the door, and as expected, I found Dagger on the other side. Will you join me for dinner? He asked, and I nodded. I was starving and I wanted to get to know him better. Good. The restaurant here is very good, and they carry lots of dishes specially made for shifters. What's special about the dishes? I asked. I had never thought about the difference between what a normal human would eat and what a shifter needed. The portion. You know we burn a lot more energy than simple humans, therefore we need more food. I'm sure the club sandwich you ate at lunch wasn't enough. You must be starving. I wasn't going to admit it, but his smirk was enough to let me know. He already knew he was right. I was glad I had given a change of clothes, because the restaurant was very fancy. It reminded me of meals like that with my parents, when I was young and we ventured to the cities around the pack. I felt sad thinking of the family I had lost and the experiences we wouldn't be able to share anymore. Not only my parents but my brother was also lost to me. I loved him, or at least the idea of him. But he was as good as dead, and there was nothing I could do about it. Just thinking about everything I had lost made me angry. What's going through your mind? Dagger asked. My brother. He turned his back on me so easily. I complained. I don't want to excuse his behavior. But from what I learned, Doom can be very charming. I'm sure he has your brother convinced that what he is doing is the best choice. He tried to justify. I'm his family. 
he should be worried about me. Family was supposed to be first. When had he forgotten that? And he is, in his own way. I'm not saying it's the right way, but he might believe it is. Have you considered what you are going to do about him? Are you going to let him know you're alive? He asked me, and that was something I hadn't thought about. But it was easy to make a decision about it. No, if I tell him, he will tell Doom, and I don't know what he might do it's best to wait, until I'm stronger. I explained, not sure why I needed to, but wanting to justify my actions. You are a true alpha, I can feel your strength, as long as you train and take it seriously, you will be able to go back and reclaim your pack. He said it so matter of fact, and I wanted to believe it would be possible. I didn't say a thing. I was afraid of the implications of accepting his help. What would I owe him and his pack after this? If they accepted me into their pack and helped train me to face doom, would I be fighting for my pack in their name? Everyone was technically under the uber pack's control, but would it be an even stronger control in my case? I didn't want to change one tyrant for another. I want to be free. I finally said, and I want my pack to be free. And you will. The uber pack can't keep control of everyone. We need strong alphas capable of taking care of their own packs. Doom could become a problem with his ideas, so we welcome anyone who can take care of that problem for us. I wanted to believe that, but it was as if he knew exactly what I was worried about and telling me what I needed to hear to be convinced. I wasn't sure if I was being transparent, or if it was something he had to deal with before, so he already knew what would worry me. The waiter arrived with our food, and we didn't continue our conversation. We ate in silence, it was as if he was giving me time to think. I felt like I was at a disadvantage with him. I felt so young and vulnerable while being with him. He felt big, his aura was strong. There's another thing on my mind. I said once we finished our food. My true mate. I will want to look for him. But I'm not sure if it's something I should do first or after. My original goal was to find him first and get his help with my training. But you already gave me the chance to cover that part. And that changed things. I was already depending on the Uber pack. I wasn't sure if I wanted to depend on someone else. Well, since you will be joining our pack, you will have your chance to look for him there. And after, once we are sure you are capable of facing any challenges, we can send you to other packs to look for your true mate. You can do both things, look for your true mate, and train to become stronger and be ready to challenge Doom. You make it sound so easy. I said. I do. Well, it won't be easy. It will be a lot of hard work. But, what I can assure you, is that it will be worth it. I know you are capable of great things, and I trust that you will become a really strong alpha, with the right training. Tomorrow we still have a long way to go, so we should take some rest. Of course. We went to our rooms, and I sat on my bed just thinking. The picture that my brother and Doom had painted of the Uber pack was horrible. But I was starting to realize, I had made a mistake by trusting them. The Uber pack was not any worse than them, and they actually sounded like the good guys. Not that I trusted them blindly, I just trusted they could help me, and I believed that going with them was my best choice. I could learn from them all I could, and then go back and reclaim what was mine. I was not going to forget my real goal no matter what. I still wanted the same things a true mate, and my pack. I wasn't sure what I would do about my brother and his mate, or about Doom. A challenge didn't need to be to death, like he had done with my father. I could show mercy, but was that a good idea? It was my right to kill him, to seek revenge. Or maybe I was getting ahead of myself. I still had a long way to go before I could even attempt to face him. But I wanted to face him and make him pay so badly. He deserved to rot in hell for his actions. My dad had been a sick man in need of help. 
I really believed he could have been redeemed if he had gotten the right kind of help. Not that it mattered anymore, he was gone. I needed to do what my grandmother taught me and move forward. There is nothing that can be done about the past, but to learn from it. It's the future you have control over. And I had to stop feeling sorry for myself and focus on what was coming next. I would go to the Uber pack and accept their help. Once there, I was going to learn as much as I could from them and become better and stronger, the kind of alpha my pack needed. Then I would find a way to get free from them if I needed. Until then, there was no point worrying about it. Even if they made me join their pack, I could cut my ties with them, just like I had done with Doom. There was nothing that could force me to belong to a pack if I didn't want to. I would do my best to remain independent from them. But even if I had to join them, I would leave them and recover my pack when I was ready. With those thoughts, with those beliefs, I finally went to bed. I was not going to worry about anything for the time being. I was going to rest and prepare for whatever challenges tomorrow would bring. I was done playing defense. I was going to start moving forward with my goals. I had already proven myself that I could by escaping doom. I was strong, I was a true alpha, and nothing would stop me, no matter how long it took. I was going to recover what I had long dagger. I woke up with a smile on my face. Something about hope just made me happy. It was refreshing to see her drive and her strength. It was clear that she had to overcome some difficult things. Between the things she had told me, and what I had found in her pack, the picture I found of her was very interesting. I was sure that once we were finished with her, she would be a great alpha. She already had her pack's love and soon she would have their respect. I truly believed that. Once my grandmother had the chance to talk to her, she would be able to confirm or deny my instincts about her. She was great at seeing the true character of a person. I took my time showering and changing into clean clothes. It would be a long day driving back, and I wanted to be at my best before getting on the road, and that included a big breakfast. I went to knock on Hope's door to invite her to eat with me, and when she opened the door, I was happy to see she was ready. Want some breakfast? I asked, and I saw her hesitate for a second before accepting. She was getting better at accepting help, so helping her was no longer a chore. That would be great thanks. She looked calmer than before, and I guess she had come to a decision. She was a sight. Her whole attitude was one of challenge, like daring anyone to try and stop her from getting what she wanted. Again, I found myself comparing her to Menace but it was different. Menace was driven by anger. Hope was trying to achieve a goal. It was unfair of me to compare her to anyone, so I tried to keep those thoughts out of my head. I think we will be able to reach my pack this afternoon, if there are no problems in our way. I said after we ordered our food. Don't worry, I took into account the time we will need for lunch. Food is a very important part of our journey. I could do without it, she said. But I can't, so you will have to join me for lunch. Don't worry, we are far enough from your former pack for someone to find you. Besides, you are under my protection now. I don't need anyone's protection. She protested, and I loved her backbone. Even if I wasn't sure it was justified. I wasn't sure how good she was at fighting or how well she could do defending herself. So far, all I needed was for her to settle down. You might not need it, but you still have it. It's not a biggie for me. Food arrived just then, and I didn't have any more time to worry about her feelings. Despite her protests, she ate with gusto, like a healthy wolf. She finished even before me, and then she stood there, silently urging me to finish my meal and I did. Everything was already taken care of. The room food and even laundry were going to our tab, so all I needed was to grab my bag and head out. Hope hurrying alongside me. 
Tell me about your childhood. I said once we were in the car. The silence driving me crazy. I guess it was pretty typical mom. And dad were very loving and good alphas. They were always there for the pack. But still had time for us. I can't really complain. Those were some pretty good years. My brother spent a lot of time with my dad. I guess it was because he was supposed to be the next alpha. And was already training for it. I spent a lot of time with mom. And she managed to give me a few tips on what is expected of an alpha. But most of our time was just us being us, you know. I think I do even being the unofficial leaders of the pack. My parents still managed to give me all the time and attention I could wish for. Yeah, it was like that. My dad was amazing too. And I was really proud of him. But then the human hunters came and started attacking. She trailed of the memories making her sad. Let's keep the sad stories for later. Focus on the good memories. I suggested, and she smiled. Oh, I have plenty of those. I was glad I had suggested the change of topic. She looked happier and more relaxed as she talked about her childhood and told me stories about her and her brother and all the mischief they got into as cubs. She at least had good memories of him, even if it looked like their current relationship was not a good one. I hope for her own good that her brother could be brought out of his brainwashing, for I was sure doom had a lot to do with his current attitude. She was laughing and happy by the time we stopped for lunch, and I shared some of my own tales. Ice and I had grown together as siblings. We had gotten into trouble growing up, even if we had to learn to control ourselves earlier than most. We were both strong, powerful alphas. We had become enforcers of our pack from a young age. Not that I minded. I had fun, and still do. And I understood the importance of our job. I even shared some of my missions with Hope. The how and why we had decided to take a more hands-on approach to policing the packs. After we realized we weren't as good as we wanted to believe. What happened to Menace had been a wake-up call. But finding out about Claw being abused that way with no one realizing it. Was very hard for all of us. We were supposed to defend our people. And we had failed them. It was something we didn't want to repeat. If some pack started to fear us and resent us, well, it might deter them from doing something like that themselves. If we could spare one person from going through that kind of hardship, then it was worth it. She fell asleep as soon as she got in the car again, and I didn't blame her. But I woke her up a couple of hours later as we approached my territory. I wanted her to get the view, and I was kind of hoping to impress her. By the way she was looking at everything, I had succeeded. How far does your territory go? She asked. As far as you can see. We need a vast territory to deal with so many alphas in our pack. We often need our space and sometimes a slice of territory. We can claim as our own. How does that work? She asked curious. Some of our stronger, especially the mated ones, have houses of their own, apart from the rest. They have enough space for them to be comfortable. That way, if someone is feeling antsy, there's enough space to calm down constant exercise, and fighting to establish dominance also help. It sounds kind of difficult for all of you. She said. Not really. It's kind of fun. And it's better to be there than out in the world part of the problem, with Doom, is that he was an alpha without a pack. And it was getting hard for his brother to keep him in place. That's the only thing that settles those kinds of people, if they don't have their own pack. A strong leader, that shows you who is in charge. In the Uber pack, my family is in charge of that. And we have a system that keeps people engaged. So there's never a doubt about who is stronger that helps settle our animal side. I have the feeling that I will be challenged a lot. She said, and I smiled at her insight. In a way, we keep our fights controlled by doing constant tournaments. No need to go after anyone outside of the controlled spaces. 
I'm not saying our method is perfect, or that there are no people who try to ambush others, but since that doesn't really work to establish a true ranking, it rarely works nor happens twice. The fact that my parents or grandma take care of those people also helps. They rarely repeat that mistake. Not if they know what's good for them. I noticed she had gone quiet and worried I had talked too much. I kept driving in silence and noticed that Hope had gone really quiet and was looking a little lost. You have nothing to worry about. No one will force you to do anything you don't want. And if you don't want to fight someone, you can tap out. If you do want to fight, but your enemy turns out to be more than you can handle, there's always someone ready to step out the goal is to keep everyone on their toes, not to hurt anyone. I get it controlled violence. Fighting for a reason. She responded automatically, her voice a little flat. That's about right. I agreed. We finally reached the limits of the territory. I debated between stopping at the diner, or going straight, but decided that she needed to get there as soon as possible so she could finally get to know the rest of the people of the pack, even if it was going to be a shock for her. We drove through a tunnel of trees for a few minutes, and then got to the first opening, from here, we could see the pack house, my home. I was glad to see the wonder and surprise in Hope's eyes. Our pack was impressing her. I parked the car and got out, Hope following me close behind. She was looking all around in wonder, but then she stopped and looked uncertain. Then I felt it. The oppression coming from inside the building was enough to freeze most people. The alpha vibes coming from inside were not normal. I went ahead and opened the door and found a couple of warriors, just standing in the foyer, both of them displaying their aura at its max. What's going on here? I asked the two of them. Our favorite wicked siblings were being disrespectful again, so we are giving them a lesson. Again. I'm starting to think there's no hope for them. I couldn't believe it, just when I thought they had learned their lesson. But I have a guess right now, could you dial it down? I asked, just as Hope walked inside the pack house, and then turned to see the two siblings trembling in a corner. What the hell? She asked, and turned to me with anger on her face. Hope. I have to admit the whole situation was a little overwhelming. The territory was vast and rich, the building strong and beautiful, and the atmosphere in the place was out of this world. I couldn't help but feel a little intimidated by it. The alpha vibes coming from the building were pressing on me, asking me to submit. I could stand them, but it was uncomfortable. I knew that Dagger was worried about me. Most likely he felt like I wouldn't be able to withstand the pressure, but I followed him inside, trying to prove to him that I was stronger than I looked. I wanted him to acknowledge me, to see me as a strong woman. But once inside, I saw a couple trembling in a corner. Not what I expected in the least. They were suffering from the pressure caused by the alpha aura. The others were emitting, and no one looked in any hurry to help them. It was not what I expected after everything Dagger had said to me. What the hell? I asked, trying to contain my anger. Hope, meet the wicked siblings. They are here for punishment. So don't get all worked up. They are a couple of betas that use the fact that their father was the alpha of their pack and used an alpha command to stop anyone from being able to fight them, to bully everyone they deemed less than them. I'm trying to find out what they did this time that has everyone so worked up. Dagger hurried to explain, but I still felt uncertain. Well, they look like they learned their lesson. I said, unsure if I should believe him or not, but trying to stop them from torturing the poor kids. I felt the air clear a little, and I could finally breathe easily. If that was the way a couple of warriors could make me feel, I wasn't sure what to expect from Dagger's family. They would certainly be a lot stronger than this. I just hoped I would be able to face them without embarrassing myself. 
Don't expect me to thank you. The girl said. She was wiping her tears, but still managed to act as if she was looking down at me. I see, they just don't learn. One of the warriors said. Something must have happened. They were already behaving like normal human beings. Dagger said. We shouldn't be here. We did nothing wrong. If anything, this proves that strong people can do whatever they want. She protested. Yeah, only problem little girl, you are not strong. The other warrior, the one that had remained silent until then said. And if you disrespect my mate ever again, I will kill you. He threatened, and I knew he would do it if needed. The girl turned pale and ran away, followed by her brother, who at least looked a little repentant from whatever they had done. I'm sorry. This is not the welcome I wanted to give you. Dagger apologized. Can I ask who your friend is? One of the warriors asked, smiling at me. I could hear Dagger growling a little. She is a friend to the pack, a new recruit. Obviously an alpha, like us. Obviously. She walked inside, head held high and everything. The warrior said. But I wasn't sure if it was praise or if he was mocking me. What's your name? The other one said. I'm sorry. I didn't introduce you properly that's Hope. She is the daughter of an Alpha, and an Alpha herself. By the way, Hope is her Alpha name. She was given that name by her grandmother, correct? He confirmed with me. That's right just before she died. I said. Can I ask for your normal name? The warrior asked. It's Helena. I responded automatically. But you won't use it. Dagger cuts in right away. She earned her name, and it has been dismissed enough, so it's hope from here on, understood. He said. Understood. Both warriors responded. I was a little surprised, and a lot flattered that he had said that. My own family had constantly dismissed my name and insisted on calling me Helena, as if I wasn't a real alpha. I smiled. Now, let's go meet the alpha grandma. We'll find her situation very interesting, and I think you will feel better about our motives once you talk to her. Let's go. I agreed, already feeling a little nervous. We started walking. I followed Dagger deeper into the building. And soon we reached a living room where an old lady was drinking something that smelled like coffee. Dagger, I'm glad you're back to you and your friend. Want to join me for coffee? She greeted us. Glad to be back. Alpa, do you want some hope? He asked. Sure, please. I accepted a cup of coffee. Dagger went to sit and signaled me to join him. I turned to the old lady and she just smiled. I took that as permission to sit. Something about the woman inspired respect. She looked old, really old, but at the same time, she looked strong. So, I didn't expect you to bring company. She said. I wasn't expecting that either I found her running away from her pack. She is the one Ice and Risk talked about, the previous Alpha's daughter Hope. I had no idea they had already talked about me and I wasn't sure how to feel about it. Hope, nice to meet you. I'm called Knight, and I'm the Alpha of this pack. Nice to meet you. So, why did you leave? She wasn't using her Alpha command, but I felt compelled to answer anyway. I didn't like the situation. I know my dad was wrong in his actions. I was one of the most affected, as I was practically a prisoner. He was so focused on keeping me safe. But, he didn't deserve to die. I didn't like the way Doom arrived and killed him, with my brother's encouragement. But the reason I left, is because he doesn't believe in true mates, and wanted me to take his son as my chosen mate. They even went as far as to lock me inside my room, only letting me go to eat, if it was with Doom's family. When I turned 18, I rejected the pack, so I could go look for my true mate and even not being part of the pack anymore. Doom decided to lock me, 
until I accepted becoming his son's chosen mate. That's what we were afraid of, Dagger said. He is trying to force his ideas on others. And again, technically, he wasn't breaking the rules, because he wasn't directly forcing the mating I think that's enough for me to act. If you think the rest of the pack would agree. Well, Hope has a solution for this. She wants to recover her pack, so I offered to train her, until she is ready to face doom, and claim the pack. Dagger explained before I had the chance. That's a good idea, but it only works in the long term. We need to stop him from doing something that can affect the current members of the pack. She said, and she was right. We can start sending people for the full moon ceremony, to make sure he doesn't mess with true mates. Dagger suggested. He said that he wouldn't accept outsiders, nor would he let our people go to other packs to search for their true mates. I said. But if we go, he can't stop us we will talk to other packs that have active members looking and plan with them to visit the pack. If we say we are going, then they can't stop us. The old lady said, and I was sure she was right. No one would dare say no to her. That sounds like a good idea. Still, we have some time. He can't brainwash people that fast especially since there are already a few happy true mate couples. So, are you looking to join our pack, or are you staying as an outsider? For training purposes, it doesn't really matter, but you will feel better if you join the pack. The old lady offered. Can I think about it? I don't feel ready to join a pack right now. I feel like I need some freedom. Understandable. You are an alpha that has been under other people's control for a while. You want to experiment with what it feels like to be on your own. It's my job as the uber alpha to make sure you become the best version of yourself. And I know you must be eager to start. But why don't you take a couple of days to get used to this place, before you start training with my warriors? I have no doubt you are capable of joining right in. But sometimes it's better to take things one step at a time. If you think that's best. I agreed. Even if I did want to start right away, I needed some time. It had been a difficult time for me, and I needed to pull myself together. Should I put her in the barracks, or give her a room? Dagger asked. Give her a room, but move her to the barracks once training starts so she can get a feel of how the warriors live. But that can wait first, let's enjoy our coffee, and let's get to know each other better. She started to ask about me and my childhood, about my dreams and goals. It was so easy to talk to her. I had no problem opening up to her, and everything that had happened the last few years. We talked about my grandma, and I realized that they both had a lot in common and that made me feel closer and more at ease with her. We were still talking when a warrior entered the room, and said he had something to report. After that, we were dismissed so Knight could go back to work. She is not exactly what I expected. I admitted to Dagger. Yeah, I get that a lot, but you got the nice version. She is a beast when she needs to be, and believe me, no one wants to cross her. He said, so, ready to go to your room. I will let you settle in and come back for you in a while so I can take you to dinner. Then I will tell you what to expect once you start training. Sound good to me. Thanks. I felt so much better about my decision to go to the Uber pack. After talking tonight, even if most of our chat was about superfluous things and my background, there was something about her that inspired comfort. I just knew that I had made the right decision. I just needed to give it my all to get stronger, as soon as possible, so I could challenge Doom and get my home back. Dagger. I knew there was something wrong there. Risk said once again. Yeah yeah. Ice agreed. We should have investigated more. But it all turned out for the best. Now, we just need to make sure we give her the support. She needs to grow strong enough to challenge Doom. I know that people in her pack will be happy. 
Even if they support Doom now, they all seem to like and respect Hope, and would be happy to have her back. I said. Well, she definitely has alpha blood, I could feel that. It will only depend on how willing she is to train and become stronger. I said. We have time. My mom gets into the conversation. It's not so common to have young alphas. Challenging old ones, most young alphas get there because they inherit the title. So you will need to prepare your friend. It might take years for her to recover her pack. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. But I don't want to burst her bubble. I think it's best if we give her time to come to that conclusion on her own. I knew it was a coward way out. But I hated to be the one to give her the bad news. I knew she wanted to go back as soon as possible to get on with the life she wanted. She said she believes in true mates and that her original plan was to go looking for him, right? Mom asked. That's right, it's not a bad plan. But it would put her training on hold for a while. Since, as you know, she would have to travel a lot. I said. We can help with that. You said you wanted to start looking more actively for your true mate. Let's give her a chance to look within the pack. And if she can't find him here, then you both could go visit other packs and look for your mates. Dad said. Even if it sounded like a suggestion, I knew that it was an order to do things his way. But I was okay with that. I liked his plan. Sounds good. I accepted. So far it looks like she is fitting right in. Not a complaint from her, or any of the others. She will start training tomorrow. That's when we will first test her. I'm pretty confident that she will be a good fit she is strong. It will be a pity when she moves to the barracks. So far I have enjoyed her company. My aunt said. I know, but it's not like she can't visit. Risk said. And I will make sure to invite her as often as I can. I was thinking of joining her for training. It wouldn't hurt to go back to basics, would it? That's actually a good idea. My mom said. You are always so considerate. I'm glad you are part of this family. And having a familiar face will certainly be of help to Hope. I don't know how much training she has. But from what she has told us. It's possible that she was denied the chance to train properly let's help her feel confident. You know the rest of the trainees won't hold back. No matter what her background is. Well, that's the point, isn't it? That she won't be given special treatment but I agree. A familiar face could be of help. My aunt agreed. So, I think I'm going now. I have some things to do. And I will be in charge of training this afternoon. Are you sure you don't want to take over basic training? Ice asked, only half joking. No, I don't train newbies, you know that. I said, walking out. The truth is that I wasn't sure I would be able to be impartial if I trained Hope. I knew that I would be there either way. But I didn't want to be in charge. She needed a trainer that wouldn't go soft on her. And that would be able to shape her into the best version of herself. I knew that sooner or later, she would fall into one of my classes. But I was sure it would take her a while to reach that point. I hope so, anyway. I'm so glad to see you. Diana said as I stepped outside. Are you going to be in charge of training today? You know I am. I said, already bored with our talk. So go prepare. Today we will be fighting. I could hear her still trying to get my attention. But I walked away from her. I knew that some of the warriors had been restless. And I also needed to blow some steam. So I would spend the next few hours fighting everyone in my way. By the time I was done, it was time for dinner. I went to grab a shower before going there. And I found Hope in the hallway. She was with one of the warriors in charge of in-house security. And I didn't like it, for some reason I couldn't explain. Hi Dagger. She greeted me with a smile. Hello Hope. Are you ready to start your training? I asked politely. Yes, I am. Well, 
a little nervous, but that's normal, right? She asked, as if my answer really mattered. Of course it's normal, I will grab a quick shower, and I'll see you at dinner, okay? I asked. Okay, see you in a bit. She said and turned her back on me to face the warrior again. I stared at him, until he got the message and excused himself to go out. By the time I went to the dining room, everyone was already there, everyone liked Hope, and she was not as shy and defensive as she was when she first arrived. Only a few conversations with the rest of the family were enough to show her that we were the good guys. I could tell she was still worried about her pack and her people. Things that grandma said were signs that she would be a good alpha once her time arrived. The full moon ceremony will be soon. My father said, You might find your true mate here. I did. Risk said with a smile, looking at ice with dreamy eyes. Yeah, it would be great. But if I don't find him, that's also okay. I still need to train and become strong enough to face doom. I need time. So even if I don't find him here, I have a goal and a purpose to keep myself occupied. Well, having your other half will only help you with your goals. You will have someone to support you in your goals. Risk said. Yeah, I hope so. She sounded unsure, which was very different from what I expected and what I already knew about her. My son will start looking for his true mate very soon. You should join him when he travels. Mom said. That is, if you don't find him here. I noticed she was uncomfortable with the talk. So I changed the subject. And soon we were too busy eating to worry about Hope's true mate. I wasn't sure what her problem was. But I had an idea. She was worried about being strong enough. I knew that for people outside the Uber pack. It was hard to really understand how strong we were. Now that she was here she knew, and that meant she understood better where she was on the scale. She might be worried she wasn't strong enough. Worried about how long it would take to be able to challenge Doom. It had been her number one goal since getting out of her pack. And even if she had said that she wanted to find her true mate first thing, I had the feeling that it had been only a stepping stone towards her real goal, which was becoming stronger. Don't worry about a thing. Risk told Hope at the end of the meal. I will be training with you, so you won't be alone. But aren't you already past the basics? I don't want to hold you back. Hope said. Well, I was already trained in my own pack growing up. But fighting was more of my brother's thing. He is the current alpha. It never interested me that much. I know how to defend myself. But my way of fighting is different from the Uber Pax Ice thinks. I should go back to basics to grow stronger. Risk explained. Are you sure? I don't need a babysitter. So if you don't need that training, then you don't need to force yourself to be there just because of me. Don't worry about that Risk doesn't do anything she doesn't want it will be good for her. And something we have been encouraging her to do for a while. But she hasn't accepted it before. She always has excuses. You being here is a good thing. Now she just ran out of excuses. I said, with risk trying her best to look offended. I left them to it. I needed some space and I knew they would give Hope the attention she needed at the moment. Hope. I wasn't sure what to expect. It was my first day of training with the Uber pack. So far. I had managed to avoid joining their pack. I was there as a guest. But everyone could feel I was an outsider, and people in the pack looked at me, with either curiosity or mistrust. At least they could feel I was an alpha like most of them. But that only caused some of them to want to challenge me. I could tell, even if they didn't say yet. Like Dagger had said, it was important for them to see how we ranked. And they would feel unsettled, while they didn't know where I was on the scale. I had to admit I felt kind of the same way. I wanted to prove myself to them. But I was afraid that I was going to end up too low. Training started fairly normally, 
with everyone running in both human and animal form. And then we set to start the fun part, sparring. Even if most of the people in the group looked underage, I had the impression they would be better fighters than me. I felt like they were looking down on me. But that only motivated me to try harder. For those of you that are just starting this week, it's very important that you pay attention to what I'm going to show you we have been going through the basic moves. Memorize them and then choose a partner and practice. You need to get a feel for how to apply them, and how to survive them. It's not only about hurting others, but about how not to get hurt. The trainer explained. He showed some basic moves, one that I already knew. But I tried to pay attention and take it seriously. I only knew basic self-defense. I wasn't at the same level as everyone else there. This is so much fun. Risk said sarcastically. It was clear so far that she was in a really good condition and she was good at fighting. But it was also clear so far that she didn't like the exercise and wasn't very fond of fighting. I like it. I feel like I'm learning a lot. I said. Well, yeah, you have a goal to fulfill. I have an ice, so I don't have to worry so much about this I mean. I get that I need to be strong and all that. But it's not like there's a shortage of capable warriors right here. She said, looking around. But someday you will be one of the alphas of the Uber pack, right? Ice is one of the heirs. Well, both ice and dagger. But it's going to take a while for that to happen. She said, without worry. I never thought I would end up here. But I don't worry if ice is my true mate. It's because we are going to make it work some way. And he is seriously strong. He can face the world for the two of us. She didn't have a care in the world. I wasn't sure if that was the correct way of seeing things. After all, she was going to be one of the alphas. And if she wasn't prepared to defend her title by herself, then she was going to put herself and her true mate at risk. Maybe that was where her alpha name came from. Maybe she was a risk to all of them, or a risk Ice was taking. She was very nice to me, so I didn't want to think bad of her. It was clear that everyone liked her, and she was helping me. I felt so bad for what I was thinking about her, that I let my guard down, and when we finally started to practice our move she completely overpowered me. Are you okay? She asked after she had thrown me to the ground for the second time in just under a minute. I think I might be a little rusty. I said, trying to play it of. More than a little. She laughed. Everything okay over here? The trainer asked. Yes, everything's okay. I said, getting back up and trying to be ready for the next attack. By the end of the day, I was ready to go to bed. I had moved to the barracks and was now out of the pack house. It was weird, but at the same time liberating. It felt like I was finally standing up on my own two feet. Are you going to join us for dinner? Risk asked. No, I think I will pa today. I'm more tired than I anticipated. Okay, if you change your mind, you know where to find us. She said, and walked away, likely in search of a shower, just like me. It was hard to get a feeling of how others felt about me. Even if everyone had been polite, there was an underneath tension around all our interactions. Not that there had been many, but it felt like it. How was your first day? One of the warriors asked me. I had seen him patrolling the area, so I knew that he was one of the people responsible for security. Harder than I expected, but it feels so good. That's what a nice workout will do for you. If you need any help practicing, I'm willing to help. He said with a smile. Thanks. If I need any help, I know where to find you. I kept walking, trying to reach the shower stalls. I needed to scrub the dirt and sweat covering my body, but the way felt eternal. I was intercepted by a few people on my way. They all wanted to either congratulate me on my successful first day, or ask me how it was. 
Some even wanted to do both. When I finally got to my destination, I could barely stand upright. I was ready to go to bed without dinner. I was so tired. But I found Dagger waiting for me with some food. I came to see how your first training was everything you hoped for it to be. He asked. Not exactly. It did show me how out of practice I am. I need to work very hard if I want to get strong fast. Just don't overdo it, okay? You need to take it one step at a time. This is not a race. Easy for him to say that. While I was working on getting stronger, my pack was under Doom's control. I didn't like the idea of having something that meant so much to me in his hands. I'll do my best. I tried, but I'm sure he didn't believe me. I know you will. He replied, but I knew that he was just playing along with me. He knew I was not going to stop or slow down anytime soon. I had a goal and wanted to reach it as fast as possible. Well, I have to go back. Enjoy your dinner. And remember, anything you need, we are here for you. Thank you. I watched him walk away. He was very kind to me, and I had stopped thinking about what his ulterior motives could be. I was starting to think that he was really willing to help me, without expecting anything in return. So far, from what I had seen, the Uber pack had a very strong sense of honor. They did take their roles as Alpha seriously. Since most members of the pack didn't have a pack under them to protect, they were focusing instead on helping other packs and other people. Even if, as Dagger had said, they struggled to keep themselves in check and to deal with their aggressiveness and need for control, they were all good people who cared about others. I knew there must be bad seeds somewhere. Every pack had a few, but the overall feeling was what was important, and I was starting to believe they would fight for the right reasons. And then there was Knight, the Uber Alpha, Dagger's grandmother. She was a very special woman. Just by talking to her, I could tell she was just and wise. She confirmed to me what Dagger had already told me about her interactions with other packs and her issuing of justice and I had to agree with her decisions. Even when she made a mistake, it was in her search for justice. And I knew she was strong enough to bend most of the packs, if not all of them, under her control. Instead, she left them to their own devices, and only stepped in when she felt that the rules that we all shared weren't being respected. She gave them their independence as long as they showed they deserved it. Once they abused that power and that freedom, she stepped in. But despite what my brother had said, I could tell that she wasn't looking to take over everyone. I knew that it could all be a lie, but it didn't feel like it. I really believed in Knight. She had nothing to gain by lying like that. She was strong enough to demand whatever she wanted, and there was no use for subterfuge. And the more I got to know her family, the more I respected them. And looking at her family, I again believed that true mates were a good thing. Like my grandma used to say, it's worth it, even if it only lasts for a short time. I just expected that I could avoid falling into the same situation as my dad. I didn't want to go through that kind of heartbreak. Nope. Time flew by the first few days. The training was exhausting but fulfilling. I had a feeling that very soon I would be able to fight, whomever might get in my way. I was feeling stronger and better day by day, fight by fight. I was sure that soon I would be capable of facing anyone in my group. I was aware that I was only on the beginner's course, and most people there were basically kids. But I was ready to move to the next level. And if I kept moving forward at the same rate, I was sure that I would be able to get to the elite group in a short time. The trainer explained that learning to fight was only the first step in a long series of steps. A strong alpha that didn't know how to fight could face almost anyone. But a beta who knew how to fight could win against an untrained alpha. A weak alpha who knew how to fight could defeat a strong alpha without preparation. 
But no one could win against the strong Alpha, who also knew how to fight. Everyone kept telling me that I was a strong Alpha, and that once I knew how to fight, I would be unstoppable. That would be able to defeat Doom and anyone who stepped in my way. That was my goal, to become stronger than anyone else. I was more than ready to keep training, until I was everything I could be. But first, I was going to run with the pack for the full night ceremony. I knew that I should have been more focused on finding my true mate. But I wasn't going to get my hopes up. There were many alphas in the uber pack, and as an alpha myself, it was more likely I would find him here. But I tried not to think about it. For some reason, after the offer of help from Dagger and the Uber Pack, finding my true mate didn't feel as important or urgent as it was before. I felt like I had other options. Still, finding him would be nice, only no longer a priority. I heard someone knocking on the rune's door, and I turned to find Risk there. We had gotten close in the few days we had trained together. She was an easy person to like. Hello ready to go. She asked. I guess as ready as I'm going to be. I answered with an unsure smile. Don't be nervous most people here are pretty nice. I was very nervous the first time. I ran with the pack. I wasn't as dominant as most of them. And being here was uncomfortable for me. But then I shifted and felt him. She smiled sweetly at me and I knew she was thinking of ice. Finding your true mate is amazing. I hope you find him today. I hope so too. I said. But I wasn't sure I sounded convinced about it. Well, let's go. Let's not waste time here. She came at me and grabbed my hand, almost dragging me outside with her. I felt happy having someone like her with me. I had tentative friendships with a few other warriors, but it was different with her. She was more like me in a way. An outsider trying to fit in. I almost choked when we started approaching the clearing where the ceremony was going to take place. So many alphas, with their aura strong and pulsing. It was like all of them were trying to show each other who the strongest was. It was all about posturing, and they were doing a great job at it. You can do it to you know. Risk said next to me, and I felt it coming from her too. It's easier to face them if you do your own flexing. Then it won't feel as strong or as bad. She explained, but I had never tried to do it. I knew I had an aura and that sometimes I used it. But I had never used it on purpose. I knew how it worked in theory. But I had never tried to impose my power on others. I knew it was something that alphas used sometimes to show they were strong and in control. It was supposed to help establish dominance, without recurring to violence, and was sometimes considered a pacific way of resolving issues without bloodshed. Still, it felt a little wrong. It was something that I had no idea how to control. I don't know how, I never tried to do it. I said. Knight says that it's something most of us learn to suppress it instinctively, not to make others uncomfortable. It's not as much learning how to do something as learning how not to do it I'll do my best to help you if you want. She was like that, always looking for way to help others, especially me. Thanks. But I think we are about to start. Maybe later we can get together and you can give me a few tips. I suggested. Still unsure if I wanted to. Knight looked old. But there was nothing fragile about her. I watched as she started the ceremony. With so much power in her voice. And her posture. That I was certain no one present would ever dare to challenge her. I guess there was a point to Auras. Who would try to fight her. When just her presence was enough. To make you want to submit to her. Her power was only apparent on a few occasions. But when she called for us to shift, everyone did immediately. Even I, who was not even part of her pack, heard the cal and shifted without delay. And I was pretty sure she wasn't even using an alpha command. It was just her innate power that made us want to please her and do as she wished. As I shifted, I let my mind go free. 
Most of the things that bothered me in my human form no longer worried me. As an animal, my worries were gone, only instinct remained. I let my instincts drive me like I always did in my animal form. But something was different this time. There was something in the air, a smell, a feeling that was making my body tremble, and my instincts to go crazy. It felt like something important and I couldn't wait to discover what it was. It was making me crazy. I heard the howl calling us to run, and my body started moving. But I was restless. Even as I followed the others, it was like I was missing something. Something important that was just at the edge of my consciousness. Then it hit me. It was like a compulsion, one so strong that I forgot all about the cow of the hunt and the other wolves around me, just became unimportant. I started running in the opposite direction, looking for that important something that was just out of my reach. Soon, another wolf joined my run. It was a huge one. I froze, but only for a moment. It was such a shock to see him. He became my everything, all my senses were focused on him. I had heard a lot of people talk about their true mates, but everything I had been told paled in comparison to what I felt when I finally saw him. I didn't question who that wolf was to me. It was clear as soon as he approached that he was my other half, my perfect companion, the one that would make me happy. I felt like a puppy when he started playing with me, so full of joy and mischief. Soon. We were running away from the group, not that I cared about them, or anyone else while I was with him. As we ran, we played with each other, challenging each other, nipping, and yipping, and jumping around like pups. We were like two cubs getting to know each other, while at the same time it felt like we had known each other forever. It was glorious, the best feeing in the world. Nothing was as pure and important as being with him. He was my beginning. I was drunk on his scent and wanted to have it all over my body. I was out of my mind, happy as I hadn't been in a long time. Then he guided me to a secluded place, and I knew it was time. We both started to shift back. I had been able to see him as a wolf, and I couldn't wait to see his human side. It took me a moment to comprehend what I was seeing. It was Dagger standing in front of me. Dagger. Dagger, son of Scar and Venom. Grandson of Knight the Uber Alpha. Dagger, one of the heirs to the Uber Pack. He was my true mate. Dagger. Ready? Ice asked me as we walked to the clearing where the ceremony was going to take place. As ready as I am every full moon. I said. I know you would rather be out looking for your true mate, I get it. But at least try to be happy. We both knew the chances of finding her here were low. I had already run with the group many times, and I hadn't found her. I don't know, I feel weird today. I said as we took our places near the front. As part of the ruling family, we all had our roles to play. And it was always important to keep our eyes open. When we were running with so many strong wolves, with strong personalities to go with them. Where's Risk? I tried to change the topic. She went to join Hope. She is trying to make her feel welcome. Since it's both her first time outside her pack, and without a pack, she wanted to make sure she was okay. He explained. I'm glad Hope is trying to play it tough, but I believe she needs all the help she can get. There's no reason to make things more complicated than they have to be. Right. He agreed, but he was already distracted with the preparations for the run. Hearing Knight conduct the start of the ceremony was so ingrained in me that I didn't have to pay much attention. I knew all of it already. At first, I could see hope and risk at the edge of the group, but then I lost sight of them when everyone started transforming. We started moving to take our positions. It was something that I had done so many times that I didn't have to think about it. Only this time it was different. Something happened. I felt like I needed to be somewhere else. 
Everything else went out of my mind, and I started following the instincts that took me to who I was sure was my true mate. It was a feeling like nothing else, but I was so certain of what was happening. I knew without anyone having to explain it, the wolf in front of me was my true mate. She was the most beautiful wolf I had ever seen, and I was pretty sure I had never seen her before, at least in this form. Since I knew everyone else in the pack, it could only be one person hope. For some reason, it had never occurred to me that she could be my true mate. I knew age didn't matter for something like this, and it wasn't like I was that much older than her. She was only 18, and I was in my late 20s, older than her, but still a young man. Would she be happy with me? True mates were supposed to be happy with each other. They were perfect together. But Fang and Menace had not started that way. So I knew that it wasn't something that worked automatically. I didn't want her to be disappointed with me. Because I was happy she was my true mate. And I already knew I would do anything for her. We started chasing each other. Lost in our first meeting as true mates. It was like I was a pup again. I was drunk on her. I guided her to a clearing that I knew was far from where the others were still lost in their run. It was secluded and perfect for what we needed. I started shifting, and she did too. I could see the surprise on her face. She hadn't recognized my wolf. I wasn't sure if she was happy or sad after finding who I was. But we were still running high on instinct, and she didn't protest when I moved to her, our bodies calling to each other like magnets. I threw myself at her, as if I was still in my animal form. She opened her arms to me. I tackled her, but I twisted as we fell so I would be the one to hit the ground falling down. She fell on top of me, and proceeded to kiss me. It was like we were trying to devour each other. Both of us running only on instinct, trying desperately to be closer to each other. We were both crazy, trying to touch, to taste, to see and feel, desperate in our need to be one. We were both naked, so it was easier. When we ran out of air, she sat back to get some air, still on top of me, and I got a great view of her breasts, my mouth watering at the sight. I move forward and suck on the tip of her nipple, she moans and grabs my head. It's not clear if she was trying to pull me back, or keep me there, but I explored her with my mouth, as my hands continued their own exploration. She looked so gorgeous and perfect, and mine. She finally pulled my head away from her and pushed me down. Then she started doing her own exploration. It was a little more tentative than mine at first. But soon she became bold. She started kissing my face and my neck, and then traveled down to where I needed her the most. Her hands were soft and unsure, but when she wrapped one of her hands around my member, I had to fight not to come undone right there. Soon she guided me inside of her, and we fit so perfectly together that it felt like I had died and gone to heaven. We got lost in each other, giving each other pleasure for what felt both like an instant and an eternity. But eventually, we got too tired to keep going. We were lying on the ground, next to each other, trying to recover our breath. Wow, that was intense, Hope said, breaking the silence. It sure was. I agreed. And from what I heard, it only gets better. We are true mates. I have been looking for a while now. Never thought it would be you. No me neither. I would never have imagined it to be you. She said with a soft tone. Something about it bothered me. Her tone was not as happy as I expected. Are you okay? I had to ask. I was starting to feel something wasn't right. Tired. This has all been pretty shell-shocking. She answered. Of course. It's a big deal for me too. I agreed. We should shift and go back. She started shifting immediately, and I followed her. Once we gave ourselves to our animals again, all doubts and thoughts went out of our heads. 
We started playing again, lost again in the marvelous feeling of being true mates. I followed her for a while, but then I took control and started guiding her, since I was the one who knew the way. We arrived at the clearing where the full night ceremony and other important reunions take place, and I kept going. But when we got to the barracks and I kept going, she stopped and shifted back to her human form, so I did the same. Where are we going? She asked. She looked a little drunk and a lot confused. To my place. I said. We are together now. There's no need for you to go to the barracks. You are one of us now. She frowned and wasn't moving, so I took her into my arms and carried her the rest of the way to the pack house and then to my suite. It wasn't as big as my parents' suite, but it was big, bigger than the guest room when she had stayed first and far bigger than her current accommodations with a plus that she only had to share with me, not with a bunch of other trainees. By the time we got to my room, her drunkenness had cleared and she looked like she had something on her mind. But seeing her in my bed did things to me. So I practically jumped her and started exploring her body all over again. Soon she was on board with me and we got to consummate our mating all over again. I think it might have been light outside the windows by the time we finally fell asleep. But I wasn't sure. I was too tired by then. Hope. I woke up happy and content. I didn't know why or how. I just knew that I was in the right place and at the right moment. My body ached, but it was a delicious ache. It wasn't until I felt the body next to me that I remembered where the ache was coming from and why I was there and not in my own bed. Dagger was my true mate. Half of me was beyond happy and the other half wondered what it would mean for me and my future. He was part of the Uber pack, an important part, and I had a mission to return to my pack and get it back from Doom. I guess that Dagger was strong enough to challenge Doom and get the pack back. He was my true mate, so both of us would become the alpha pair. But it would always be him who had gotten the pack back, not me. And what would it mean for my pack? Would we become just a satellite of the Uber pack? Would my brother's fear become a reality? Finding my true mate should be the most wonderful thing to happen to me. So why was I so conflicted? Good morning, Dagger said, kissing my shoulder, the part of me closer to him. How are you feeling? He must have felt I wasn't feeling so well. I don't know I mean, it's great you are my true mate, but what now? I asked. What do you mean? What now? He asked, moving forward so he could see my face. What happens now? Who am I now? Risk said that she became part of the Uber pack when she found Ice, that she is now one of the heirs. But I have my own goals, you know. I said, talking about my biggest fear. Was I even making sense? I had no idea how to make him understand what my mind was going through. Nothing has changed yet. I guess we need to decide how we are going to move forward from here. It mostly depends on how you feel and what you want to do. Now you have options. I'm one of the heirs to this pack, but not the only one. You could stay here with me, and eventually, we would lead the pack along with ice and risk. Or we could go back to your pack and take it back. We could go right now. I'm sure I can defeat Doom. Or we can wait until you are ready and challenge him yourself. That way no one will dare question your place there. Not that I would allow them to question it. But you are part of the Uber pack. Even if I'm the one to challenge and defeat Doom. Wouldn't my pack become just a satellite of yours? I questioned. No. I'm my own person. If I choose to follow you. Then the only ties I will have to the Uber pack are those to my family. But it won't be my pack anymore we are true mates. We belong together. And owe loyalty to each other first of all. You say such nice things. I said. But I wasn't convinced. You don't have to decide the rest of your life. Right now just rest assured. The Uber pack will have your back always. 
You are part of the family now. But if you decide to go back and reclaim your old pack, you will be free to lead it as you wish. As long as you follow the rules. He added. This is not what I expected you know. It kind of took me by surprise. Do you regret finding I'm your true mate? He asked, with such sadness that my heart hurt. Of course not. I quickly assured him, moving to hug him. You are perfect. You were so nice to me from the beginning. Even when I was suspicious and difficult, you were there to help me. You are more than I expected. But I didn't want to depend on anyone else, and now, you are so powerful and have many great connections, that I feel like I'm no longer relevant. You should know how this works. I'm a strong alpha, and my mate has to be just as strong as me, and don't listen to risk and her insecurities. Just as she is the perfect mate for ice, you are perfect for me, and even if you weren't as strong before, the longer we stay together, the stronger we both will be. That's another perk of the true mate bond, and I can offer personal training if you want, until you feel strong enough to face anyone by yourself. Just know that I will always be there to support and help you. Thank you. I want to keep training with others. It will help me measure my strength and see how I'm improving. You don't trust me to be impartial, he said, but without anger. It's okay, I get it. But things will change anyway. You will be by my side from now on, and since I'm in charge of some of the training, you can join me to see how the elite warriors train and see their strength for yourself. I would like that. I agreed. For now. We need to change and join the rest of my family. I'm sure they will be eager to congratulate us. Do they already know we are true mates? I asked, not knowing when they could have found out. I'm pretty sure they do not only did I leave my post to follow you, but I think some of the sentries might have seen me carry you here. I was mortified. I barely remembered everything that had happened once we found each other. Our instincts had been so strong they had blocked everything else. I had only seen him and nothing else. What will they think? I wondered out loud. They already like you, so they will be very pleased to find we are true mates. Come on, there's nothing to worry about. He got out of bed and I stared at him. He was glorious and I couldn't help but appreciate his naked body and his muscles as he moved. Like what you see. He caught me watching. Of course. I said, surprising myself at my boldness. I got up and realized I didn't have any clothes in there. While Dagger took a quick shower, I went through his drawers, looking for something I could wear to breakfast. I had a couple of things that I could maybe wear when I heard Dagger behind me. I can go grab something from your room while you shower. He offered. Not that I don't like the idea of you wearing my clothes. But I think you will feel more comfortable in your own clothes. And he was right about that. Thanks, that would be lovely. I said, and went to the bathroom. Just as he promised, my own clothes were waiting for me when I was done. I quickly changed, with Dagger watching me with hunger in his eyes. I knew I was blushing. As true mates, it was totally natural. But I knew it would take me a while to get used to this. Ready? He asked once it became obvious. I was trying to stall for time. Yes, ready. I have no idea why I was so nervous. We were true mates, and the Uber pack was all about sacred unions. Dagger was smiling, holding my hand, as we walked into the dining room, where the rest of his family was waiting. Asi told you. I said as we walked inside. Congratulations. Knight said. I should have seen this coming. You are perfect for each other. Welcome to the family. Dagger's mom said, getting up and wrapping me in a hug. Once she let go, his father was there to hug me. Then the rest of the family followed their example. It was about time for Dagger to find his true mate. I'm happy that we both have our other half now, I said.
smiling lovingly at risk. It was worth the wait, Dagger said, and I blushed in front of everyone. Let's eat I'm sure you must be starving after the night you had, Knight said, and everyone laughed. We sat and ate in silence for a few minutes, but once hunger was sated small talk, started filtering in, and then everyone turned serious. I guess you have already moved to Dagger Suite, Venom said. What are your plans going forward? My plans? I asked. Are you going to stay here, or go back to your former pack? Score asked. I guess that if you want a quick comeback my son can take care of the Alpha Challenge. Or maybe she wants to take care of it by herself. Venom added. I would like to take care of it by myself, yes. I said. We don't have to make any decisions right this minute. Dagger said. She will keep training, and I offered some extra training. But it will be whatever she decides. It will be sad to have you gone. But you are true mates, and you have to be together. Wherever destiny takes you. Knight said. Are you okay with Dagger leaving? The question escaped me before I could stop myself. Well. It's not what I prefer. But we know that you are an alpha with the connection and responsibility to your pack. And if your path is to go back. Well. Dagger will have to go with you. Knight said. You and I belong together. No matter where we end up. We will be together. And here, well, Risk's brother is there to take care of her former pack. So she can be here to support Ice, and they can take care of this pack. If we are needed elsewhere, then we go there. Dagger said, as if that wasn't an issue. Thanks. Was all I could say Dagger. I went back to the pack house to parents, and grandma's office as Hope left for training. They were waiting for me and I felt nervous for the first time in years. I never wanted to disappoint them, but I felt like I would. I'm so happy for you, my grandma said. I suspected when I saw how good you were together, but I didn't want to get my hopes up, in case it didn't work. I can honestly say that I did not expect that I'm way older than her. I said, it's not that much, but even if there was a considerable age difference, you are true mates for a reason, and any age gap would have a reason to be. My mom said, I know, I know. It's just not what I expected I mean. I was kind of expecting my true mate to be an alpha. But I thought it would be something like Isis and Risk situation, where she is the daughter of an alpha, but not the heir to the pack. I confessed. Do you want to stay here with us? Is change a problem for you? My dad asked. No. Nothing like that. But I feel like it's a problem for her. She feels like I'm trying to take over or something. And that's not my intention. I don't know. There are still many things we have to settle. Well. We will support you whatever you decide. You know you will always have a place here. And our full support should you need anything. But it's also important for you to find your own path. If that takes you away, then that's how things are and it doesn't matter. If you stop being part of the Uber pack, you will always be part of this family. And family is stronger than anything else. Grandma said. I'm sure Hope would disagree. She is not very happy with her brother right now. I had to point out. Yeah, that's an unfortunate situation. But it's true for our family at least. Thanks grandma. But anyway. I'm guessing it will take a while for things to settle down. Hope wants to do things by herself. And that means that she is planning on taking on Doom by herself. It will take her a while to reach that level. You have to admire that fight in her. Mom said. She will be a very good alpha. And with you by her side. I'm sure there's nothing you can't do. So right now, what are your plans? Dad asked. For now, to get to know my mate, help her train, and lead the future for the future. I said. Good, you should enjoy your mate. But you should start paying more attention to how a pack is run. May I suggest for you to start taking a more active role, 
in the administrative side of the pack. Dad asked, I know you have been focusing on training and supervising other packs, but I'm guessing that Hope never had a real chance at learning how a pack is run since her father was a little bit out of it the last few years. And if you plan on taking over, you owe it to the people in her pack to do a good job. You are right, and that sounds great. I will start with that as soon as you can fit me in. Is it okay if Hope joins us? She deserves to learn from the best, and not to get these teachings second-handed. Good idea. Grandma said. But let's give her a few days to get used to the idea of all of this. I have a feeling she is a little overwhelmed right now. Her whole world shifted axis, and she needs to find her ground once again. It's always like this. You feel like you are on top of the world, because you are around your true mate. But there are other things to think about, and being an alpha, you have responsibilities to take into account. So does she. She came here with a plan and a goal, and I have the feeling none of that has changed for her. That means you will have some adapting to do, and you need to take care of her. She is strong, and definitely alpha material, but she was sheltered most of her life. Mom was saying, but I interrupted her. More than sheltered, she was a prisoner in her own home. I get it. She needs to experience real life for a while before she can go and start her own life. And I'm here to help her with that. It's just that I have my own responsibilities and I wanted to make sure you are all okay with me walking out. That's why we have ice. Grandma said, your parents and your aunt and uncle have been doing a great job sharing the work. But just like I did this by myself, I'm sure Ice will be able to shoulder the job once it's his turn. And let's be real, it could be at least a couple of decades, until it's his turn. So it's not like it's something you have to worry about right now. Dad pointed out. And if you feel like you owe this pack something, you can always send one of your heirs here when the time comes. Mom added, I'm expecting lots and lots of grandchildren, just so you know. Mom, I yelled, but then I couldn't help but smile at her. It was something I had heard my aunt talking about with ice and risk. Not that any of us were ready for pups. That's a valid point. Grandma said, I would like to know my great-grandchildren before I die. We still have time, I said, not liking my grandma's words. You are still young and strong, but my time is running out. There is no other alpha, as old as me anywhere on the continent. I don't know about other places, but to my knowledge, alphas don't last as long as I have soon. It will be time for new generations to take over. In this case, it will be my son's and daughter's turn they have shown already that they are capable of coexist at the top of the pack, and I'm confident they will be good rulers. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, and I'm running late for training. Thank you for your support. We will talk about all this some more later. I said, yes, next time bring hope, since this affects her as much as it affects you. Mom pointed out. I will I said, walking out and heading to the training grounds. I still felt a little drunk. Finding my true mate was a very powerful experience, and I couldn't stop smiling. I had to make a detour and stop by the place where I knew Risk and Hope were training. I heard an interesting rumor. John, one of the warriors told me. Really? I had an idea of what he was talking about. Yes. I heard that the new trainee turned out to be your true mate. He said. Well, it seems news travels fast. I couldn't help a grin that bloomed on my face. That they do. And since you were supposed to be one of the leaders of last night's run and you disappeared, then, well, it was an easy guess. You are lucky. She seems like a great lady. I have watched her training, and she is driven. She has a goal to fulfill. Her pack was taken by an outsider with her brother's help. She wants to take it back. Her brother's help. That's interesting is that the pack ice and risk went to a few weeks ago. 
John was one of my grandma's lead warriors, so it was no surprise. He was aware of what has going on. Yes, that's the one it's a weird situation. But from my investigations, it looks like the Alpha. Who took over it's not the best choice. He has some controversial ideas that if he wants to push onto his people, could cause some trouble. As we were talking, I could see Hope sparring. It looked like her opponent was taking things a little too seriously. I wasn't sure if I liked how serious the fight was going. It looked like Hope's opponent was a little too intent on hurting her. It was a good thing that Hope knew what she was doing, otherwise, she would have been seriously hurt. Don't worry about your mate. She can take care of herself, and in case there's trouble, I'm sure people are willing to step up. I'm not worried. I lied. But I'm sure he knew it. Of course, I would worry about my mate. But I had to trust in her, and respect her independence. If I stepped in to help, I would make her look weak in front of the others. I knew I could trust her. But it was part of my instinct to be protective of her. My best choice was to walk away, so I wouldn't have to see her in trouble. I needed to distract myself. I have training coming up, are you joining? I asked. No, I just finished my patrol. I need some food and rest. Another day I will join you. I said my goodbyes and walked away from him, and the training, where Hope was barely keeping up. I knew that I wouldn't be doing her any favors, if I went to help. But it was hard to accept. I wanted to keep her from any harm. I felt bad for my students, because I knew, without a shadow of a doubt, that I was going to be sparring today, and that I would take my frustrations on others. I knew that it wasn't the best solution. But I knew that some of my warriors would take it. Maybe even appreciate it. I wouldn't be doing this, if I wasn't confident they could take it, that's for sure. Time to burn my frustrations on someone else. Hope. It was surreal. I had never imagined I was going to become the true mate of Dagger, one of the Uber Pack heirs. But here I was. As I headed to the training grounds, I started to feel people staring at me, and not everyone's eyes were nice. Were they mad at me for something? Were they thinking I wasn't suited to be Dagger's mate? Risk was talking besides me, and I let her fill the silence. She was very excited to learn we were family now, as she said. I was glad I had her with me, because I was feeling some hostility in the air, and I needed her support. When we arrived at the training grounds, I felt some of the other trainees staring daggers at me, while most of them were just ignoring me. Even the trainer was a little harsher with me during the training session. When it was time to spar, it became clear they all had it out for me. It wasn't the careful sparring of my first days. It was like they were actually trying to hurt me. I did my best and managed to stay on top during all the fights. But luckily, Risk managed to move closer and became my sparring partner for most of the day. I heard some of them murmuring that I wasn't fit to become an alpha of the Uber pack, and I hated that I felt like they were right. I needed to be better, faster, stronger, but not because I wanted to stay in the Uber pack, but because I wanted to rule my own pack. That was not something I needed to share with them. It was none of their business. But I wanted to scream at them for being like that. When training finally ended, I was exhausted. Risk needed to run a quick errand, but that would get her away from the pack house, and all I wanted was to go back, so we went our separate ways. I could still feel eyes on me as I went. It was like everyone in the pack was aware of who I had become, Dagger's mate. I thought I had left everyone behind when I arrived at the family area of the pack house, so I was startled when I heard a voice. How was your day? It was night, Dagger's grandmother. I hadn't even realized she was there. It was okay. I said. No people targeting you, because you are the true mate of one of the heirs. She asked. Risk got lucky, 
because she was a little sheltered when she first came here, so she didn't have much contact with the others, and then she was out on missions with ice for so long that people got used to them. You on the other hand, are an easy target. I did feel like some of them were taking training a little too seriously. I accepted, glad to confirm that my paranoia had a reason to be. Don't let them intimidate you you are a strong enough alpha. And even if you don't plan to stay here, you should make others respect you. Ask Dagger to teach you how to yield your alpha aura. I'm positive it is strong enough to submit most warriors. Are you sure? It was something I was just starting to understand, and was still hard for me. Of course. You are perfect for my grandson. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise now. I think you might want some time for yourself. Go rest for a while. I'll see you later. She walked away, as silently as she had arrived. I kept walking still aware of my surroundings. I wasn't going to let anyone else walk in on me. I made it to Dagger's room. It was still weird to imagine it was all mine now. I knew I was his true mate. But he was more than I expected, and still felt a little weird about it all. I took the shower I needed and took a few minutes to rest. Then I went looking for food. Training always left me starving. And even if I still felt a little shy meeting the family, I made my way to the dining room. I felt comfortable during my first days at the Uber Pack. But now that I should be more confident, I couldn't help but feel a little intimidated going there. I arrived before Dagger and Ice, but the rest of the family was there. I took the same seat I had taken during breakfast, next to Dagger's and in front of Risk. How was your training? Venom, Dagger's mom asked. It was good thanks. I said. It was as if everyone was out to get her. Risk said. It was to be expected. I hope you showed them their error. I think I did. I said shyly. She kicked as. Risk said. Nothing to worry about. That's a good thing the faster you grow, the faster you can reach your goals. Scar agreed. It's like you want to get rid of her. The longer we have her here, the better. Venom complained. I just want her to be happy, whatever she decides. Her happiness is Dagger's happiness after all. I had to smile at that. It really felt like family. And I had to be grateful that they were so worried about me. I was feeling better about my future. Little by little my fears about the Uber pack trying to take over my own pack. I was feeling more optimistic about getting it back. Are you going to request extra training with Dagger? Knight asked. He is one of our best trainers. He usually takes over the more advanced classes. Yes, some one-on-one -on -one training should benefit you. Risk said, trying to act innocent. But I could tell she was thinking of something different than training and I felt myself blush. Sorry we're late. I said, walking into the room, dagger behind him. It's okay. We were just about to start eating. How was your day? His mom asked. I think we will need to go and talk to the bears about one of our business ventures. It will take us a few days. And I was just getting used to my training regime. Risk complained without much feeling. I'm sure you'll survive. Ice mocked her. So, when are we leaving? She asked eagerly. I still have to make some preparations, but I think the day after tomorrow. So I will still be with you at training tomorrow. Risk said. But I didn't feel very comforted by that. I was going to be alone. And even if I had been able to face everyone, it felt good to have someone in my corner. How was training today? Dagger asked. I stepped there on my way, and saw that people were being a little too forceful during training. Nothing I couldn't take care of, but I would appreciate it if you could squeeze some classes with me. I wouldn't mind having an edge over the others. Don't worry, from what I saw this morning, you are already equipped to deal with them. But I will give you a few pointers and in no time, you will be ready to move to the next stage of your training. Thanks.
I said, feeling glad and grateful to him. We ate while making some small talk. The day was still young and everyone had things to do. Soon we finished and parted ways, with the promise to see everyone again at dinner time. It was such a close-knit family that I felt like crying. My family had been like that once upon a time, and then my mom's death changed everything. Ready for some personalized training? Dagger asked. Always ready. I said. Okay, let's start with a run. He said, taking his clothes off and shifting just outside the door. I followed his example, and as soon as I finished my shift, Dagger started running, and I followed as close as I could. He was fast and knew the forest better than me, but I wasn't going to let him outdo me. I was determined to show him just how strong I really was. We ran for a long time, and by the time we stopped we were both being led by our instincts, so we forgot about training and indulged in other forms of exercise that were more pleasurable for a while. After some rest, we finally got to train, only to conclude with another run back to our home and another round of sex. I knew it would be very easy for me to get used to that kind of life. Jagger. I knew all about true mates, and I had witnessed other couples, but nothing could have prepared me for having my own. It was an intoxicating feeling, and it was hard to leave hope, even for a few minutes. Even after a week, I haven't had enough of her. If I could, I would spend all my time with her, but I knew she needed to go to training, and I had my own duties to take care of. I was in class training, some of the warriors, when one of them came and told me my parents wanted to speak with me. I left my trainees, doing some sparring, and went looking for my parents, because I knew that whatever they needed, it had to be important, if they had sent someone instead of waiting for me to see them during lunch. Did you cow? I asked as I entered their office, noticing my aunt and uncle were already there. Thanks for coming. As you know, Ice is not here right now. He will be occupied for a few more days, and we got some news that concerns us, and that I'm sure will worry you and your mate. Mom said. What's going on? I asked, already worried because of that presentation. Well, we got news from a pack near your mate's former pack, saying that a guy arrived saying he had to abandon his pack because his alpha refused to let them go looking for his true mate. It's like we feared, my aunt said. He is trying to push his ideas to the rest of the pack. Right now, they are still willing to challenge him, or lead the pack to search for their mates. But soon they won't be able or willing to. As you know, that kind of thinking goes against all of our principles, and we won't stand for it. I think it's a good idea to pay them a visit and make them aware, we won't allow them to forbid their pack members from finding their true mates. My dad said, I don't think that Hope is ready to go back. I said, well, it will be her choice to go or not, but still, we need you to head there and give them a warning. You will decide if it's better to go alone, or if you should go together. She won't like that people are starting to leave. I said, well, Maybe she can go and talk to him, and let him know that she plans to go back and take over. Let him know he will be welcome once Doom is gone. Are we in agreement that Doom will be gone sooner or later? My uncle asked. Of course, even if they decide to stay, we won't allow him to stay in control. We will send someone else to take over. Dad said. I don't think Hope would like that either she will challenge Doom or I will do it in her name. I said, well, talk to her, and see if she changed her mind, and would like you to do the challenging. If so, you can take over right now. If not, at least try to buy some more time. We can't risk him driving everyone away, or brainwashing them to start hating their true mates. Mom said, I agree, but I will need to talk to Hope first and together we will decide what's our best path, then I will take action. Okay, seems fair. 
My dad said. Just make it a priority. We are worried about this. Especially since it involves you and your mate. After I said my goodbyes, I went looking for hope. Whatever I did, I needed her to be completely on board with me. I found her already on her way back to the pack house. She looked a little rough and I guessed she was still having trouble with the rest of the pack testing her. I knew she was more than capable of taking them on. So I wasn't that worried. But I knew it could be difficult to deal with that kind of animosity for long. We needed to do something to stop them definitively. But hope had a late start. And there was just so much that natural talent could take you. She needed more training. How was your day? I asked her once she was close. Same as every day, I guess. I was expecting to see you coming from the other side. I was called to a meeting with my parents, and I need to talk to you about it. But I think you would appreciate a shower first. You tease, I'm all sweaty and hot, so yes, a shower is a good idea. Care to come and wash my back? She asked, and for a moment I forgot all about the problems in her former pack. I was focused on my mate and her needs. The shower ended up taking twice as long, which was understandable, as we got lost in each other. I made sure to clean her really well, only to dirty her again, and have to clean her again. I knew we were late for lunch, but what we had to discuss was very important, so I asked one of the maids to bring us some food to my room, so we could talk without being distracted. Okay, I'm starting to worry. So let's hear what is going on. Hope said. We got news about a man in one of the packs, closer to your former one looking for asylum. He is looking for his true mate. But he had to escape doom to pursue that. Apparently, right now, it's forbidden for members of the pack to leave it to look for their true mates. What we feared is already happening. Hope was taking it a lot better than I expected. It's sooner than I expected, but we already knew this would happen. I would like to contact him, if possible, to let him know that once I take over he will have a place in the pack. He can take his time looking for his true mate, and once he finds her, he will be able to decide to stay there or return once I get rid of Doom. It was going to be easier than I expected. She was so calm and mature about it. I will go talk to Doom, just to let him know he is under our radar. Maybe that will buy us more time. We can travel together and I can drop you at the neighboring pack to talk to that man. What do you think? It's a good idea to confront Doom right now. I'm not sure he will back down. She said. Maybe not, but hopefully he will be more careful with the pack members, if he knows we are checking in on him. It was a long shot. But we had to try. I'll just have to train harder from now on. She said with determination. I'm not ready yet. But I will be soon. A year. She added. Looking at me. I will have to be ready in a year or less. I'm sure you will be I'll help you train. As much as you need you are strong. Stronger than anyone gives you credit for. In a year. We will go and you will take your place as the alpha of your pack. She smiled at me, and I couldn't help myself. I bent over her and kissed her. The kiss turned heated in just a second, and we got distracted all over again, lost in each other. Hope. I was trying to stay calm, but I was burning with anger. Doom was already driving people away from the pack, and there was no way of knowing what was going on with the people inside of the pack, the ones that couldn't leave. I knew that my case was special. He didn't want to let me go, because of who I was, but he might have been holding on to some other people. What I feared the most was that he would be able to brainwash others, as he had done to my brother. The way he became a different person scared me a little. How would it be to have a whole pack, thinking so coldly like him? So, are you going to be okay on your own? Dagger asked. I wasn't sure if I should be offended by his question, or touched that he was worried about me. Yes, the neighbor packs have always had a good relationship with my own. 
Even after my father became suspicious of everyone, he always kept such good care of his boarders and was fast to warn of any trouble that they appreciated him and stayed in good terms. At least that was the impression I had. If not, you can always use the name of the Uber Pack. He reminded me. I'm going to try on my own first. I didn't want to depend on them. But I wasn't stupid enough not to use any advantage. I had if I needed to. I could drive you all the way in. He insisted. But I needed to do things on my own, as much as I could. It's okay. You keep going, and make sure to check with the people I told you. I'm sure my brother and Doom will try to act as if everything is okay. Good luck. Tell me if you need anything? He insisted. I gave him a quick kiss and got out of the car. I needed to walk a couple of miles to the pack, where I was told one of my old pack members was waiting to participate in the next full moon ceremony. I knew how hard it was to leave everything behind, and I wanted to assure him that he was going to have a place to go back to if that's what he wanted. Soon I could feel eyes on me, and I knew there were warriors on patrol. As soon as I approached the entrance to their territory, one of them walked out of the forest. Hello my name is Helena, also known as Hope. I would like to speak to the Alpha, if that's okay. Did you come all the way here by foot? Another sentry asks. No, just the last couple of miles, I gotta lift the rest of the way. While I answered the second one, I lost sight of the first one. Follow me. Let's go to a more comfortable place. I followed the man another couple of miles to a car, and he drove the last few miles to the pack house. It was very similar to all the pack houses, since it was the center of the community. Hello dear. I'm Swift, one of the alphas. Welcome here. Tell me, do you come from Doom's pack? I do, but I left a while ago. I just heard that there's someone from my former pack here, and I wanted to talk to him if it's possible. Of course, dear, no problem. Come inside. He happens to be here, so you are in luck. I walked inside the house, and I could immediately say it was really welcoming. I saw a teenager watching me from across the room, and I could tell right away. He was the son of the woman, who had welcomed me. Hello. I greeted him, and he only glared at me. Go call Jack with you. He has a visitor. Another stray. The boy asks. We don't need another one. I acted before I thought about it. I had been dealing with the Uber Pax warriors, disrespect for some time, and I let my alpha aura come out on instinct to stop him, and I saw him choke on it. I'm so sorry. I said once I realized my actions, pulling it inside. I acted without thinking. I apologize. No need to apologize. Every alpha has a right to be respected. And we as hosts must act welcoming to those we open our doors to. Now, son. I think I ask you for something. The sullen teenager left as quickly as his pride allowed him. Still, I shouldn't have done that. I'm just a guest in here, and I'm grateful you opened your doors to one of mine, and to me. Hope, I knew your parents and I knew your grandparents. I heard about what happened and I'm sad about it we heard you were dead. And until a moment ago, I wasn't sure you were who you claimed to be I'm glad you are okay. I had to leave Doom has an agenda, and he wasn't going to let me go looking for my true mate worst of all. He insisted I should take his son as my chosen mate. Yeah, that's what Jack told us. He left, because Doom was trying to convince him, that it's best to take a chosen mate. One that is selected to be a compliment to you. Why bother looking for one like that when nature, has already done the heavy lifting for you? A man asked, coming into the room and going directly to Swift, kissing her tenderly. True mates are really amazing. I agreed. Does that mean you found yours? Swift asked. I was lucky enough. I confirmed. It's been a while I don't know if you remember. But we met you a few times 
when you were a child. We are sorry for what happened to your parents. I'm Alpha Trunk. All of our neighbors knew what was happening, but no one did anything about it. My grandmother explained many times that the Alphas are the absolute rulers of the packs, and no one can go against them. Only the Uber Pack can intervene. Hope. I heard a voice that I didn't recognize, but it was clear that the man walking into the room knew exactly who I was. He started crying and knelt in front of me, taking my hand in his and touching it to his forehead. We all believed you were dead. We searched for days all along the river and found no trace of you. I'm very sorry for any pain I caused you, but I needed the deception to get away from doom. I apologized. I heard some rumors. He said glumly. Some said you committed suicide because of their plans for you. Others that the Alpha killed you because you challenged him. Some even say that it was your brother who killed you. I didn't like the plans of Alpha Doom, that's true. But what I did was to get away from him, so I could prepare to face him. And that's the reason I'm here, to let you know that I'm going to go back, and take back the pack, that had belonged to my family for countless generations, and once I do, you will be welcome back. That's, if you don't decide to stay with your true mate. That would be great, but Doom is vicious, and I would hate to see you hurt. That's why I'm not acting right now. I'm in a safe place, and I found someone to train me. I'm not saying I'm ready to go face him right now, but I will be, soon, I hope. That's wonderful. Trunk said, we would love to have you back as our neighbor. Our families have a long story of cooperation. We worked with your father on a few occasions, and we were sad to see him lose his true mate and his sanity. Still, he was a better alpha than most. It's better to be overprotective than to fail to protect your own. The job of the alpha is to guide and protect the pack above all else. Swift added, and I will do that, but first I have to get strong. Any help I can give you, I will. I'm loyal to you as I was to your parents and grandparents. Jack said, All I need right now is for you to focus on finding your true mate and stay safe. I'll give you a cell phone, so I can stay in contact with you once I'm ready to retake the pack. I will call you, and let you know it's safe to come back. Thank you. And don't feel forced to come back if you find a place in your mate's pack. You can also stay there. I'm sure that I will have some rebuilding to do once I take over again from what I heard. Doom is changing a lot of things. At first it all seemed good things. But now I'm not so sure he is not allowing anyone to leave. And some of the tasks he is doing look like he is getting ready for something big. He would be a fool to try and start a war. Trunk said, The Uber Pack knows about the change of leadership, and I heard they are keeping an eye on them. I had to smile at that. He had no idea how close they were watching my former pack, making sure there would be a pack for me to go back to. Well, we need to celebrate that you are alive and well. Swift said, Let me prepare a feast for tonight. You will be our guest of honor, and you can stay here for as long as you need. Thank you, I really appreciate it. But I don't want to stay for long. I don't want word of my survival. To get back to Doom, or my brother. They weren't too happy with me trying to leave, which is why I had to stage my death. Understandable. None of us will speak a word about your visit. But please, enjoy your stay here in the meanwhile. Parts of me wasn't happy, that they were willing to be so welcoming and helpful now and not when I had needed them. But I couldn't blame them for anything that had happened before. They couldn't have intervened with my pack. There were rules we had to follow. At least they were willing to help my people, and I trusted them to at least give asylum to anyone that crossed through the dagger. I could tell that the atmosphere in the pack was different than before. The warriors that received me at the border looked tense. Once I got to the pack house, I could tell that something was going on there. The first one I saw was Hector, 
Hope's brother. Welcome back. He said. Are you here about my sister? He asked. I'm here because of something that was reported to us. We heard about a deserter from your pack, with some interesting claims. I want to talk to Doom about it. The Alpha is busy right now. Come here and have some rest. He will come to see you as soon as he can. What is he doing? I asked. Just pack business, you know. It's not easy to be in charge of a pack. He was avoiding my eyes, something that I didn't like. It made him look guilty. I'll take a moment to freshen up, and then, I expect Doom to be ready to receive me. Of course, take him to one of the guest rooms. Hector told one of the Omegas. I followed the girl to the room. It was the same I had used the last time. Please call me if you need anything. She said, shyly. How are things with Doom? I asked her. Is everything alright? Of course. She smiled, and it felt like she was being sincere. No problems at all. I insisted. It's different than before. But I guess all packs need some time to adapt to new circumstances. He is a good alpha. Okay. We just need to make sure. We just worry. It's our job as the Uber pack to take care of all the packs. With every change there are problems. And we heard a few whispers that we needed to check. Whispers. Everything is fine here. Nothing to worry about. She assured me. A little too forceful. So no one has left the pack because of trouble with the Alpha? I asked. And I could see the moment she realized what I was talking about. Some people trust legends more than they trust stability. But once things settle down, everything will be just fine. If you excuse me, I will go and prepare dinner. You must be hungry right? Of course, thank you. It looked like some people were already buying into Doom's rhetoric. Trusting legends over stability. Sounded like what I had found in Doom's previous pack. He was already brainwashing people. If that was right, we didn't have much time left. I went and took a quick shower and changed my clothes. I stayed in my room for a while. I needed time to think about how to approach Doom. Hope needed time, and I had to make sure to buy her as much as she needed. After a while, I got bored and went outside. I started walking around, and soon a couple of warriors started following me. I recognized one of them, but not the other, and it was clear they weren't happy to be together. Neither of them tried to stop me. But I could see as I approached people, that the warrior's presence was scaring them. I played along and did nothing. I just observed and kept moving. By the time I went back to the pack house, Doom and his family were waiting for me. Welcome to my humble pack. Doom greeted me. To what do I owe the honor? Well, last time we didn't have time to really talk you had a missing person, right? I asked. Yes, unfortunately. We lost one of our own. But I keep hope that we will find her. I heard a rumor that she is not the only one you lost. I said directly. I don't know what you heard. But everything is perfectly fine here. Why don't we go inside? Dinner is about to be served. Thank you. All the walking gave me an appetite. I followed him. He was doing a good job of being indifferent. But Hector was nervous, and if I was not mistaken, a little angry. So what brings you here really? Doomson asked. Like I said, rumors. And it's my job to make sure that those are just that, rumors and not reality. That's why I'm here. What kind of rumors? Doom said. That you are forbidding your pack members from going to other packs to search for their true mates. I said. But I'm sure it's just a misunderstanding since you are just starting with your pack. It's normal for you to want to have your people close. By will you get used to them. I'm sure there isn't an agenda behind this. Of course, traveling when the pack members are just getting used to the new rules is not a good idea. That's all. Doom agreed. Like we suspected. 
But don't worry, I have already talked with a few alphas. As you know, some groups like to travel from pack to pack, looking for their mates. I suggested they come here. That way your people won't have to leave. They will be communicating with you soon to plan everything. That's very kind of you. But I'm not sure we are ready to host just yet either. Doom quickly said. If not this next ceremony, maybe the next one. Either way, it will be soon I hope. Some people from my own pack are part of that group. I would hate to disappoint them. Of course, we will come to an agreement no doubt. I could tell Doom wasn't happy, but he was doing his best to keep a placid face. You worry too much about our humble pack. Hector, Hope's brother said. I could tell he was not happy with my actions. Some would think that the Uber pack would have better things to do than to get involved with simple rumors, unfounded as they are. We ignored rumors before, and it ended up in very bad situations. It's not like we believe everything we hear, or I would be investigating you about your sister's death. The main rumor is that you killed her because she refused to follow your orders, but I know that's not true, because I knew she was alive and safe. Still, it's our job to check even the more far-fetched situations, just for the sake of fairness. We understand, Doom said, trying to stop a fight. No one can really believe I would hurt my sister. Hector protested. And she is not dead. I know she is not. It's good to hope. His mate told him. But we haven't found her. The odds of her being alive are really slim. As sad as it is, you need to accept it. No, I can't I came back here to save her, to show her a better way. That she died while I was watching her. It's just not possible. I won't accept it. He pushed the chair back with a screech and stormed out of the room. I wasn't expecting that. I truly believed that he didn't care about his sister. But it looked like I was wrong about that. His mate went after him and no matter how much I would have liked to go and ask him more about what had happened, I knew that it was not the right moment. Poor kid, he is in denial. Doom said, sadly. Well, why don't you tell me what happened? During my last visit, I didn't get a good recollection of the accident. Not much to say. The siblings were walking close to the river, and she fell. He tried to get her out, but they were close to the rapids and he lost her. As you know, we were looking for her for days, expecting her to wash down the river, but never found her. That must mean she drowned. Doom said very matter-of-fact. Drowned bodies float. I pointed out, but he just dismissed my words. It looked like he didn't care anymore. I wondered what he would think of Hope coming back and retaking the pack. Holding on to Hope will only damage my pack's morale. I knew he was using that word with a double meaning. We need to move forward and prepare the pack to go into the next level. The pack has suffered enough under a bad administration. I will make them better and stronger. It's good to see that you have the pack's best interests in mind. We will do whatever we can to help. We will be keeping an eye on you all for a while. So don't hesitate to ask for help if you need it. That's kind of you. I'm sure that the Uber pack has better things to do than to be here watching us. It's our job to make sure all the packs are at their best. We changed topics and engaged in small talk, just being polite to one another. I could tell he was angry, but didn't want to antagonize me. I was going to send some people with the excuse of wanting to participate in the full moon ceremony. That would buy us at least a couple of months. Hope. I felt very welcomed by everyone. But I was already missing the Uber pack. That was a little worrying. That wasn't my home. And I needed to focus on returning to my own home. What can I get you for breakfast? Swift asked me. Whatever you have. It's fine I'm not picky. I said. It's not a problem at all. Just tell me what you prefer and I'll prepare it really. Just scrambled eggs and bacon. I asked. 
It was something easy to prepare so I didn't feel guilty, and it was a good breakfast. They included some bread and other stuff, and it was very good. So what are your plans right now? Are you planning on staying here for a while? Trunk asked. Well, I'm waiting for my ride. Once he is done with his business, he will call for me, and we will head back, so I can continue my training. Who is coming for you? Jack, who had joined us for breakfast, asked. He was very interested in me, and I felt bad that I didn't know him well, since he seemed to be very fond of me. My true mate. I found him during the last full moon ceremony. He is great and has been helping me a lot, as a true mate should. Swift said, Would you like to join us for training? Trunk asked, I'm sure you would benefit from experiencing different kinds of training. That's a good idea, thank you. I was sure it was mostly a test. I hadn't hidden my desire to challenge Doom. So he had to see if I was capable of doing so. And it was going to be a good test for me too. To see if I was truly improving with my training. With the Uber Pack Warriors and with Dagger. After breakfast, I went to change. And luckily I had workout clothes with me. Then I followed the Alphas and their son to the training ground. Swift was smiling and from the clothes she was wearing. She was also ready for training. Today we have a guest. Trunk announced. She will be training with us for today. Please help her and guide her. It was a good sentiment. But I could see some of them were not happy with my presence. I wasn't intimidated by their glares. I had been facing angry uber pack warriors for a while now. And nothing could be worse than that. Training started like normal, with exercise. I could tell that the alphas were in very good shape, and they were able to go through most of the exercises without effort, and I did my best to follow them. After that, they did a few demonstrations and then suggested we paired for some sparring. Since I had never trained formally in my own pack, I had no comparison point when I started training with the uber pack, but now I was starting to see the big difference between the training. I had endured and what other packs could do. The uber pack warriors were monsters compared to them. From what I could see, the weakest among the uber pack warriors was at the same level as the strongest here. My brother had told me that all uber pack members were strong and that the weakest among them was at the same level as another pack strong beta or weak alpha. I was seeing that now. I could tell these were the elite fighters of the pack, but they were at the same level as my beginning group. Would you like to take part in the sparring? Swift asked me. Of course. I responded. I'll be your partner. A strong looking woman said. Don't worry, I will go easy on you. From what I heard, you are a beginner right? I didn't like her attitude, but I could tell she would give me a good workout. She looked like she didn't care who I was. She was ready to try to kick my ass. Thank you. But there's no need to hold back. I said, and she just smirked. How does it work here? Are we staying human or is shifting allowed? We are going to keep this human only. Later, we will train as wolves. The woman attacked first, without warning. But I was used to that kind of tactic and she was unable to take me with my guard down. I blocked the attack and went to the offense, managing to connect a punch. But she turned at the last moment, so it wasn't as effective as it could have been. She was relentless, but I was used to that. It was easy to see that she was more experienced than me. But she had underestimated me at first, and that allowed me to get into the rhythm of the fight. We were at it for a long while, and I was so focused on not letting her get the upper hand, that I didn't notice that everyone was watching us fight, until Trunk called a stop to the fight. That was actually impressive. He said, Terry here is one of our best warriors, and you were able to hold your own against her. I still have a long way to go before I can reclaim my pack. I thought it needed to be said. 
Well, you are an alpha, so it's natural for your reflexes and strength to be a little higher. Swift said. But don't think I'm trying to minimize your achievements. I can tell that you have been training, and I applaud your efforts. Would you like to face me? That wouldn't be fair. Her husband said. She has been fighting one of our best, while you just watched. She must be tired by now. He pointed out. I'm okay. I said, not wanting to lose the chance of facing an alpha. No, he is right. It wouldn't be fair why don't we leave it for tomorrow. You will stay with us longer right? Yes, I think I'll stay another day if you don't mind. Of course, I don't mind now. Let's wrap this up. The rest of the training wasn't as interesting. For starters, I didn't fight anymore. They had decided I had enough. Even if I still wanted to keep going. By the time we finished and went back to the pack house, I could feel the rest of the people had a better opinion of me. Not that I cared, but still it felt good to be respected. Jack was following me with puppy eyes. He kept repeating that I was his alpha and that he would follow me wherever I went. The rest of the day went without trouble, but at night it was hard for me to get to sleep. I wanted to face Swift and measure myself against a stronger opponent. Her name was enough to clue me as to her abilities, so I had already been thinking of ways to face her. I would need to anticipate her movements, which would be difficult since I hadn't seen her fight. I had no idea what her style was. Breakfast was as good as the day before, but I was careful not to overeat. A full stomach and rigorous training were not a good combination. Just like the day before, we started by doing some exercises. I was eager to start the fight with Swift, but I knew we needed to warm up first, and this was a good way to do it. I could feel that the atmosphere was getting heavy. Everyone was waiting to see what was going to happen next. I didn't want to act too eager, so I was waiting for Swift's lead. Now, what if we do a little sparring as we talked about yesterday? Swift finally asked. That would be great. It would be my honor. I was eager to start, and just like I expected, Swift turned out to be very fast. I had no option but to block her attacks, since she was too fast for me to dodge. But even if we were somewhat balanced, I could see that in time, she would be able to take the upper hand. I could see that she had experience on her side. She was adapting to my attempts to attack her faster than I could act. I knew that if the fight kept going for long, she would win. So all I could do was to try and endure for as long as I could. I knew I wasn't ready. But it was a humbling exercise to see just how lacking I still was. I needed to train harder and faster if I wanted to get my pack back. Jagger. I couldn't afford to stay any longer, but I haven't been able to find much. It was clear that he was already brainwashing the pack members. Most of them were very loyal to him. Since the previous Alpha had gone crazy after his mate's death, it wasn't that hard to convince others that true mates could be dangerous. I had a feeling that the ones that could be convinced already were. The ones that still wanted to find their true mates wouldn't change their minds so easily. Most of the changes that I could see were for good, so it was kind of hard to find fault in his methods. There was one thing that worried me. His focus was on training. On the surface, it was a good thing to have everyone getting training. It was the way we did it at the Uber Pack. But it worried me that he could be thinking of attacking and invading other territories. Since the Uber Pack had taken the position of Arbiter, wars had been avoided, but not all attacks had been stopped. I didn't like the idea of losing even one life if he acted in haste. At least training an army took time, and I was confident that Hope would be ready before Doom's army was. So are you heading back today? Doom asked me as I found him on the first floor. Yes, I've been away long enough. I will talk with my people. They will contact you in a couple of days to prepare the delegation. 
that will be joining you for the next full moon ceremony. I was not going to let him get away with denying his people the chance of finding happiness. I would just need to make sure he didn't hide any pack members during the visit. Nor was I going to let him make more excuses. Understood. I will be waiting for them. He was playing it cool. But I knew he was angry with the situation. I still wasn't sure about Hope's brother. I didn't know if he had truly betrayed her. Or if he really cared about her. And was just misguided. But that was something that Hope had to take care of herself. I shouldn't get involved in the problems between siblings. I got in my car and drove away. I could feel eyes on me, all the way to the border of the territory. I drove the wrong way for a while, just to make sure no one was following, and then changed directions and headed to where Hope was staying. I sent her a message to let her know I was on my way back. But I could see she hadn't seen the message. I hoped it was because she was having fun, and not because she was in trouble. When I got to the border, I got intercepted as expected. But I was quickly allowed through. I could feel that they weren't happy with my visit. They were suspicious, like most packs when they had a visit from someone from the Uber pack. But since they didn't try to stop me, and I knew that I wasn't going to stay long, I didn't care about their attitude. So where is the Alpha? As a guest, I had to go to him first. Training. If you just wait a little bit, he will be here soon. One of the warriors informed me. If it's not too much trouble, I would like to go see him right now. I had a feeling that I would find hope there. I could see the warrior wanted to protest, so I didn't give him a chance and started to move. Walking in the direction, I suspected the training grounds were. Soon the noise of fighting and cheering reached my ears, and I knew I was going in the right direction. When I got closer, I could see that Hope was fighting an older woman. She was just a little younger than my mom, but she was in shape. I was proud to see that Hope was holding her own, but I could tell that, eventually, the other woman would be the winner of the fight. The male alpha noticed me, and at first, he had no idea who I was, one of his warriors went to him, and I guess told him who I was, and he moved my way, not happy to see me. I was starting to get tired of that reaction. We were the good guys. Welcome to my pack, I'm Alpha Trunk. The alpha greeted me. I'm sorry I couldn't go to greet you, but I am in the middle of training. Hello Alpha. No worries, I'm just passing by. We can go to the pack house. He started. No it's okay. I want to see the fight. She is good right. I felt so proud of Hope, holding her own against an older, more experienced alpha. Still a long way to go before she can challenge Doom. But getting better each day. The alpha turned and stared at me. I guessed Hope hadn't told them. Who her true mate was. I wasn't sure if I should feel mad at that, but I knew she had her reasons. We had agreed to be discreet. I just didn't expect her to be that discreet. I guess that means you know her. He asked. Yes, she has been training with us for a while. Good. She needs good guidance if she wants to take on Doom. From what I heard, he is a good fighter. I worry about her. She got a hard start in life because of what happened with her parents. Don't worry, she is well protected now. I promise I won't let anything happen to her and she is strong. She just needs some guidance. She said she found someone to train her. Never expected it was someone from the Uber pack. He added, fishing for information. The Uber pack was created to protect the weak and keep the peace. And we haven't always done a good job certain things have happened lately. That just showed us that we weren't doing a good enough job. So we have been trying harder. We went to see if everything was fine with the power exchange in Doom's pack. And we are not sure he is the right person to become the Alpha. So we are helping Hope to grow stronger and reclaim her pack. Besides, I added with a smirk. 
I have a personal reason to make sure she fulfills her dreams. I could tell the Alpha was puzzled by my words. But before he could ask, the fight ended, and Hope finally noticed I was there. Hey, I thought you were going to pick me outside the pack. She said shyly. Maybe if you had answered your phone. But now I'm here. I responded and she blushed. She looked around and I could tell she was trying to resist. But the pull was too strong. We had been apart from each other for too long. So she jumped into my arms and kissed me. I'm sure she was planning just a peek to say hello. But as soon as our lips made contact, we couldn't resist each other. And were kissing, as if our lives depended on it. Well, I guess we found out who her true mate is. The Alpha said, and I felt it when Hope remembered we weren't alone. Yes, he is my true mate, and also the one who was training me to defeat Doom. Can't you defeat him? The Alpha asked me. Of course, but since it's her pack, Hope wants to do it herself, and well, I want to help her do what's best for her. If we think Doom starts getting out of control, or that too much time has gone by, I will consider challenging him myself. But it's something I want to do on my own, to show everyone that I am capable of ruling the pack. Hope added, I'm sure everyone would be happy to have you back, even if it's not you who fights Doom. A man I didn't recognize said, Some people are already starting to follow Doom. You going back, and doing so with your true mate by your side, would be a good thing. I trust my people, and a few more days, won't make much of a difference. But it's important, that it's me who challenges him. He has been trying to paint the image, that the Uber pack wants to take over all the packs, and Dagger taking control will be viewed, as the Uber pack's interference. If it's me, it would be different. Besides, he killed my father, and I want revenge. I wanted to take hope and kiss her senselessly. I was so proud of her speech, and I agreed. She should have everything she wanted. I was going to make sure she got whatever she wanted, whatever she needed. I'm going to say you don't need to prove anything to us your family. Founded the pack and belongs to you. But you are right that Doom has been painting the Uber pack's visits as them trying to control us. The man said, You are wise little one. The female alpha of the local pack said, And I think you are on the right track. I don't know at what level you were when you started, but I don't think you will need much longer to be ready to face him. And when you do, we will be here to support your claim. The male alpha said, I really appreciate it thanks. Are you ready to go? I asked. We have a long way to go. Just give me a chance to take a quick shower. Is that okay? She asked, turning to her hosts. Of course, whatever you need. Hope headed to the pack house, leaving me behind, and I just smiled at her antics. I'm happy she found a strong mate. I have the feeling she will need it. And having the support of the Uber pack won't hurt either. The Alpha said. She is a strong Alpha and needed a strong mate. And she would have the support of the Uber pack no matter what. Even if the Alpha title is not inherited, it's better when it stays within the family it's clear that her brother doesn't want the title. So it's better if it falls on her. Take good care of her. The man said, and I finally guessed he was the one who had run from her former pack. Many already consider her our rightful alpha. Don't worry. I won't let anything happen to her. Hope. I took a quick shower, and then spent a few minutes saying goodbye to Jack, and to the alphas of the pack. They had been very welcoming to me, and I felt a little bad for not telling them that my true mate was from the Uber pack. None of them questioned me about it, and somehow that made me feel worse. I asked them not to let others know that I was alive, and I said that even if someone found out about that, it was really important that no one found out that I was mated to Dagger, one of the heirs of the Uber pack. I was sure that would only cause trouble for us all if Doom found out. What did you find out? I asked Dagger. 
Well, your brother seems to be seriously heartbroken by your supposed death. Everyone says he is in denial, because he refuses to admit you are dead. But Doom thinks you are gone and apparently has been fighting with your brother about it. Well, I guess me being gone affects their plans. Whatever Doom has planned, I'm sure it's best for him if I'm gone, rather than being out of his reach. Maybe, he said, and I could tell he wasn't convinced. I knew he was trying to make me feel less betrayed by my brother, make it look like he actually cared about me. But I wasn't sure that was right. Ever since he returned, he had acted like he didn't care about me, like he was just trying to use me to look good in front of Doom. He practically sold me to him, by trying to force me to accept someone, who wasn't my true mate, just because he was too much of a coward, to look for his own. Anything new, besides my brother? I asked, trying to find out more. Well, some people are already buying into the whole true mates, are bad rhetoric that Dune has, but not everyone, not yet. What worries me more? is how focused he is on training. From what I gathered, after your supposed death, he said it was important to be prepared and to have the training. So now training is mandatory for teenagers and adults. My fear is that he might be training an army. It's not something to worry about just yet, but something to keep in mind. We can't stop monitoring them just yet. You know what that means. We will have to increase training. From what I see, you will get to where we need you to be in a short time. He smiled at me. You were keeping your own against that alpha. But it wasn't enough. I complained. It almost felt like she was toying with me. Not really. She was testing you. It's different. But you have to acknowledge she is an older alpha, with much more experience than you. It was kind of expected that she would be better. Just like Doom. He is older, he is male, and he clearly has experience fighting. He defeated my dad. Well, yes. That's why we are preparing you to go against him. You have access to the best and strongest trainers available. You will be able to face him in no time. So how was your time there? Besides the training? He asked, and I could feel he was worried about something. Well... It seems they were happy that I was alive, and they all support me, and my claim to the pack. They offered their help in whatever way they can. You know that they can't interfere with any challenges since that would bring conflict. But just the fact that they think I'm the right person for the position, helps me feel better and more confident and from what Jack said. Most people in the pack already consider me their rightful alpha, and wanted me to be there. The only problem is that, because of that, Doom's idea of me being with his son, was very attractive to most of them. I'm sure, that if I had stayed there, they would have ended up forcing me to take him as my chosen mate. It's a good thing that you managed to get away. But I think there's a good chance, that word of your survival will reach them. We already knew that, that was always a possibility. I pointed out. Well. They have no claim over you, as you left the pack, and we will work hard on getting you ready to face them when the time comes. Now, on another subject, do you want to stop early, and have a date night with me? He asked, trying to act nonchalant, but I could tell he was a little nervous about it. Of course. I would love to. I agreed immediately. The rest of the drive to the city was uneventful. And soon we were at the hotel getting ready for our night out. What do you want to do? Dagger asked me. I have no idea. I replied. But whatever we do together, I will be happy. Don't worry. I'm going to prepare a night you won't forget. He smiled at me. He left for a while. And when he returned he was looking very pleased with himself. So what's the plan? I asked. Well. We'll start with dinner, and the rest, it's a surprise. Come on. Tell me. I asked him, secretly enjoying the suspense. We went to a very fancy restaurant, 
and Dagger had already asked for a spread with different foods. Everything was so good that for a while I forgot about everything, but the food in front of me. When I lifted my eyes, I caught Dagger looking at me. I take it that you like the food? He asked. I could tell he was laughing at me. I have never had such delicious food. I said, sucking my fingers. His eyes went from amused to excited in just a blink, and I had to smirk at that. Served him right for laughing at me. I know of other delicious things you could be sucking on. He said, and it was my turn to laugh at him. Maybe later, if the date is worth it. I challenged him. From the way you are eating, I would think it's already worth it. You got me there. I agreed, and went back to the food. Once we finished our dinner, he took me to the theater. It was a whole new experience for me. The play was so sad and the actors so good that at one point I was crying, overwhelmed with emotions. If I had known this would upset you, I would have chosen something different. Dagger said, No, it's fine it's just so good take them as happy tears. You have given me an unexpected experience that I will treasure for the rest of my life. I never imagined that something so moving existed. Are you sure you're okay? He asked me once we were out of the theater. Yes, it was very good. I pulled him closer and gave him a kiss. I really liked it thank you for bringing me here. I'm happy if you are happy but the night is not over yet. He said, and we walked to a nearby park. He took me to where a carriage was waiting. Let's end our trip with a ride in the moonlight. For us wolves, the moonlight was very special, and I climbed into the carriage, already happy. The view of the park was spectacular, but nothing compared to my mate. As the ride progressed, my eyes kept going back to him more and more. I moved closer to him and kissed him. It's been very lovely but I think I'm ready to get back to the hotel. I told him, his eyes going dark. Driver, please take us to the exit. He requested. We got to the exit of the park, and somehow there was a car, already waiting to take us back to the hotel. I smiled at him, and we ran to the car, and spent the ride back trying to contain ourselves. We managed to behave all the way to our room. But as soon as the door closed behind us, we were kissing each other, as if our lives depended on it. I remember something about something delicious to suck on. I said, my hands going to his belt. Yes, something delicious. Dagger said, lifting me in his arms and carrying me to the bed. He threw me onto it and then knelt between my legs. What? I wanted to ask. But then he took one of my feet and kissed my ankle, then started a trail of kisses to my center. He went down on me like I was a feast, and I lost any thoughts as pleasure consumed me. When my brain went back online, I saw his satisfied look and pushed him down, returning the favor. We didn't get much sleep that night, and we had a late start the following day. By the time we arrived at the Uber pack, it was too late to go see the Alphas and make our report, so we went to sleep. It was good to be in a safe place, but I was already missing my home. After everything that had happened, I knew I had to start focusing once more on my training. We would have more dates in the future, once Doom was gone and I was back in my own pack. Dagger. I woke up tired but satisfied. It had been a long day driving back but it was good to be back home. I wondered how it would feel once Hope reclaimed her pack. Would I feel out of place there? Then I felt Hope moving, and I knew that I would be okay as long as she was with me. I kissed her and felt the smile on her lips as she put her hand behind my head and pulled me even closer. Good morning, I said, once she let me go. Very good morning. I love waking up next to you. I miss you the couple of days we were apart. Let's not do that again, okay? I would be very glad if we could spend the rest of our lives next to each other.
I'm okay with not being away from you ever. I smiled, and she smiled at me. But then something crossed her eyes. What? This is how my father felt. She said. What he forgot is that even if your mother wasn't there in person, her spirit was always with him. My grandmother lost her true mate during the last pack wars. She kept going and doing her job and living for future generations. I didn't like bad-mouthing her father, but he had failed her by being consumed by his grief and fear. You are right, part of me will always be with you, no matter what. And I'm not talking about the future, right now. You hold my heart, today and always. She blushed as she said it, as if embarrassed she had said that out loud. And you hold mine. I said. And it was true. No one truly understands what a true mate is until they have the chance to experience it for the first time. It still surprised me that Menace had been able to deny the bond for so long. Are you going back to training? I need to go see my parents, and maybe grandma. First, I'm going to look for Risk, and see if she is back and what she's been up to and I've been thinking of moving to a more advanced training group. Do you think I'm ready? She sounded unsure, so I moved closer and gave her a kiss to reassure her. Of course. And whatever issues you may have moving up, I can help you with. You will still train with me in the afternoons, right? I asked. I don't know why I sounded so needy, but I didn't care either. Yes, you are my favorite trainer after all. Let's go grab something to eat so we can start our days. Getting ready without getting distracted was not an easy feat, but we managed to get to the dining room on time. Everyone was very happy to have us back, and they all questioned us about our time away. I was glad to see that Ice and Risk were also back from their own mission. We gave them just the short version. I was sure that Hope would fill Risk in on everything we did in detail once they went to training and I needed to give my family the full report once we got to the office. Another stolen kiss before hope and risk went away, and then my dad's laughter behind me. I'm glad to see you and your true mate so happy so now. Let's go to the office, so we can get the full report okay. He asked. Of course. Let's go. I agreed. Everyone, even Ice joined us. The hallways at the pack house were weird. Sometimes they felt huge, and sometimes they felt very short. For some reason, this time I felt like it was taking forever to reach the office. The fact that Grandma was walking slowly was mainly the problem. I knew that she could move as fast as any of us. She was very strong despite her age. But she liked to play the old lady once in a while. Once we reached the office, Everyone went to their own places. Grandma naturally took the desk, while my parents and my aunt and uncle took seats beside her to the sides. Ice took one of the chairs in front of the desk, leaving the other one for me. So tell me, what happened when you met with Doom? Grandma asked. Well, the meeting went as well as you expected. He is of course trying to break his people from the habit of looking for their true mates. He is not going to allow his people to go out, looking for their other half-claiming security reasons, but I think I bought us some time, by suggesting sending people there instead. We will have to start working on that. I think sending some of our people will help stop him from protesting too much. I explained. That's a good idea. Mom said. I think I can coordinate that. Thanks. I also found something that makes me worry. His focus on training has increased. I think he is trying to build an army. It's subtle. He paints it as him being worried about his people and their ability to protect themselves. Hope's supposed death is actually his tool to promote this behavior. That would be very worrisome if it's true. My uncle said. How sure are you of this? I can't be certain. But that's the feeling I have it's not something to worry about in the short term. But something that could become a problem in a few years. 
I explained. Well, let's hope that your mate can take over before that becomes a problem. Grandma said. And I'm sure that once you both take over there won't be any desire to conquer other packs. My aunt warned. I wasn't sure if she was just joking. Or if she really thought I would do something like that. But I decided to ignore it. And pretend it was just a joke. Like Hope commented this morning, she did some training over with the neighboring pack, and she was very good. At least for the time, she had been training. But she still has a long way to go before I will be comfortable with her facing doom. That's natural no one wants their true mate to be at risk. But you need to be impartial. You can't hold her back if she is ready. Mom warned. If you're ever in doubt. If she is ready or not, come look for me. I will be impartial about it. I won't send her, if I don't think she is ready. But I won't hold her back for fear of putting her at risk. Grandma said. I trust you, Grandma. And I'm sure that you will also be hearing from others. And I would like her to be tested by my parents in a friendly match. Before sending her after doom, if that's okay. I asked everyone. I was asking my grandma for permission, and my parents for cooperation. They all seemed okay with my proposal as they were nodding. That's a good idea. I'm always up for a spar, when you need me. Mom agreed. But I was a little reluctant to let Hope fight Mom, as she was super strong, and tended to let herself be carried away. Thanks Mom. I'm sure Hope will appreciate your help. She is family now. And even if she wasn't, we are here to help everyone, especially young alphas, so they can become the best version of themselves. My uncle said. In talking about that, I said. Did you talk about my proposal? I had no idea he had submitted one, and I felt a little left out about it. Some, what do you think? My grandma said, turning to me. Ice thinks it would be a good idea to ask young alpha candidates to spend a month training with us. That's an excellent idea. I said, remembering Ice saying something like that a couple of years before. But I don't think it would be well received many will take it as a way to control other packs. It could be something optional, and then we can wait until others notice if it's beneficial or not for them having hope training here will help with that. Once she takes her pack back and everyone knows she trained here, it will be easier for others to see the benefits. Ice explained. I had to accept the idea had merits, but I didn't like that they were going to use my true mate for PR purposes. The idea has merits, but you are right. There's no knowing how they might react. We want to make sure people feel comfortable asking us for help when they need it. No need to scare them. But giving the alphas the option to send their ears for training. Can't hurt it's all about choice after all. Grandma said. And I knew that she was going to do it. She liked the idea and was going to implement it. So. Is there something else you want to let us know about your trip? My dad asked. No. I think that's all. I said. Well then. We will let you go back. Grandma said, dismissing me. I walked out. I stayed behind, and I took it as him having to discuss his new idea with them. I needed to focus on new training exercises for Hope, and also for my class. It was good to be back, Hope. It felt weird to be back at the Uber Pack. Weird, because it was starting to feel like home, and that was something I was not expecting. I didn't like to think that way. Because it felt like I was betraying my own home. The one I had been born in. The one I had grown up in. Was it hard for you to get used to being here? I asked Risk. Well, yes and no. At first, I couldn't even walk inside. Without feeling unwell. So many strong alphas together. Was an almost painful experience for me. But once Ice and I realized we were mates and he taught me how to embrace my alphaness, it became easier. She explained. But, don't you miss your home? I insisted. Well, kinda. But we visit often. 
and I always knew I wasn't going to be staying there my brother, is more than capable of taking care of the pack. He doesn't need me I knew that I would end up going to my true mate's pack and well, I like it here, and at least for now, we have a lot of freedom. Once we take over, it will be different, but right now, I like it. She explained. You don't care about being the alpha of the Uber pack. It doesn't seem your style. I said. It will be decades before that happens. You have seen night. I will be old and with kids of my own by the time we have to take that responsibility. She said. And at the mention of kids, my mind was derailed. Children with dagger. That sounded so good. But I had so much to do before that could be possible. I needed to get stronger, take my pack back, get it to be stronger, and only then I would be able to focus on other things. We arrived at the training grounds, and Risk took me to the edge, where a couple of very strong-looking warriors were waiting. Hello, we are here for placement, she said, and I wasn't sure what she meant, but I just smiled and nodded. Yes, I was expecting you, one of them said. Well, let's see how good our future alphas really are. The other mocked, in a tone I didn't like at all. From Risk's expression, she didn't care for it either. Let's not waste time, and come at me together. I will decide where to place you depending on how close you come to hitting me. Hey, knock it down. The other said. Let's do it properly. I looked at Risk and took a gamble. I let my alpha essence out, and when Risk noticed what I was doing, she did the same. It felt as if it had gotten stronger. I wasn't sure if it was because of our true mate bond, or if it was something that would have happened either way. But I felt it grow stronger, and when the other trainer tried to counter it, it just wasn't enough to go against the both of us. I could see him choking as Risk moved to attack. He managed to dodge but moved closer to me, so I kicked him on the back of his knee, and he fell. He tried to get up, but Risk managed to connect a kick to the side of his head. We were getting ready for more when the other warrior's laughter made us pause. That's gold. I wish I had been recording. But that's enough for now. Let's try to do things the way they are supposed to be done. What do you say, ladies? What are we supposed to do? I asked, liking him more than his partner. First, we will go over some basics. You know, some running and exercises. Then we will go over basic forms, and then light spar with me, one on one, so I can get a better sense of your level. He explained. Makes sense. Risk said. How do we start? I asked, eager to prove myself. Running. I will be timing you. As many laps as you can in an hour. Go. He said. Taking a chronometer out of his pocket. Risk and I started running. But we weren't racing on anything. We knew it was going to be a long day. And there was no point in burning all our energy at the start. Still. There was some competition going on between us. Just enough to keep us pushing ourselves to our limits. After an hour. We collapsed and the trainer offered us bottles of water. You did pretty well. He said. Now, we will go over basics, push-ups, squats, you know the drill. He smirked. It was training from hell. Another hour into the training, and I felt like I was going to throw up. Risk wasn't looking that much better, but neither one of us was going to give up. So whatever exercise he asked. We did. Later, when he asked us to shift to our animals, we were almost too tired to keep going. But if that's what he needed, that was what we would do. It felt refreshing to change skins. As a wolf, we didn't have the same worries, we were free. We ran after him, extending our muscles and burning the little energy we had left. We hunted a couple of rabbits. As animals, Needs like food were priorities we had to take care of. It wasn't until later that it occurred to me that it was all part of the test. 
We ran some more and went back to where we had started, shifted back, and prepared for whatever was next. I had to admit that I was already exhausted and wanted a shower and some rest, but the day wasn't over yet. There were a couple of warriors waiting when we got back. They will show you a few techniques. Then I want you to copy those when you attack me. I will see how well you learned, not how effective it is on me. Of course, if you manage both, there will be extra points. Understood. Yes. Both Risk and I called. Some of the things they showed us, we already knew, but a couple of techniques were new to us. Still, I was pretty sure I did a good job. Not that I managed to throw him, but I connected a few hits, and I was feeling pretty proud of myself by the end of the day. Please, tell me we are done. Risk pleaded from the ground, where we were both trying to catch our breath. You did really well. Come back tomorrow morning, and I will tell you which group to join. I can tell you right now, that you will go to one of the advanced ones. Not many get to this point and still have the energy to talk. Screw you. Risk said, and I couldn't help but laugh at her. I got up and helped her up too. We were tired, but I felt satisfied with our day. I hadn't expected to face such a challenging day, but I felt like I had done a good job. We dragged ourselves to the pack house and found ice and dagger on the way. Risk just extended her arms and Ice came and took her into his arms, carrying her the rest of the way to their room. Do you also want a lift? Dagger asked. No, I'm going to walk by myself. I said proudly, but my legs felt like jelly, and I wasn't sure I was going to make it. Dagger followed me close behind, just in case I needed him. We were almost to our room. When I stumbled and Dagger couldn't hold back anymore, he lifted me into his arms and carried me the rest of the way. Wait here. He told me and went to the bathroom. I heard him preparing a bath, and I felt so loved and content. You need to relax a little. You look like you had a difficult day. He called from the bathroom. I certainly pushed my limits. Tomorrow, I'll be assigned to a new group. I hope I place in advance. I said, my voice a little wistful. If you did, then I might be your new trainer. He said, well, you are already my trainer. You won't escape from giving me personal training. Up close and personal. He adds as he comes back and takes me back into his arms. Now, let me get you into the bathtub so you can relax. I don't think we will be able to join the rest of the family for dinner, so I will ask for some food to be brought here. He helped me strip and helped me into the hot water. I felt my whole body relax with the water and the oils he had poured in. This feels like heaven. I said. Just don't fall asleep. I will come back in a few minutes to help you wash your back. He smirked. I was too tired to move but I didn't have to do much. Dagger was more than willing to do all the work. He joined me in the bathtub, and then we moved to bed. My tiredness was forgotten for a few minutes, but after he was done with me, I was too exhausted to wait for my food. I just fell asleep. Dagger. I felt a little guilty. Hope had been tired, but I couldn't resist her naked body, and had ravaged her. She hadn't complained and had a happy smile on her face. But still, I should have been more considerate. I ate alone, saving a few things that wouldn't taste bad, even cold, and let her sleep for a while longer. Once I felt enough time had gone by, I woke her up. But she just kept her eyes open long enough to eat, and then went back to sleep. Sometimes it was a little scary how much I cared for her. I knew how devastating it could be to lose what we had, so I was determined to keep her safe. And the best way to accomplish that was to make sure she was able to defend herself. Wake up sleepyhead. I called, kissing her softly. She protested and tried to hide under the blankets, looking absolutely adorable. But I pulled them above her, 
It was time to wake up. It was hard to resist her. But she was already tired and we both had long days ahead of us. So I focused on waking her up softly. Five more minutes. She asked. But I kept kissing until she finally opened her eyes. No time. I said when things started to get heated. You need to go see where you will be training from now on. Come on get up. You are no fun. She complained. That's not what you said last night. I countered, and she blushed. Come on. We can do a repeat of that later tonight. Right now, let's behave. You started it. She protested. And I will finish it, just not right now. We managed to get ready and headed to see the rest of the family. Good morning. Risk was the first to greet us. She sounded cheerful but looked still exhausted. Ice was hugging her and practically feeding her. Ready for our new start. Not really. I'm still tired. Hope said. I heard you did well. My aunt said. We tried our best. Risk said. Maybe you will be joining my group. I said. Wouldn't that be a conflict of interests? Mom said. It's not like I'm going to go easy on them you know me. I smiled. But I wasn't so sure. I wanted to help her. But at the same time. It would be difficult watching others fight her. I don't trust him. Risk Mach whispered. He looks like a mean trainer. Those are the best. My aunt said. You won't learn if you don't push yourself. But don't worry Tony will place you on the right team for you. And remember. Wherever you end up. You are part of the family. And have to show the rest of them what we are made of. It might take a while. So don't push me. Risk warned and we all smiled at that. I have some things to discuss with Tony. Why don't I walk you there? I said, and no one protested, even knowing it was an excuse. That sounds good. I also need to check some things with him. I added. So we are getting bodyguards? Risk asked with a smile. Once we finished, we said goodbye to our parents and followed Risk and hope to speak with the main instructor. We all trusted Tony to be fair. He wouldn't mind who they were, only what they could do. I still remembered facing him, from where I couldn't even last a minute against him, to when I was finally able to bring him down. I see you brought some backup today. Tony mocked when we arrived. We don't need them, but they insisted on coming along. Hope said, Yes. You don't as expected from our leader's true mates. You are very capable. You still need to polish your techniques. But you are on the right track. Build some more muscle. Learn the right moves. And you will be unstoppable. I have a goal that I need to achieve. She responded. And you will sooner or later. I assured her. Well, you both will be jumping a few grades. I will send you both to Alice's group. She is in the lower rung of the advanced classes, but she focuses on form and techniques. She will be a huge help to you both. That sounds about right. I said. That's a good choice. I said because it was. But Alice was one of the few females that had actually tried to convince Ice or me to take her as a chosen mate. She was very focused and power hungry. It would be a challenge for both of them. I just needed to warn Hope so Alice wouldn't take advantage of her. I know where Alice's group is. I can take you there. I offered, since I needed the time to talk to her and explain a few things. Didn't you have some things to discuss with the trainer? Hope asked. Well, yes. But I can come back later. I don't need a bodyguard. I already told you. Just be careful with Alice. She is not as sweet as she looks. I warned. No one really is. She said back. So, where to? Just walk that way. Tony pointed. And you will find her. She only trains females. I think hers is the only group like that. You won't be able to miss it. I see you later. Hope gave me a kiss, while Risk did the same with Ice. And then they both walked away.
I get why you sent them with her Alice is really good. I said once they were away. But you know how she is about her position, and she wanted to be Alpha here. She won't go against the sanctity of a true mate bond, Tony said. And a little jealousy will be a great incentive for your mate to improve. She already has a goal she needs to achieve. She doesn't need extra incentives. I only hope that Alice doesn't cross the line, or there will be blood. I said. Agreed. I said menacingly. She knew that risk wasn't a pushover, but she wasn't as motivated, and that could cause problems for her with Alice. She was an expert at finding weak points and exploiting them and Ice would want blood, if anything happened to his mate. So, did you need to talk to me? Or was it truly just an excuse to come here? Tony asked. No, I need to discuss with you the trainees I have right now. I feel that some of them are no longer getting much out of training with me. So maybe they should be moved to other activities. But I wanted to check with you about it. And I want to discuss a new group we are going to form. I said. I have a few people in mind already. But I would like to get some feedback. You know them better than I do. Okay. So it wasn't an excuse after all so sure. But let's go to my office. I have the feeling this will take some time. So I would prefer to be in a more comfortable setting. Tony said. Moving towards his office, leaving us no option, but to follow him. I liked him. He knew his place, when to push, and when to follow orders. He was also a good friend of my grandma, and not many could say that. Ice didn't have anything planned for the day, so he let me have my talk with Tony before him. Even if I did have some concerns I wanted to talk to him about, it had been mostly an excuse. So our talk, even if necessary, didn't take long, and soon we were done and I left, leaving Ice and Tony to discuss their own problems. I needed to go see my students. I was going to move a few of them, and I knew how important it was to present them with the move. I didn't want them to feel like they were being punished, nor like it was a reward. It was just a change of scenery. With most of our alphas, it was as important to keep them in check, as it was to motivate them. What I needed was to push them to keep growing and keep being challenged. All through my class and the discussions, I had with the ones that were being moved, I couldn't keep my mind away from hope. I knew of the challenges she was going to face, just for being my true mate, and I didn't like thinking that being mine, was going to make things harder for her I wanted to help her to give her everything. During sparring, I might have been a little rougher than was warranted, but I also needed to let off some steam. Luckily, the group could take a beating without a problem. They would only come back asking for more. I still felt a little guilty as I headed home. I wasn't sure what I would find once I arrived. I just hoped that everything had gone well with Hope and Alice, or I wasn't sure what I would do. Hope. I don't know if our mates were just being their usual overprotective selves, or if there is something wrong with our new assignation. Risk said what I had been thinking about. Yeah, I had the same feeling. It might be just our imagination though. Well, we are about to find out. We had arrived at our destination. It wasn't a big group, but one thing was clear right away. Everyone there was female. The one in charge was beautiful and looked really strong. Are you Alice? We were told to report to you. I said. She looked at us critically, and from her frown and upturned nose, she found us lacking. Yes, I was told you were coming. Please, everybody, welcome our dear Alphas to be. The women who joined the heirs of this pack and plan to lead us in the future. Her tone was mocking and I disliked her instantly. Actually, I plan to lead my own pack. No disrespect to the Uber pack, but I will be alpha of my own very soon. Just because you managed to snatch one of the heirs, doesn't mean you can go and take whatever you want. I plan to recover my pack, 
the one that has belonged to my bloodline for generations. And I plan to do it myself. I don't need anyone's help. I had no idea why I was being so defensive. But I wanted to make it clear I wasn't using dagger. And you don't owe them any explanations either. Risk interrupted. And I realized she was right. I had allowed the woman to bait me into unnecessary justifications. Right. We are here to train. Are you going to do your job? Or do we need to go look for another trainer? I replied. Let's see what you are made of. I hope you are ready. I won't go easy on you. With that, she stripped faster than I thought possible and shifted to her wolf. Everyone copied her and after sharing a quick look, risk, and I did the same. We took our clothes off, not with the care we usually did, since we didn't want to be left behind, and shifted quickly. We barely managed to catch up to the rest of the group. They were running very fast. It didn't seem like a good idea. At the pace we were going, we wouldn't last for long. Or maybe they would, and we were the losers with not enough stamina for the challenge. We ran through some really hard terrain, and we went almost to the limit of the territory. We crossed a couple of patrols, but there weren't others in that part of the territory. I was getting exhausted by the time we slowed down. I noticed right away that there were some elk grazing around and that we were going hunting. It was obvious that they had experience hunting together and for most of the hunt, risk, and I had trouble adapting. When the time came for the killing blow, we were left behind once again. But risk saw another animal and took the opportunity to jump it. I followed her lead and together. The both of us managed to kill a huge male, almost as big as the one the rest of the group had attacked. I don't know if Alice was more impressed or pissed off that we had managed to hunt on our own. We ate, but we had to share our kill with the rest. Our instincts were telling us to fight the others, but a part of my rational mind kept reminding me that we were on the same team and that attacking them on our first day could be a bad idea. We took a quick nap, or the rest of the group did. No matter how much I tried, I had the feeling that the moment I closed my eyes, they were going to leave us. When the rest woke up, we went to the lake and took a quick dip, still in our animal forms, and then went back to the training grounds. We shifted and dressed again. Shifting did nothing for my tiredness, and all I wanted was to go take a bath and spend some time with Dagger. But I could tell from Alice's eyes that she wasn't done with us yet. Good, at least the two of you can keep up. She said, even if I could see that some of the others could barely move after all the day's activities. Let's go over some of the basics. I want to see what you are capable of. She called both Risk and me and paired us with some of the others. She asked for different submission holds and asked us to break out of them. I had the feeling she was just trying to humiliate us, since some of them were really hard, or almost impossible to break. I couldn't escape from half of those. Alice was happy to tell us everything we were doing wrong. But it was to my advantage, as I was learning a lot. I hated her, but I was willing to take it as long as I could keep improving. That will be all for today. Alice finally called. You weren't so bad after all there might still be hope for you. She dismissed us. I kind of want to tear her face up. Risk said when we were halfway back to the pack house. She is a bitch, in more than one sense. She said, and I giggled. She doesn't know us, and she is judging us based on whatever she heard from someone else. Let's just prove to her that we are true alphas, and that we deserve to be here. We will just not right now. I want to go to bed. As if yesterday wasn't hard enough, she was trying to kill us today. I could feel a hell of a headache, and my muscles were about to seize. I know I need ice. Where is he when I need him? She complained, and as if by magic, I saw him walking out of the pack house. How are you feeling? He asked, and I could see he was worried. 
I think Alice was trying to kill us. She made us run and hunt and break holds and a lot of things. And I can't take another step. She pouted. Well, you don't have to. He took her into his arms in a prince's carry and walked away. Do you also need a lift? Dagger asked from behind me. Actually, I think I do. I said. It's been a hard couple of days I can walk. But that will certainly exhaust whatever is left of my energy. Why bother when you have me? He took me into his arms, the same as Ice had taken risk. I hate to think about what everyone will be saying tomorrow. I said, thinking of how everyone would say I was so weak that dagger had to carry me everywhere. They are going to say that I needed you so much that I couldn't even wait for you to get inside, and I had to take you into my arms, he said, before claiming my lips. He kept moving and I felt him going up the stairs, not stopping the kiss for even a second. I was expecting things to progress, but when I broke the kiss with a yawn, Dagger decided there was no time for fun, only for rest. You are too tired. You need some rest. Let me prepare you another bath, and then I will go search for food. After that sleep, you are no fun. I complained. Even knowing he was right, I had no energy for more. It has been a couple of very exhausting days. Dagger took me to the bath. Once again, it was at the perfect temperature and smelled delicious. I closed my eyes for a moment and woke up. When I started to sink under the water, I decided I was too tired for that, and what I really needed was sleep. I was trying to get out when Dagger returned and helped me out, helping me get dry and dress in a comfy pajama, before carrying me to the sofa and feeding me some food. It was for the best, as my eyes refused to stay open for long. I could hear Dagger trying to suppress his laughter. Shut up. I said between bites. Just a few more bites, and I'll take you to bed. I smiled, and he laughed harder. Just to sleep, my love. I'll take you to bed to sleep. You are no fun. I said once again, but he was right. I had never trained so hard, and my body just couldn't take any more. But I also felt so satisfied with how things were. I finished my food, and he carried me to bed. As soon as my body made contact with the bed, I was lost to sleep. Dagger. It was hard to see Hope so exhausted. It had been a couple of weeks since she had started training with Alice, and it looked like her mission was to kill Hope and risk by overworking them. They had just been enduring it without complaint. But Ice had a new mission, and I was sure he was going to take risk with him, leaving Hope to face Alice alone. I didn't like that, but as my family had warned my cousin and me, our mates had to fight their own battles, and stepping up would only hurt them. Hope had a goal, one very important, and she was convinced that the training was helping. I wasn't so sure, since it looked like her body was suffering from the training, and not in the way it should. I was worried, and I didn't know what to do about it. I hated feeling so useless. I went to the kitchen and grabbed some breakfast. I wanted Hope to get as much rest as possible. I was going to feed her in bed, so she could eat something, and then let her get some more sleep. She protested when I woke her up, but she was starving and as soon as I put food in front of her, she devoured it. When I suggested more sleep she protested, only to fall asleep, as soon as her head hit the pillow. I stared at her for a while. She looked so peaceful and so cute while sleeping. After a few minutes, I left her to go see my parents. Ice was already there talking with his own parents. Sorry I'm late. I greeted them. No worries. Dad said. We haven't started yet. So, what's the situation? I asked, looking at Ice. Well... The girl we sent to investigate said that there are some missing pack members that no one has bothered to report. The official tale is that they went out of the pack for college and decided to start a new life outside the pack. I said, 
but we don't believe that. It wasn't a question, just my take on the situation. What do you think is happening? Another crazy bastard kidnapping shifters. I still remembered the illegal fighting ring some other groups had discovered. Since not many wolves were involved, we didn't have much to do with taking them down. But we were aware, and even helped a little with the cleanup. It could be. My aunt said, since a void was created, it's possible someone else is trying to replicate that the problem is that I doubt they would be going after wolves. Everyone knows that we are a powerful force and that it's best not to mess with us. So we think it's something else and we have a few leads thanks to the investigators we sent. But we want ice and risk to take the lead in the investigation. I would feel better knowing one of us is there. I know you don't want Hope to be alone, but I need risk with me. Ice apologized. I get it I wouldn't want to be away from Hope, either the problem is that she will be alone with Alice, and I don't like how things are going if Hope arrives not able to move and covered in bruises one more time. I'm afraid I won't be able to stop myself from teaching Alice a lesson. I growled, barely able to keep calm. And what does Hope think about that? My mom asked. She claims she is learning. But it looks to me like she is only learning how to take a beating. That's also an important part of training. My dad pointed out. The longer you can hold out, the longer you have to turn a fight to your benefit. Still, I hate the idea of my mate being hurt. I complained. And she ends up so tired every day that I can't even try to help her training. Give it time. She will start getting used to it, and then it will be easier for her. You know how it is, you need to build up your stamina. You also need some time for recovery. Last weekend wasn't enough for her to rest, and since it coincided with the full moon ceremony and the night run, she didn't have much chance to. Right? She should have skipped the run. My aunt said. I get it, you are worried. But tomorrow she won't have training you can spend the day together and have some quality time alone. We will. And I want to let you know I won't be available. Have to make sure Hope gets her rest. I said. Maybe you should leave her alone if you want her to rest. Ice joked, and he was right. It was hard not to let myself go when we were together. Especially if we were alone and in bed. But she needed rest and I wouldn't allow my personal needs to harm her. Well, I have some planning to do. So if you excuse me, I need to get going. Of course, son. Let us know if you need anything. You know that you can count on us for whatever you need. Thanks, Dad. I'll see you later. I think I will be going as well. I need to make sure Hope gets to her training. She was still sleeping when I left. Good luck. Mom said as I walked out. I went to the room and found her still sleeping. I didn't like it. But I went and kissed her, so I could wake her up gently. What time is it? She mumbled. You just have enough time to get ready and arrive at training. I informed her, and she bolted out of bed. I can't be late. I'll take a quick shower to wake up. She ran to the bathroom and left me there. I knew joining her would make her late, and we couldn't have that. She rushed out and left the room, after giving me a quick kiss. I knew I had to prepare my own training class, but there would most likely be more sparring where my trainees, and I would let go of some of our energy and frustrations. I would have felt guilty, but I knew that my group only needed experience and a chance to burn energy. Once you knew the basics, the most important part was repetition, until you moved on instinct alone. Muscle memory was a reality. Training your body to react, even before you could think about what you needed to do. The key was to train so hard, your instincts started to act for you. Fight and repeat. And sometimes pain, was also a good thing. I knew some of the warriors, that liked to challenge me were looking for some pain to bury their own needs to dominate. Being an alpha without a pack was hard for most, and everyone had their own way of coping with that. 
pain was one of the options, and protecting others was a good option as well. I decided I needed to talk to my grandma. More about sending some of our people out. Maybe even offer some of our people as bodyguards. It would be a good way to make money. Not that we needed more. Hello boss. One of my trainees greeted me. Sparring again. Unless you are already tired of it. I asked. Hell no. I almost won the last time. Another one said. He had been far from winning. But he sure liked the challenge. You know the drill. Let's start with a run. Then we will decide if we are sparring in animal or human form. Agree? I asked, and they all cheered. After the run, we formed pairs and started to spar, but my mind wasn't on it. So I decided to leave my group for a while and went to spy on Hope. I could feel they were close by. With Alice, you never knew where they could end up. But it looked like they were on the training grounds. I moved to a vantage point, so I could see them without them noticing me, and realized that everyone had formed a circle around hope and risk. It looked like they were practicing a move, everyone was being given a chance to try it on them, while they kept defending. Most of the time, the others managed to land the attack, and hope and risk were constantly being hurt. I wanted to run and give Alice a piece of my mind. But I couldn't do that with so many witnesses there. It would affect Hope's image, and that would do more damage than good. She needed to stand up on her own, but I hated watching her being attacked like that. I watched for a while and realized that both of them were holding up better than most. They were taking the punishment without complaint, and giving as good as they got every chance they had. It was all down to repetition. By getting attacked the exact same way, their bodies were acting on their own. Of course, it would backfire once their opponent decided to use a different technique. But it was a good start. The end result would be a good one. But the execution was almost barbaric. It was hard to contain myself and walk away. I needed to talk to Alice about her approach. If she was truly trying to help, well... There were better ways to do it. If she was trying to punish them for being mated to the Alpha heirs, then she was going to pay for it. But I needed to go back to my own group. Walking away was hard, but I had to remind myself that Hope was capable of taking care of herself, and if she was truly in trouble, she could ask for help. She knew I had her back, and that all my family was behind her. Also, Risk was a strong woman with a temper. If they were truly in trouble, one of them would say something, right? I hated that Risk and Ice were going away. Ice was always there for me. But I guess I had to get used to it. I wouldn't have Ice once Hope reclaimed her position as Alpha and me with her. It was time I started getting used to leading with my mate instead of my cousin. Hope. I was getting tired of all the abuse during training. Every time I felt like I was getting the upper hand, something happened and I was back at the start. Alice was conducting a campaign to break us, and I wasn't going to give her the satisfaction. I hated seeing the smirk on her face when she thought we were going to break down and ask for mercy, and I loved to see her disappointment as we endured the abuse without complaint. I refused to give her the satisfaction of defeating me. What I wanted above all else was for her to face me herself so I could practice on her. Even if she defeated me, I wanted to at least hit her once. Like every day, we started training by running and exercising. It was becoming easier to keep up with the others. It was the next part that still hurt and was holding us back. We had been practicing in human form for an hour when she asked us to shift. Two circles were formed, one with me at the center, and the other one with risk. Everyone around us was taking their turn attacking. You never knew where the blows were going to come from. There was no way of predicting what was going to happen. Our only option was to stay hyper-focused and aware of everything around us. But it was not an easy task, 
and most of the time it wasn't enough for us to end the fights without injury. I felt like I was getting better. Basically fighting for your life is a great motivator to rapidly improve. Some of them took the fighting very seriously, and a moment of distraction could be enough to sustain grave injuries. I could never let my guard down during the sparring, or the damage could be more than I could endure. I had to fight the others, until I was covered in blood, and my skin was broken in way too many places. Still, I kept going, doing as much damage, as I could to repay them, for what they were doing to me. I don't know how long I had to fight before Alice said it was enough. Shifting back to human form, helped mend most of the injuries, but left me without energy. I was tired of going home too exhausted to do anything. At the moment all I wanted to do was to go to sleep. It was a good thing, that I would have a couple of free days. I wouldn't be able to keep going otherwise. I needed some rest. Good job. Alice said. It was hard to read her, so I wasn't sure if she was being sarcastic, or she was being sincere. I'll see you next week. I helped risk up, and we made our way back to the pack house. I've been talking to Ice, we have a new mission. She said. I'm afraid that we might need to travel away, and I'm going to leave you alone. Don't worry about it I'll manage. I wasn't as confident as I pretended to be. But she had a job to do, and I wasn't going to stop her. Maybe you should ask for some time of our move to another group, while I'm away. She suggested. No, I can't do that they will think I'm trying to run away, that I'm not strong enough. I protested. I was aware that they would like to test us, but this is too much. She complained. And if we go crying to the alphas about it. It will only confirm what they think, that we are not strong enough. We are only two people going against a group of people, of course, we are at a disadvantage. But it's not a matter of strength, it's a matter of numbers. And she was right about that. If all we had to do was face one opponent, we would be able to defeat them. But they were wearing us down with constant attacks from different people. But that was no excuse. A true alpha would be able to face that challenge. And if it was ice and dagger, do you think they would be held back by numbers alone? That shut her up. We knew that our mates would have been able to go against the whole group without problems. The two of them could defeat the group without breaking a sweat. But it's not the same they have been training since they were babies. She dismissed my words. You do whatever you need to do. But please, be careful. If you think even for a moment, that it's getting too much for you, ask for help. I will. I said. But the look she gave me let me know that she heard the lie in my voice. I knew it was not the ideal training. But I could feel myself getting better, and I needed that. As long as I was able to get up, and keep going by the next day, I would keep enduring the hellish training. I felt like I was running out of time. My pack was in the hands of a madman, and I needed to face him and defeat him to stop him. I knew that I could just leave Dagger to take care of him, but it was a matter of pride to take him down myself. Besides, if I didn't fight my own battles early on, everyone would doubt my capacity for leading. Everyone claimed they wanted me leading the pack, but I knew it wouldn't last unless I showed them I was more than capable of protecting them. And I also had something to prove to my brother, who had run and begged an outsider for help, instead of acting himself. If only he had come back and faced our father himself. If, instead of having someone else kill him, he had beaten some sense back into him, maybe he would still be alive. But he didn't. He turned his back on our family and betrayed everything we were. I wanted to go back and prove to everyone, myself included, that I was capable of leading the pack. Before that, I needed to survive training and become stronger. I could tell I was rapidly improving, and soon I would be able to call myself an alpha. I went to my room, for once arriving before Dagger, and went to take a shower. Once out, 
I changed my clothes. I was fully dressed by the time Dagger walked inside. How are you feeling? He asked. I could feel how worried he was for me. I'm feeling great. I said, doing my best to stay on my feet. Why don't we join the rest of your family for dinner? Are you sure? I can ask for food to be brought here. No, I'm alright but I warn you. Tomorrow I don't want to get out of bed all day. I said, and I saw his eyes go darker at the idea. Sounds good to me. Can I join you? He asked. Well, if you behave. I knew having him with me wouldn't do much for my rest. But it would be worth it. I missed being physical with him. He had been so worried about me he had controlled his libido. Something I wasn't sure was for the best. I missed him. If I join you in bed, it won't be to behave. He added, and I blushed, just thinking of everything we could do together, alone. Well, that's something for tomorrow right now. Let's grab some food, okay? I needed the distraction, and I needed to feel normal. Just give me a moment to shower. I sat down while I waited for him, and I wasn't sure if that was a good idea. The bed was so comfortable that I wanted to lay down and stay there for the rest of my life. I managed to stand back up before Dagger got out of the shower and was waiting for him by the door, ready to leave. Everyone was so serious when we arrived. Ice and Risk weren't there, and it felt weird. I needed to get used to being on my own. I couldn't keep using Risk as a clutch. How are you feeling? Might asked. I heard your training has been very hard lately. It has, but I also feel like it's working. I feel so much stronger lately. I explained, not wanting them to get involved. That's good, but there are many ways to get stronger. Don't push yourself, if you feel like you are getting hurt in the process. She said, looking at me with eyes that seemed to be reading into my soul. Sometimes she looked like a fragile old lady, and it was easy to forget she was the strongest alpha around. But moments like that were a reminder of who she really was. Alice's methods seem a bit harsh, but I trust she knows what she is doing. It's been hard, but I feel like I'm growing faster than ever before. I said, trying to appear confident. You have options, and we have time. Dagger said. So no need to hurt yourself in the process. He took my hand and kissed it. I knew he was worried about me. And I was grateful he hadn't interfered with my training. If it gets to be too much, I'll let you know. It had become a matter of pride. I wasn't going to let Alice see me defeated or calling for help. I would endure and prove to her and everyone else that I was capable of. The rest of the dinner... We kept to more pleasant topics, but I could feel that everyone was keeping an eye on me, trying to measure my state of mind, trying to decide if they should do something despite my words. As soon as dinner was over, Dagger and I went back to our room. I tried to stay awake, but my body betrayed me. It needed its rest and wasn't letting me skip on Dagger. It was hard to hold back. And I wasn't going to keep doing that. I needed to let Alice know that she couldn't just keep abusing my mate without consequences. I had no idea why she was acting that way. But I wasn't going to let her get away with it. She was disrespecting me and my family by acting that way against my mate. I had no option but to talk to her. But I felt bad about it since Hope had asked me to stay out of it. I knew where to find her. And luckily she was alone. It would be easier to face her. If there were no witnesses. Alice. How are you? I greeted her. Trying to keep my temper under control. Dagger. Took you long enough to come to talk to me. I thought your little mate would go crying to you. After the first day. She said mockingly. She doesn't complain. It's me who doesn't like your attitude. I don't know what you were trying to do. But you better stop it. This little game you are playing will end up with someone getting hurt. Do you really think my mate will take this for much longer? If she wants to lead us one day, 
She needs to toughen up. Alice said. She doesn't want to lead this pack. She has her eyes on another one. She is going to take over her family's pack. Do you really believe that? Alice sounded angry. Hope and I are going to take over her former pack. But she wants to be the one to challenge the current Alpha. Since he killed her father, it's a matter of revenge. As soon as she gets strong enough to face Doom, she will issue the challenge. I wasn't sure why I bothered to explain this to her. Are you going to leave us? Just like that. Yes. But, you can't leave your own pack. She shouted. Ice and Risk are going to stay. Besides, it will be a long time before Knight steps down from her position as Alpha. So it's not like it will affect anything. I replied, not understanding her anger. You belong here. I can't believe that you are ready to turn your back on your own pack because of a woman. She said, her voice still raised. Alice, be careful how you talk to me, and remember that that woman is my true mate. It's normal for true mates to move to their partner's packs, and it's not like the Uber pack. Needs me not that any of this has anything to do with you. You better mind your own business and stop trying to sabotage others. We have kept out of this, because that's what Hope asked of us. But if you insist on messing with her, you will be in trouble with me. You better start doing your job without hurting her. I warned. I never give special treatment to any of my trainees. She retorted. But you have no problem going after one just because your feelings are hurt. I said. You were selected to train her, because you are supposed to be the best. But you are not the only one, and they can be easily reassigned. Do your job, and do it properly. I warn you, you don't want to make me angrier. I walked away, but when I turned I could see that Alice was furious. Not that I cared. She was only a warrior, and she was going after someone very important to me. She needed to know that her actions had consequences, and that I wasn't going to let her get away with hurting my mate. Her temper tantrum was not going to work, and it could cost her a lot, if she didn't start behaving like she was supposed to do. I went back to my room where Hope was waiting. We had agreed to a relaxing day, watching movies and talking. I was going to try not to get distracted and tire her even more. But it was hard to resist my mate, especially when we were alone. Her smell was intoxicating and her smile was driving me crazy. Where were you? She asked me. She looked deliciously disheveled, and I couldn't help but go to her and kiss her. Well, hello. She greeted me with a blush. I had some things to take care of, but I'm free now movie. I asked. Yes. You choose, whatever you want is fine. She said, and I knew she meant it. I wanted her to relax, so I chose a comedy. I loved watching her smile and giggle. I loved making her happy. I held her in my arms, as we watched movie after movie, and even after she fell asleep. That's all I needed to be happy, to have my mate in my arms, and I could do that anywhere. I knew the Uber pack didn't need me, but Hope did, and my place was by her side, doing whatever she needed of me. I wasn't going to let anyone's opinion stop me from doing what I needed to do. The weekend ended faster than I wanted. I had things to do, and I hated the idea of Hope facing her first day alone with Alice. Ice and Risk were already on their mission, leaving me to take care of internal affairs and hope alone to face the pack's envy. I headed to the office and started going over the paperwork as the leaders started filling the space. I kept doing my work until I noticed the last of them had entered the office. Good morning. I greeted them. As you know, ICE will be away on a mission for a few days. I don't have to remind you that it's important to keep the perimeter safe. We never know what dangers could be lurking around. No worries, boss. One of them said. The patrols are going as usual, and we haven't seen anything unusual. Ice might need backup, 
so we have to take that into consideration when programming the schedule for the next couple of weeks. I want each one of you to select a warrior that you think might be of help to ICE's investigation and have them ready for deployment. It will be done as you request. They all agreed, as was expected of them. Any issues I need to be aware of. Sometimes, with the elite warriors, there were some aggressivity problems while patrolling the area. Easy to correct and take care of, but something we had to keep an eye on. Nothing lately. We have kept the stronger alphas in different groups to avoid dominance challenges outside of practice, but we might need a new tournament soon just to keep them in check. One of them suggested, No challenges to any of you. It sometimes happened when a warrior wasn't happy with their group leader. A couple of newbies tried to challenge me, but I put them in their place before they had the chance. After that no issues with them. Nothing to worry about, boss. All the warriors are behaving as expected. I heard your mate has been driving Alice mad. One of them said, way too casually. That's a matter for another day. I said, not liking where the conversation was going. I couldn't let them get me worked out on my issues with Alice. Or I would do or say something I'd regret. Why don't move your mate out of training? and let her join the patrols. What she needs the most is experience. One of them said, We don't get that much action during patrols. It would serve her better to send her on missions. Another replied, But policing other packs would get her in trouble if she wants to become Alpha or her own pack. Enough, my mate is not something to be discussed here. I cut them off. Go to your own assignments. I have work to do and training to lead later, so I don't have time to hear nonsense. Understood. They all replied, and left the room. But I knew they were going to discuss my mate between them once they left. I only hoped they wouldn't go and cause trouble later. I finished my paperwork and headed to the training grounds. I wasn't sure if it was a good idea to be coaching training that day. I was still angry but mostly worried about what could be happening between Alice and Hope. It's not that I didn't trust Hope or believed in her strength, but there was just so much a warrior could do on her own, and I had seen the training, her against the rest of them. And I didn't like it, didn't like it at all. In the end, I decided that my best shot was to go and lead my group with instructions, and then spy on Hope's training. I knew I wouldn't be able to be calm otherwise. My group was expert enough to know what to do even without me there. So I had no trouble leaving them behind and going to watch Hope's training. The first part was what one would expect. Running to start, a few exercises to prepare the body, followed by some light sparring. Only there was nothing normal about the exercise. It looked more like a competition with everyone trying to force Hope into doing more. She did her best and tried to stay away from provocations, but she was trying to hope. I knew that everyone was worried, and I was worried they were going to step in and ruin my image. I didn't want the rest of my group to know me, as the one who went crying to the Alphas, because she couldn't take the training. I was aware that Alice was being too hard on me, I knew that she was too focused on trying to break me, but she was teaching me a lot, and I knew that my fight against Doom wasn't going to be easy. Doom had killed my dad without remorse, and I was aware that he wouldn't go easy on me. On the contrary, he would do his best to break me and try to take me from Dagger. Failure wouldn't only condemn my former pack, it would bring war with the Uber pack. It wasn't a fight that the Uber pack would lose, but it would bring a lot of problems for my family. I knew that once I could get the upper hand in my battles with Alice's fighters, I would be able to face Doom. That's why I wasn't backing down, or asking for mercy, I needed this. In a way, I knew the Alphas understood that, but they didn't like it. I was afraid that if it kept going much longer, Dagger would intervene and it would hurt my chances. I didn't need any of them to go easy on me. 
and despite the situation, I trusted Alice wouldn't go so far as to do permanent damage to me. Even if she thought of me as undeserving, she wouldn't do anything to hurt the leaders of her pack. We started by running as usual, half of the time in human form, half in wolf form, with us carrying our clothes in our teeth on our way back. While we ran back, the others were trying to trip me, or making me lose my clothes. At the very least, my clothes were a mess, by the time we got back. But I didn't mind dirty clothes. It was uncomfortable, and the others laughed at me for that. But I didn't let their comments get to me. It was only clothes. There were more important things to worry about. Tired. Alice asked as I did my best to complete the burpees she had asked us to do. After all the running, my limbs felt like noodles. Not yet. I replied, and she smirked. I'm surprised you have lasted this long. I heard that you ran away from your former pack. And I even heard that you are using the excuse of going back to run from your responsibilities here. And that you are not planning on becoming one of the alphas of this pack. I think you realize you are not worthy of the title. She goaded me. I didn't respond, since the exercise was taking my breath. She knew what my goals were. I needed to go back home and become the alpha there. I heard giggling and laughing around me, mocking me. A few more. Alice called when I stopped after finishing my set. It looks like you need the exercise. I can't believe that someone as weak as you managed to catch one of the alphas. I'm starting to doubt the wisdom behind true mates. More laughs around, but this time I really wanted to hit her. How dare she mess with a sacred bond. You are jealous, because you wanted to have one of the alphas for yourself. But it's clear you are not worthy. I managed to reply. I'm better than you. She said. You are more experienced than me. I barely had any training before joining the Uber pack. But so far, I have managed to move to the advanced classes in no time. If we had the same experience and training, do you truly believe we would still be at the same level? I knew I was playing with fire, but I wasn't going to stay silent while she insulted me. You think so highly of yourself, but you are at the bottom of the class. She replied, If that's what you want to believe, I said, and I could tell she was angry with my answer. Enough chit chat. Let's start training. I'll show you all a new submission move and how to break it, and then you can practice it. She eventually said, it was the same as every day, and I was ready for it. The first few days, my pride would force me not to submit, and try to fight the hold, until the last minute. But then I realized it wasn't going to help me. The problem was that even when I admitted defeat, they took their time letting me out of the holds, and that, over time, took its toll. What I needed was to get free as fast as possible. Another problem was that, instead of forming pairs and having them practice, she was always having everyone practice on me and risk, and since risk wasn't there, I was the only one who would be the target of all those attacks. Just as I thought, she asked me to go to the front, and started calling the others to face me, always putting me in the most vulnerable position. If you were a true alpha, you would be able to break out of all of the holds, not only a few ones. Alice told me mockingly. I guess that means that you can break without any difficulty out of the holds. I said. Of course, that's obvious. She said. Then prove it. I challenged. I could break the hold of any or all of them. She replied. Right, since they all would do anything you tell them to do. But can you break out of my hold? I said. Why don't we test it? You think I haven't noticed you never fight me yourself. It's always the others. I'm the trainer. I don't have to do anything. You are so beneath me that it would be a waste of time. Or maybe you are afraid. I knew I was playing with fire, but I couldn't help it. I see you want a lesson. Then I will give it to you. 
You can use any of the moves we have been practicing these past weeks, and only that. Let's see if you are as good as you think you are. She made a signal and everyone around us formed a circle. Let's start, but don't blame me for the results. I could feel her aura as soon as she attacked, so I did the same, letting my alpha aura out. I had noticed it getting stronger, since I learned how to control it better, and Alice wasn't expecting it. I could see her choke as my aura hit her, but it only stopped her for a moment. Soon she recovered from that first hit, and moved closer to try and catch me. I was able to block all her attempts to grab me, but I couldn't find any openings to grab her myself. I needed to make her submit. I knew I wouldn't be satisfied otherwise. The yelling and cheering of the other trainees were distracting, but I needed to focus on my fight. Alice managed to grab me, but I was able to break out of the hold and managed to get a good hit. I was caught in a hold a few more times, but managed to escape from all of them. I got her a couple of times, but I was also unable to hold her for a long. I was getting tired, but she was getting frustrated. Something everyone knew was a bad idea. With her frustration, the errors started to appear, and I was able to take advantage of that. In the end, I managed to catch her in a hold she couldn't break, and since she refused to submit, she ended up passing out in my arms. There was only one problem. Cheater. That's not one of our trainer's moves. You were only supposed to use what you learned here. One of the others said, and I knew she was right, that was something Dagger had taught me. Others had moved to help Alice recover. I knew from experience she would get a nasty headache. I wasn't sure what to do. Everyone around looked like they wanted to tear me to pieces, and I knew they were capable of seriously hurting me. There were just too many of them, and I had no one on my side. What happened to Alice? A voice I recognized easily asked. Why is she sleeping in the middle of her class? It was hard to believe that night could go unnoticed by all of us. But I couldn't feel any of her aura. She was very good at suppressing it when she wanted. She passed out during training, but everything is okay. I said. I was going to ask you to join me after training. But I think training is already done for today. So follow me. She asked me, and no one could protest an order from the Uber Alpha. So I followed. I wasn't sure if I should be happy or offended I had received help from her. I had no idea what would be waiting for me the next day. But at least I had managed to defeat Alice, even if I hadn't been following her rules at the moment. What do you need? I asked while we were still walking. It's time you started paying more attention to the day-to-day -day work of the pack. This is training for the mind, but just as useful for when you take over your own pack. Dagger has already asked to take on more responsibilities, and you were supposed to be helping him, so you could learn alongside him. But with your training, you have been too tired to join him. I'm sorry about that. I promise I won't dismiss my responsibilities any longer. That's not what I meant I wanted to give you an excuse, so you could leave training a little earlier. But from what I just saw, you don't need Alice any longer you have all the basics. You only need practice. But in a better environment. I won't affect your image by pulling you out of the group. But I expect Alice to move you on her own time. Just be careful for a little longer. I will thank you. I felt happy. I could always count on Knight. She was helping me in a way that wouldn't make it look like she was favoring me. And I had managed to hit Alice back. It was a good day for me. And no matter how tired I felt, I was going to pay attention to Knight and learn to be the best Alpha I could be. Dagger. Are you spying on your mate? My grandma asked while I watched Hope's training. I was just a little curious. I started to explain. Don't worry you have a job to do, but wrap it up soon. I want to talk to you and your mate later today. I know you have been helping with the administration of the pack, but your mate also needs to start paying more attention to that. 
so I want both of you to join me at my office later today. That was the plan, but she has been so tired from all the training. I knew she was right, and most of the time, I wouldn't even dream of going against her word. But I didn't want her to think she was being lazy, or neglecting her duties. Don't worry about that now go, you have things to do. She dismissed me, and there was nothing I could do about it. I went back to my group, but I couldn't focus. I kept thinking about my mate and Alice. At least I could be confident that with my grandmother there, nothing would happen to Hope with her watching over the training. I wasn't sure what was going on, but I knew that everything would be fine with Grandma there. It felt like hours later by the time I finished my work on the training grounds and went to the office, but it had been just an hour. I was expecting to find Grandma alone. But Hope was already there. Hope, how was your training today? I asked. She looked happier than on other days, but it could mean many different things. It was great. I fought Alice and won. But everyone says I cheated because I used a move you taught me, instead of using what she had taught me. She replied. That's nonsense. If you won, you won. No excuses. I said. You know Alice, she has always been a sore loser. But don't worry. Since I was there to witness the fight, I can tell Hope did everything correctly. So no one should be able to say anything about it. Grandma said. And it's not like I interfered or anything. The fight was already over by the time I arrived. Are you going to be okay? I asked Hope. Of course, you don't have to worry about me. She sounded confident, but I was still worried. So, it's time for you to start learning. Grandma interrupted. I know you have already been going over schedules and things like that. But you also need to take care of finances. To rule a pack, you need a lot of work. Dagger already knows a little about it. She told Hope. So first you need to follow his lead. Then, for new things, I will be teaching you. I appreciate the help. Hope said. Don't worry, I'll take care of her. I said. I'll work hard to be the best alpha I can be. She said, and I smiled, knowing she really meant it, and knowing she would be, I would help her to it. Then I will leave you for now so you can review those documents, and I will come back later. Make sure you go over everything and let me know about any questions you have. Thanks, Grandma. I said. So, where do we start? She asked eagerly. Review, I think. I said, taking a seat and grabbing a pile of papers. I have been helping with schedules like Grandma said here. Take a look at these. Those are the patrol records, but not only schedules, but it also has information about the warriors, and it has a little bit of info on their pay. Not everyone gets the same pay, and when you are arranging the schedules you need to keep within a budget. You need to balance experience and numbers, make sure that everything is covered and that there are no risks involved. Hope took the papers and started going over them. She took a notebook and started making notes, asking a few questions about some of the arrangements I had made. After reviewing a few pages, she asked some questions. I was glad to see how quickly she was grasping the issues. It wasn't going to be the same. Her pack was way smaller than the Uber pack, so the management should, in theory, be easier. It wasn't the same to lead a few dozen patrols every day than a couple of them. The budget was the same principle. It was just numbers, and despite not having a formal education, she was grasping it very fast and very easily. That was the security side. I said. But a pack has a lot of different people working on it. In some places, some of the most mundane tasks are done by members of the pack. Mostly Omegas, as part of their public service, and they don't get paid for it. But most of us prefer to pay for their service. So you also need to consider them when you are planning your budget. What about construction? investments, that kind of stuff. 
she asked, and I smiled, she was getting a step ahead. That is also something to consider. But it's on a separate budget. We were discussing salaries. I started explaining. But there was not enough time. There was just too much to go over. We were still going over the budget when Grandma returned. I think that's enough for today. Do you have any questions? She asked Hope. Nothing that Dagger hasn't been able to explain. She said. Good. I'll see you both tomorrow at the same time no excuses. She left again. I knew the instruction was also a way to help Hope get away from training in case. It got too hard. The order to go work with the Alpha took priority over everything else. So, what are you going to do tomorrow? I asked once we were out of the office. I think I will go and face Alice, and see what happens. She said, trying to act as if she wasn't worried. You know you can ask for help at any moment. No one will think less of you. I insisted. I know Alice is mad. But maybe we could repeat the one-on-one -on -one fight. I think that was a very good experience for me. I feel like this is the closest I will get to fighting Doom. Alice wasn't holding back. And that kind of worries me. Because she could hurt you. But I will trust you. Both that you are capable of facing her. And capable of asking for help. If you need it. Don't worry. I will be just fine. I really did trust her. But I couldn't help but feel worried. That night I couldn't sleep thinking that it was possible that Alice would try to hurt Hope. And that's something I didn't want to happen. On the other hand, Hope had already won once. Another win would show everyone that she was strong and capable. Something I already knew. But that others weren't so convinced about. I wanted to go and see her during training. But I decided it was better to go see my parents. So, I heard that yesterday Alice and Hope had a fight. Mom said, I knew she must have been dying to ask about it, since we hadn't been to dinner or breakfast with them. I'm sure Grandma already told you all about it. I replied, Come on. We want to see what you have to say about it. She insisted, I don't know much it seems like they finally had their confrontation, but Hope ended up using one of the moves I taught her and making Alice pie out, and the others were saying she cheated, because she didn't use what Alice taught her, if it wasn't for grandma, that called for her right then, I'm not sure what would have happened, I said, I don't want to interfere, but I would prefer if Alice wasn't Hope's trainer, don't worry about it, since your grandma has already paid attention to it, she will resolve it in a good way, so, Let's better focus on what's important. My mom said. It's something we need you to organize, and that might also help Hope. Dad added. We need a tournament. It's been a while since we established the rankings, and some people want another go. And if Hope ranks high, more people will respect her. I added. Because that's what they believed. Yes. I understand if you are not so keen on having your mate fight, but this will be good for her. Dad confirmed. I had to admit, at least to myself, that one of the reasons I had been delaying the tournament was that I wanted to give Hope more time so she could get a good ranking. But my parents were right. It was time to do it. I know it's usually you and Ice who organize the event, but I trust you will be able to do it on your own. Mom said, not giving me a chance to reject the task. Don't worry, I will take care of everything. I accepted, knowing that it was pointless to keep trying to delay it. One week should be enough to deal with this. Good. Mom said, and then we started to discuss other things. But the tournament remained at the front of my thoughts. Part of me knew what was overdue, and that if Hope got a good ranking, much of her troubles would be solved. But I was afraid for her, and the problems she could face. I wanted to be a good mate, and I wasn't sure if I was doing her any favors by trying to protect her. All I could do was try my best to coach her, and show everyone what she was capable of. Hope. I wasn't sure what to expect. 
but I went to the training grounds as if nothing had happened. I couldn't act worried or betray my fear in any way, or it would give Alice more excuses to try and make me pay. Al eyes were on me when I arrived, and I hated that I miss risk. It would have been great for someone to have my back at a moment like that. Glad you decided to join us. Alice greeted me. Sorry I left early yesterday, but Knight called me to her office. She told me I would be helping her from now on every afternoon. I explained. It must be good to have someone help you like that. Alice said. Not just anyone can have preferential treatment like that. I wouldn't call more work on top of training preferential treatment, or maybe I would. Since I'm getting double training, one at fighting with you, another for administrative tasks with knight and dagger. I would it sounds like they are grooming you to be an alpha. She almost spits the words. Well, of course. As I said to you many times now, I'm planning on going back to my former pack and taking over and no, I'm not running away. I'm going back to take what's mine now. I will have to leave on time to meet with Knight again, just so you know. I'm not telling her to stop stalling and start training, but it's close and I can tell she doesn't like it. Just so you don't get any ideas. You didn't win yesterday you clearly used to move. I didn't teach you, so it doesn't count. I want to protest, but everyone is looking at me with hostility, and I decide it would be better to bite my tongue and go on with training. I know what happened and I know I won. If Alice is going to pretend like it didn't happen, well, I will just have to remind her of it as soon as I get a new chance. You know what to do. Alice calls and everyone starts running. It's like we are all going to pretend that nothing happened the day before. It's as if nothing has changed. We still do the same routine of warming up and exercising as before. I'm dreading the sparring part, not sure of how much worse it could get, but sure that Alice would have something special prepared for then. We are just about to start with Alice showing us some new fancy, painful looking move when another senior warrior moves to our group. Hello, Alice, how is your group doing? He asks. Thomas, hi. Everything is fine, as you can see. What brings you here? She asks, turning to look at me, as if this is my doing. Well, a new tournament has been announced, and I wanted to let you know. It will be held this weekend, and since yours is an advanced group, we expect all of you to attend. The man said. I wasn't sure what that meant, but I could tell everyone was excited about it. That's great news. Alice sounded very happy. I suggest you start preparing your girls. Competition will be hard this time, and we don't want anyone to get hurt, do we? He asked, and in a way, it sounded like a challenge. Alice was smiling at him at least, so it must not have been a bad thing. I'll leave you to it. I'll see you later. So, you all heard, and you know what this means. Alice says with a smile. You will all get a chance to improve your rankings. That means we will change our setup for the next few days. We all need to be at our best. So set into couples and when I give the signal, I want you to do your best to defeat the one in front of you. Remember, do anything you need to do to defeat your opponent. We will be doing this in human form. Tomorrow we will train in our wolf form. Everyone starts pairing up, and I realize they are avoiding me. No one wants to fight me. I'm not sure if this is because they don't like me, or if they are afraid that I will win in a one fight. Everyone is paired up, and I'm unsure of what to do. I'm about to go ask Alice, when I see she is walking my way. It seems I don't have a partner. I said, trying not to make her angry. Yes, it looks like you will have to observe for now. Try and see if you can learn something from the people fighting. Alice said. But it's better this way. You will have to leave early to go with Alpha Knight, and this way you won't leave anyone without a partner. She smiled at me, and I knew this was punishment. She was focusing on the others, 
and leaving me at a disadvantage for this tournament that had everyone so excited. There is not much that I can do, so I do as she said and watch the different matches going on. I have to admit the group as a whole is pretty good, and now that I see them really fighting, and not just trying to hurt me or risk, I notice the different styles and techniques they use. I know that I'm more than capable of fighting any of them, but as I watch I realize that winning to any of them is not going to be easy. I made my way to Knight's office with time to spare, since I'm not doing much anyway, and found Dagger on my way. Hi, is training already over? He asked, looking at me from head to toe, as if looking for wounds. Everyone is training for the tournament, and they kind of left me alone, so I decided to come early. I explained, well, you should be training as well. The tournament could be a good chance for you to show everyone what you are capable of. I'm in charge of organizing it I'll explain everything about it as we work. And if you want, I can teach you a few moves that will help you. This will also be good training for your fight with Doom. That sounds kind of fun. I had to admit. So, are you going to participate as well? Yes, I have to. If I don't fight and prove to everyone that I'm stronger than them, it will upset the balance of the pack. My parents will also show up, but they will most likely just do an exhibition fight to show their level, and take on challengers, if anyone is crazy enough to try that. Do people actually challenge them? I asked, surprised that anyone would dare to do that. You could feel how strong they were just by being around them for a short time. There's always someone crazy enough to try. But the ones who are actually able to challenge them are few. Most fights end within seconds. He said, Since I'm younger, I often end up having longer fights. But it's been years since someone had actually defeated me well. Someone outside of the family that is. Ice has been able to defeat me a few times. Oh, what about Ice and Risk? Are they going to come back for the tournament? That's a good question. I'm not really sure Ice's position is well established, and Risk doesn't seem to care one way or the other. He said. Still, she should be here. I said. Mostly because I wanted the moral support of having someone like me. I know, but it's out of our hands so... Let's go and finish what we were working on yesterday, before Grandma comes and starts asking us questions. He said, as if he was really worried about his grandma, getting angry at us for not doing our work. We kept going over all the paperwork required to run the pack. It was hard to believe that so many things had to be done on a daily basis. I remembered my father's office, his desk covered in papers. I always thought that it was because he didn't work, and that caused his desk to get cluttered. But it wasn't that, it was because there was too many things to do. I knew that for me to be a good alpha, I would have to learn all about it. And I was scared to think that Doom might not be doing a good job. It is very easy for things to fail, if people are not paying attention to all the details. Doom acted like the kind of person who would be more interested in grabbing power, just for the sake of it, not to do a good job. Maybe he was doing the job, maybe not, but this is just another reason to apply myself to my training. At least I had Dagger to help me. He seemed to understand a lot more than me about all the administrative work, and that made me more confident about my chances of being a good alpha because I knew I would have him by my side to help me with everything I needed. I listened carefully to everything that Dagger explained to me, asking questions about something that wasn't clear enough. He said that there were no stupid questions, and even if sometimes it felt like my questions were really stupid, he never complained and just explained again, and again until I got what he was saying. By the time Knight arrived to supervise our work and respond to any questions we had, I'm feeling much better about grasping all the concepts. I knew that it would be hard work, but I was more confident about my ability to do it.
Do you want to have a quick training session? Dagger asked one tonight let us go. I would love to I feel like Alice is not too keen on letting me practice before the tournament. So I want all the help you can give me. Don't worry. After the tournament, everyone will see just how good you are. And they won't keep bothering you. He assures me. I want to believe him. That would definitely make my life easier. I felt like having to fight. So many people who were out to get me. Have helped to make me stronger. But I was getting tired of being a punching bag. And wanted to move to something big. Jagger. It's been a few busy days. Between the training. Helping Hope learn about running a pack. Organizing the tournament. And the personal training I have been giving her. At least Alice's focus had moved from trying to make my mate's life miserable to training her people. I was sure that she intended to have her group get better rankings than Hope's so she could justify her hate for her. But she should know better. Hope had already managed to defeat her, even if she refused to acknowledge it. And she was more than capable of defeating most of the other warriors, as long as we kept things fair. Hope was quick on her feet, and had good instincts in a fight. But she was new, and she needed experience. That was what I was trying to give her. Mom had offered to help, but I wasn't sure if that was a good idea. I didn't want Hope to get hurt before the tournament. So, the tournament starts tomorrow, right? My uncle asked during breakfast. Yes, everyone seems to be excited about it. I replied, of course, it's been a while since we had one of these are you ready for it? Mom asked my aunt. I sure am. She responded, I hope there's someone dumb enough to challenge us. It's kind of repetitive, if you are all I have to fight against. I'll make sure to keep you entertained. Mom replied with a huge smile. It looks like they are looking forward to their exhibition fight. Hope whispered to me. They love to fight, and enjoy having a crowd looking at them when they do. I explained. And it's also a good way to let everyone see what they are against most people are smart enough to realize. They are no match for us. After witnessing one of our fights, Uncle said. Just pushing our aura is enough for most people to comply. But if you are strong enough to resist it, and need to be shown in the flesh, the difference between their level and ours. Grandma explained. She looked so delicate, sitting calmly there. But we all knew she is still a fierce warrior. Her alpha aura is so strong that most of the time, all she needs to fight is her voice. Her orders are hard to ignore, that's her power. She is my example of what an alpha should be. And she has never disappointed me. So, what are your plans for today? Mom asked. No training for my men. I told them to rest, so they can be at their best tomorrow. I said, and Dad smiled knowingly at the rest of us. Do you think they will do as you asked? Dad asked. No, I think they will be out doing last minute training. I responded. The smart choice is to rest before a big fight. My aunt said. I hope both you and Hope will rest today. You don't have training today, do you? She asked Hope. No, not today. But I feel like I should try and train some more. She said. No rest. Grandma agreed. There will be enough time later for that, and the tournament will take all day. You should get as much rest as you can while you can. We still have to go over some budgets. I reminded her. I'll take care of that, you two take the day of. Tomorrow I want the both of you to make me proud. Grandma said. I knew that Hope was not very keen on resting. But it had been a while since we had a date. So I decided to go look for some food. And then take her on a picnic. She needed her rest, like everyone else. But she also needed to be distracted. And for that nothing better than a romantic outing. At first, she didn't want to go, but I managed to convince her, and we set up for a walk through the forest. You are going to do well tomorrow, I'm not worried. I assured her. You say that because we are mates. She said. 
But I'm not so sure I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you and your family. Nonsense. No matter what happens tomorrow, my family and I will be proud of you. And you already defeated Alice once, you can do it again. And think about how good this is going to be as training. You will have a few difficult fights ahead of you. But I trust you, you will be fine. I really hope so I wish I had your confidence. She was happier already, so all I had to do was distract her for a while and calm her down. We went to one of the secluded areas, one I was sure no one would bother us and we could be alone. We started by eating our picnic, we would need the energy for later, and once we finished our food, I decided I would have her as my dessert. She didn't complain, and after a few orgasms, she was no longer worried about the tournament or what others would think of her. She was happy and relaxed. Then we went back to our suite and repeated it all over again. By the time I was done with her, she was sleeping peacefully, and I knew she would be ready for the challenges coming her way. I woke her up with a kiss and left her a tray with breakfast. Then I went to meet with my family. We still had to deal with a few last-minute details. So, how's your mate? Is she ready? Dad asked. Yes, as ready as she can be. I let her get some more rest while we prepare everything. It has been hard to leave her behind. But I wanted to give her every advantage I could. It looks like I arrived just in time. Ice called from the door. Ice, so glad to see you. I greeted him. Risk is getting ready. She wanted to participate in the tournament. She said she is getting tired of everyone looking down on her. So she wants a rank for herself, not just one related to me. Ice explained. Understandable. Do you think she is ready? My uncle asked, and I noticed that Ice resented the question. You know she doesn't seem as motivated as Hope is. My mom told him. She is not, but I think that everyone underestimates her because of that. She is strong, or she wouldn't be my mate she will do well. So, since you are here, are you going to help me? I asked, eager to have someone to share the work with. I guess so at least you did all the heavy stuff. He smiled. I think it's time to go and start the selection show them what you are capable of. Grandma said, her smile getting bigger. Every time we did a tournament we got a few warriors that believed they were stronger than they actually were. But it was very easy to separate the strong from the weak. Ice and I stood at the entrance of the arena and let her alpha aura out, almost at her strongest level. The first filter for our fighters was simply to walk in, something not everyone was capable of, not with our power on display. Some of the warriors were able to walk in without trouble, but there were more that had to practically crawl in, and even a few that dropped to the floor, unable to get close to us. Those were carried away by some of our helpers. All the people unable to get in could still watch the tournament, and they had to recognize that every single warrior inside was stronger than them. Ice, I'm glad to see you. Arthur, Alice's brother greeted him. Rumor was that you and your mate were away, and wouldn't be able to be part of the tournament. There was a bite to his words, as if he was suggesting they had gone away just to avoid the tournament. My mate is eager to fight. I said. Really? She didn't the last two. He said, in mock surprise. Well, she never saw the need before, since she doesn't have to prove herself to anyone. But lately people have been disrespectful to her. So she wants to show them all what she is capable of. Well, good luck to her, I guess. She said and walked in, not bothered by our aura. I had the impulse to increase the aura, until he was on his knees. But decided to let it go, and let Risk and my own mate fight their own battles. I can't wait for Risk to show them, what she is capable of. I said, don't worry, once our mates start fighting, everyone will shut up. I assured him. 
Risk always acts as if this doesn't bother her. But I'm starting to think it does she didn't ask me to come back. But I could see that we wanted to be here. So I decided to make the trip. No matter that we have to go back, as soon as this is over. So you haven't solved the problem over there? I asked concerned. No. But we have a few leads, and I think that this will be solved in a few more days. Only, my mate is my priority, so we had to come back. I get it. I said, and I did. I would do anything for hope. Hope. I was nervous. Not that I wanted to admit it, but facing the tournament on my own was going to be difficult. Sometimes I felt like everyone was against me. But it was also my chance to show them all what I was capable of. I knew that Dagger was busy preparing everything, but I didn't like being alone and having to go and face everyone on my own. Ready for today? Risk asked from the doorway of my room. Risk, what are you doing here? I believed she was away on a mission. No one had told me she would be here. Well, I couldn't miss the chance to kick some as could I. She responded with a smile. Besides, I thought you could use some moral support. Just be warned, if we have to fight each other, I won't hold back. I wouldn't want you to. I said, going to her and hugging her. I'm so glad you're here. I think it's time to go so, are you ready? She asked again. Now I am. I said, grateful for her company and support. We walked out of the pack house and to the arena where the tournament was going to take place. Risk told me all she could about her mission, which wasn't much, but it was enough to distract me and make me forget all about my nervousness. As we got closer to our destination, the pressure in the air started to increase. It felt suffocating, and I could see some people around us on the floor, gasping for air. It's the first test. Risk explained as she noticed me watching the people around us. To be able to participate in the tournament, first you need to be able to resist the Alpha's aura. I bet it's Ice and Dagger who are doing this. If it was them, it would be much stronger. I said, not if they control it. The goal is to stop the weakest ones, not to stop everyone from entering. That made sense, and as we got even closer, I could see both our mates standing on either side of the entrance. Some people were walking along, as if nothing was happening, while some were almost crawling through. Dagger smiled when he saw me, and I just couldn't help myself. I went right to him and kissed him, long and deep. I missed you, I said, and he smiled sweetly at me. We just saw each other. He reminded me. It was too long ago. I said, and then blushed when I noticed people had stopped to watch us. Don't worry, this is normal, we are true mates. It's time everyone acknowledged this fact. He said, Now, go on, you are already registered for the tournament. There was no question you would paw the first test, so all you have to do is wait to see where your first fight is going to be. Okay, I'll see you later. I said, Risk is smirking at me, but she also kisses ice before following me inside. There were more people than I expected, but the ones inside look ready to fight. I go to where some tables are set with people registering for the fights. Behind the tables, there are some boards with brackets for the fights. I see that there is one for males and one for females. From what I saw the last time, Risk starts explaining. The first part of the fights are separated by genders, but once the top 32 of each are selected, the fights get mixed. There is an official ranking for everyone, and an unofficial one by gender. Do you know where Alice is ranked? I asked. No idea, but I wouldn't worry about her right now. You need to start thinking about strategy. You need to keep your energy so you can fight all the way to the top. Dagger had already warned me about it, so I knew I needed to pace myself. You know a lot, 
but you said you have never participated before. I said, expecting her to say more. Well, it looked like a waste of time. Since ICE is high ranked, I'm protected and for some reason, people didn't bother me so much before it's only lately, they started to get nasty with me. I think it's my fault they hate me, so much that they started hating you too. I said, no, I think it's that with only me, they still had the hope of getting Dagger, but now that both heirs are taken, they resent both of us, for taking their chance of becoming leaders of the pack. That's nonsense, if one of them were their true mates, they would have found out a long time ago. There's such a thing as chosen mates. She reminded me, but that also reminded me of Doom, and that got me in a bad mood. We move to the side, where we are out of the way and still able to look at the boards. We are waiting to see where we are going to fight. We finally notice Scar and Shadow, as they worked with the people at the table, dividing the names into groups. I also noticed that I was in the first group, while Risk was in the last one. It kind of makes sense, that way we won't have to fight each other soon. But I'm going to miss her during my fights. I went to where my group was supposed to be, and saw a couple from my training group. We were of all ages, and some of them looked extremely strong. Some of them looked at me and changed their attitude, most likely recognizing me, while others ignored me completely, either not knowing or not caring who I was. You know how this is going right. A woman approached the group. I will be calling you by name, and you will fight by the time the second trial ends. You will have fought against everyone. Depending on the number of fights you win, you will move to the next level. Do your best. For the next couple of hours, I focused on fighting. I needed to be careful not to overdo it, to pace myself. After my third fight, I noticed that my opponent was using her alpha aura to try and slow me down. Not that it affected me much, but that gave me the idea to do the same. The next fights went way easier that way. My aura was stronger than most of theirs, and some could barely do more because of it. I was able to finish my fights faster and easier, and when I realized I had finished all of my fights, I could barely believe that I had won all of them. Since I had finished first, I went to see other fights. Some were really impressive, but I was pretty confident I would be able to defeat most of them, if I had to fight them. Did you already finish? Dagger asked. I had felt him getting closer thanks to our bond. But he had managed to close the distance before I noticed. Yes, I won all of my fights. I said proudly. I never doubted it, not even for a moment. He said, with such sincerity that I believed him, despite my own fears. So, what's next? I asked. More fighting, of course. He said, and I lightly punched him on the arm, to which he laughed. Next. Since you finished earlier than most, you will have the benefit of some rest. Once all the fights are over, we will have one of our exhibit fights between my parents and Ice's parents then. You will go into the next set of fights. Grandma and some of the most senior warriors must be busy setting the next batch of fights. Those are going to be one-on-one -on -one and are set in a way to give everyone the best chance. I thought their fights were at the end. I said, No, it's just at the middle, to give everyone a chance to rest, and also to give time to set the next part of the challenges. Also, it's so others can get an idea of what they will be facing later they will take challengers, but that's once everyone gets to see them fighting, so they can see what they are risking by challenging them. I want to challenge your mother one of these days. But I'm not sure I'm ready yet. You will be there soon. And I like that idea. My mom will be able to teach you a lot, same as my father. It was very interesting to see all the fights going on. Since all of them were part of the same pack, their style was similar. But it was clear that some of them had adapted it to suit their personalities. I got to see Alice's fight, 
and I could see she wasn't holding back. I had to wonder if she had during our fight. I wasn't scared of fighting her, but I wasn't sure how the fight was going to go. All I knew was that I needed to give it my best, and keep facing the tournament one fight at a time. In the meanwhile, I just enjoyed the other fights and the commentary from Dagger, who kept pointing out interesting techniques, or moves that could be of help to me later. I wasn't sure if it was fair for me to have his help, but at the moment I didn't care. All I wanted was to do my best, and finally show everyone what I was capable of. People would have to start showing me respect, once I proved to them that I was as strong, or stronger than them. No one would look down on me anymore. I was Dagger's true mate for a reason. I deserved him. Dagger. If I could, I would have stayed with Hope all day, but I needed to set up some things for my parents' fight. By then, Rix was already done with her fights, so at least I didn't have to leave her alone. As expected, both of them had won all of their fights. I wasn't sure if they would be able to win all their fights, since they still lacked experience, but I was confident they would get a good position. Are you ready? I asked my parents. My mom was almost vibrating. I'm more than ready. I only hope people won't be scared by the fight. I want to have at least a few challenges. I don't care either way. But I will enjoy this fight. Dad said. We had some interesting participants this year. We have a few groups with undefeated warriors. I said. Like our mates. I added proudly. We finished setting things up. And then it was Grandma who called everyone's attention. So they could watch the exhibition fights. Promising that once the fights were done. We could keep going with the rest of the tournament. She didn't stay to watch, she left to finish her job of setting up the next fights, but I knew she was going to be back in time, to see who the winners were. Who do you think is going to win? Ice asked, but we both knew how it would go. Even if we had some close wins, it was usually my father and his mother who won, since they were the children of night. Not that mom wasn't able to give my aunt a good challenge. Mom loves to fight and she was always proving herself against everyone else. She had been born in the Uber pack, and she had always been one of the favorites for her strength and insight. This time was no different. The fight between them was very close, and after a while, it became clear that none of them had a clear advantage. It was actually surprising to see that both of them were still going strong after half an hour. It was then that mom shifted into her wolf. If my aunt had been just a second slower, she would have lost. But her shift was almost instantaneous, and she was able to dodge and counterattack mom. That means shifting will be allowed in the next fights, right? I said from next to me. You know it will. It will speed up the fights. Fighting in our animal forms is usually faster. I reminded him. Yes. Because our wolves don't care much about what's coming next, only about defeating the enemy in front of you. Just like that. He adds as his mom bites mine on the neck, applying pressure until mom has to admit defeat. The next fight, the one with our fathers, is both faster and more brutal. It was hard to believe after all the blood spilled by our mothers, but our fathers were not holding back at all. Uncle Neil is smiling through a mouth full of blood, as Dad punches him again and again. In a movement none of us expected, my uncle shifts as the next hit is coming his way, and manages to bite on my dad's fist. Dad screamed in pain, something none of us expected, but then he lifted his arm, with my uncle still biting down on his fist, and slammed him against the floor. Once, twice, until my uncle finally let go. He shifts while my uncle is trying to recover, and by the time he is ready again, dad is already attacking. The wolves fight as brutal, with blood and fur flying everywhere. Dad claimed the victory, and after shifting and healing the worst of his wounds, my uncle was ready for the next fight. 
2 vs 2. It was quite the show to see our parents fighting in teams. And it was harder to see who would win. But my uncle wasn't completely recovered and my parents managed to defeat my aunt and uncle. Then, as soon as the fighting was over, grandma was back. And she issued some instructions as to where to find their next fight. I'm pretty sure this time the fights will be even more brutal. Do you want to go see our mates fights? Ice asked. Let's see what the schedule is remember we still have things to do. And we must have some fights of our own now. Since we were stronger than most, we were in charge of the first filter. And that counted as our classification fight. That's why we never participated in the second part. But we needed to prove ourselves in the third part. We were scheduled into the next part. As if we had won all of our fights in the second part of the tournament. I'm not worried about that. We will kick as and finish those in a few minutes. That wasn't bravado from Ice. He was motivated. And it had been years. Since we had been defeated by anyone other than our parents. There was no warranty that this would always be the case. That's why we never slacked on our training. The tournament was a good way to see how strong we were against our pack. Since we were ranked high, we had time before our first fight, and I got to see Hope's first fight. It was against one of the warriors in my group. She was older and had more experience, so I was a little worried at first. But soon I realized that she was underestimating Hope. She allowed herself to be fooled into thinking. It was going to be an easy fight. And when it looked like she had the win, Hope changed her speed and the strength of her hits and managed to knock her out. I felt proud of my mate and a little disappointed in my trainee. I was already thinking about all the extra training she would get the next day. After a while, it was time for my first fight. My opponent shifted to his wolf as soon as the fight started, but I didn't. I showed him what I was capable of by defeating him in my human form. It wasn't easy, but when he charged at me, I managed to dodge and then jump on his back, wrapping my arms around his neck. It was hard to hold on to him, but in a couple of minutes, he was out of breath and therefore defeated. I left his limp body in the arena and moved to the next location. As an heir of the pack, I had to make sure to show everyone what I was capable of, and that meant that I needed to show my dominance during the fights. I was able to see the end of Ice's fight. He had landed a vicious blow to his opponent, and I was worried he wouldn't wake up in a while. It was not good for him. Even those who lost their fights had a chance to fight again for a better position. But if he wasn't able to wake up, he would lose his chance to improve his ranking. So, what did he do? I asked, knowing that Ice wouldn't have been so mean to him without a good reason. I told him we had better finish this fast, since I wanted to go see Risk's fight, and he dared to say that I shouldn't waste my time, since it would be humiliating to see my mate lose. I could feel Ice's fury, and I realized he was also letting his alpha war out. The poor bastard didn't have a chance against my cousin. I had no idea why he would do something as idiotic as to insult his mate. He was trying to get into your head. Only he never expected this to backfire on him this badly. Don't worry and let's see if we can catch our mate's fights, okay? I asked, trying to calm him down. When I saw the people around us starting to stand straight again. I realized his aura was back under control. You are right. I shouldn't have overreacted. He said. No, you did good. Let this be a lesson to him. And to everyone like him who thinks that disrespecting our mates is okay. I said. Loud enough so people would hear. I was sure that soon everyone would be talking about what had happened there. We went to see Risk's fight and saw she was fighting in wolf form. She was jumping around, toying with her opponent. Her opponent was getting angrier and angrier by the minute, and that meant she was making more mistakes. 
She was tired by the time Risk decided to finish her, so it was an easy win. She noticed us watching and shifted before heading our way. Hope was also moving our way. She had been watching from the other side of the arena. Hello gorgeous. Ice greeted Risk, who kissed him right there, in front of everyone. Hello. Hope said, standing next to me. I could tell she wasn't sure if we should do the same or not. But she looked so good that there was no way I could let the chance pa. I hugged her close to me and kissed her. How was your fight? Easy, yours. I asked. Not exactly easy, but I managed to win. I watched your first fight, you did well. I complimented her. The second was more of the same. I'm still doing my best to conserve energy, but it's not as easy as before. The farther you get, the stronger your opponents will be. And remember, this part of the tournament is still separated by gender. Once you get into the top, you will be facing male opponents as well. What will happen if I have to fight you? She asked. Well, in that case, I will probably lose. I don't think I can make myself hurt you in any way. No, if we are to fight each other, you need to promise you will give it your all. She said, and I had to admire her for it. I will do my best, but I won't do anything that could seriously harm you. I think it's time to move on. Good luck with your next fight. I said, walking away. Hope. It was no longer easy and I was exhausted by the time. I had my fourth fight. Dealing with the fifth wasn't going to be easy. I grabbed something to eat. I needed the energy since shifting was burning a lot of it. I stepped into the arena and saw Alice across from me. This was the last fight if I won, that would put me in the top. If I lost, I still had a chance, but it wouldn't be as easy. I'm surprised you made it this far. Alice told me. But I guess since it's your family setting up the fights, they must have given you an easy road. You do realize you are insulting your alphas by even suggesting they would cheat for me, right? I asked, surprised at her attitude, even after all this time. Don't twist my words, I'm only telling it as I see. But this will be the end of your good luck. You won't get past me. If I remember correctly, I already did that. I reminded her. I was holding back. I didn't want to be punished for hurting you. But now, I can fight at my best without consequences. She smiled as if she had already won. Keep telling yourself that. I said. But I had a small sliver of doubt. Would I be able to win again? Not only did she have a reason to go all out on me. But she would also have the chance of shifting and I had never seen her fight in her wolf form. Ready? One of the judges asked, and we both nodded. I wasn't convinced that the Alphas had arranged the fights to give me an easy win, as Alice claimed, but I was pretty sure they had made sure we would be facing each other. We both needed this. Once I defeated her in front of everyone, there wouldn't be any doubt about who was stronger, and I was sure I was. True. She was my trainer, she was supposed to teach me how to fight. But I was a true alpha, and that gave me an edge she didn't have. No matter how much she hated me for it, I had been chosen as the true mate of one of the Uber Pack heirs. That had to mean something. Alice didn't waste time, she let her aura out at full strength, and I realized I had never faced it before. It was strong. But it was nothing compared to Dagger and his family. I let my own aura out, and I saw her miss her step as she moved to attack. I let my aura grow stronger, and noticed some of the people watching the fight had gone to their knees or walked away. Alice wasn't moving as fast anymore. Still, she was a great warrior and not an easy target. I had to force myself to pay attention. Even the smallest distraction could cost me the fight. When it became clear that we were even, she shifted to her wolf and resumed her attack. I shifted just in time to dodge her attack. For some reason, 
It wasn't as easy to maintain my aura in wolf form. So Alice was moving better without the pressure of my aura holding her back. She was vicious, going directly for my throat. But I moved around, not letting her get a hold of it. She bit down my shoulder, making me limp. But it was better than allowing her to hold me by the neck. She was getting confident, and I took advantage of that to get close to her, and I managed to hold her by the neck. I was biting down just a little more, and I would tear open her throat. But she kept trashing in my hold, her claws cutting deep into my side. But I wasn't about to let her go, and I bit down a little more, tasting her blood. The win is for hope. The referee called. I was sure that if Alice had been able to complain, she would have. But she was too weak for that. Congratulations, my love. Dagger called from the side. I knew you could do it. I shifted to my human form, and I felt the worst of my wounds closing as I shifted. But I was exhausted. The fight had taken a lot out of me. I hugged Dagger, letting his presence soothe me. It wasn't easy. I replied. No, but you did it anyway. I'm proud of you. I need some rest, and maybe food. I said, as my stomach growled. Right, let's go feed you. He tried to lift me into his arms, but I refused. I couldn't let others think I was weak and needed to be carried around. We walked to a picnic area on the edge of the gathering, and were given some meat. That was the best way to recover after shifting so much. Soon Ice and Risk made their way to us. So how did you do? Ice asked me. I haven't lost a fight so far. I said proudly. I got a tie that was so not fair. Risk protested. You were both locked at each other's throats. I'm afraid it was a tie. Ice said. Whose side are you? Risk asked. Yours. But that's reality, don't worry. You still pass to the next. So now it's going to be mixed fights? I asked. Yes, and it's not set. We will all draw numbers and that will set our next matches. Dagger said. The one who wins all the fights gets ranked first, his opponent second, the ones that lost to them fight for third, and so forth and so on until all top ranks get set. Ice explained. Only the top three are secure. You can challenge the rest. But you only get two challenges, and if you lose. Dagger complimented the explanation. So, someone who ends rank 20th can challenge for 5th? Risk asked. Yes, but usually the smart move is to challenge someone in the middle, like 12th, and then go for 5th. Dagger said. And if you lose? You go down to I asked. No. You go one down and all the other ranks, below, also move one down. Sounds too complicated. Risk said. All I need to know is that I need to win as many fights as I can. I just don't want to have to fight you. She told Ice. Well, anything could happen. Let's hope that we don't have to fight each other, until the very end. That was something I was also worried about. What if I had to fight one of them? I wasn't sure if I could defeat Risk, but I wasn't looking forward to having to fight her. Dagger and Ice, I was pretty sure they would kick my ass. So the more I could avoid them the better. Once we ate our food and got our rest, we went back to see what our next fights were going to be. Just as Dagger had said, our names were called and we were given a ball with numbers from 1-2. I got... My opponent was an older female. The fight was easier than I expected. But I wasn't going to get confident and start thinking I was invincible. For the next part, we again drew balls. The half that had lost against the others, who had lost to determine the bottom ranks, and the top half to keep fighting for the best positions. My second fight was against a male. I recognized him from patrols. He was close to Dagger, but I knew that wouldn't give me any advantages. It's an honor to fight against the mate of our air. He greeted me. Let's have a good fight. I said, 
unsure of the meaning of his words. I wasn't sure if he was one of the people looking down on me, or if he was one of the people who accepted me. He attacked as soon as the fight started. He didn't give me time to think. I was only able to react. Even when I tried to block, his punch hurt like hell. I was pretty sure my arm was broken, as a consequence of using it to block. If he managed to hit my head, I was sure I was going to paw out. In none of my previous fights, I had been the first one to shift, since the ones who did it were usually on the losing side. But my arm was hurting, and I needed the shift to heal it. My shift was fast, and it was a good thing, because my opponent wasn't wasting any time. He came at me, and kicked me on the head, just as my shift ended. Just as he was about to kick me again, I bit down on his leg. He managed to free himself, but I tore a chunk of his flesh. That was something a shift wouldn't be able to fix easily. He remained in human form, and I started to get angry. Was he looking down on me? I attacked again, and he dodged my attack. But I was expecting it, and as soon as I was behind him, I turned around and jumped on his back. He was huge, but my wolf form was heavy, and I managed to make him fall. As soon as he was down, I put my teeth around his neck. He tried to move, but he couldn't, not without injuring himself. You win. He managed to say, and I let him go. Hope is the winner of this fight. Please go to select your next ticket. The referee told me. I had managed to move to the top 16, so I had a warranty of good ranking no matter what. I went and selected my next ball and got the number 9. When I turned to see who was going to be my opponent, I couldn't believe that I was going to have to fight against Ice. Dagger. It was refreshing to be fighting. I didn't realize how much I needed it, until I started fighting in the tournament. The only downside was that I was worried about Hope, and had no way of checking on her. Even if I had managed to finish my fights in record time, it wasn't enough time to go see her. After my second fight, I made my way to the front to pick up my next ball, and see who my next opponent was. I found Hope staring at the board with the names. I moved closer and searched for her name. I found it next to Ice's. Ice is your next opponent. I asked, knowing how stupid that was as soon as the words left my mouth. Looks like it. She said in a tone I couldn't identify. You're going to be fine. I said, trying to cheer her up. Do I have a chance? Could I defeat him? She asked. I don't know, but even if you don't, you can always challenge for a higher rank. She was already in the top 16, which was a really good ranking for her first tournament. But I knew it wouldn't be enough for her. She wanted more. She wanted something to reassure her that she was ready to face doom. To be truthful, I hadn't expected her to get so far. I knew she was good and I trusted her. But it had been a short time, since she had started training. I knew that her alpha aura, had something to do with it. She had always been strong. But I suspected that our bonding had affected her aura and increased it. Or at least give her some kind of resistance against other people's auras. Whatever happens, you have already proven yourself. I know you defeated Alice again, and you made it this far. I think it's safe to say you got all the basics down, and all you need now is practice. The tournament has been good for that, and after it, it will be sparring with our best warriors. Ice, me, our parents, Risk. We will help you get in shape, so that you can challenge Doom, and get your pack back as you want. Thank you. You and your family have been very kind to me. I know that it has to be difficult for you the idea of leaving this behind, no matter what you say. She started. Stop. Don't worry about that my place is by your side, no matter where it is. And it could be argued that there I would be in a better position, for there would be only an alpha pair at the front of the pack, not two. 
But it's not the same being the alpha of a pack as being one of the alphas of the Uber pack. She replied, Don't worry about that. I like where we are going. I know how important that is for you, and therefore it's important to you. And I wasn't lying. I like the idea of being with her, no matter where. Hello. Risk interrupted us. It seems you made it further than me. I lost. She pouted. You had a powerful opponent. There's no shame in losing to him. I said. Did you see your next fight? Dagger asked, and to that I turned to check. She raised an eyebrow and turned to me. I don't want you to hold back. Hope warned. It's just a fight like all others. I wouldn't dare disrespect you like that. Do your best. I will do the same. I turned to see my next fight. I hated that I wouldn't be there to see Hope's next fight. But I trusted Ice, and I knew he wouldn't do anything to harm her. I knew his chances of winning were way bigger than Hope's. But at least she had a chance to show what she was capable of. Very few people were capable of lasting against us. I think it's time to go. The next batch of fights is approaching. I said. Yes. I have a few more fights set to establish my rank. I don't know if I should challenge anyone. What do you think? Risk asked. Well, someone will likely try to challenge you. So I would hold until I see how things go. I suggested. Good point. Most people here seem to be targeting me. She said, and Hope seemed to agree. I just hope that after today people would finally understand they deserve their positions. Even Risk, with her laid-back attitude, was proving herself to everyone. I kissed Hope good luck, and moved to my next fight. I was confident I would win. But that didn't mean I was careless. I saw my opponent, one of the older warriors, my parents' age. He was one of the few that dared challenge my parents, and one of the few in the pack, who actually had an alpha nickname. So I knew it was going to be a difficult fight. Storm, how have you been? I asked, trying to be polite, despite knowing he was going to start trash talking at the first opportunity. I've been a good pup. He smiled at me. Are you sure you want to do this? He asked. I'm sure choose your weapon. I said, and his smile only got bigger. Let's keep things human. He responded with a big smile on his face. It might seem like he was saying that because he was bigger than me in human form, and believed it would give him an advantage. But the truth was that he was stronger as a wolf. I was sure that he wanted to challenge himself against me, and maybe he was saving his wolf form in case. He decided to challenge my parents. I respected his choice, and we kept things human. It was far from an easy fight, and I don't think that I had a more challenging adversary before. The only one who could give me that kind of fight was Ice. My parents were still on a whole new level, so I never even considered them as opponents, they were goals. It would be a while yet, until I could be at their level. Despite the difficulties, I managed to win. I just hoped my next fight would be easy, because I was tired. I went in search of Hope, and found her sitting alone close to the table. I knew just by looking at her that she had lost, not that I wasn't expecting it. But it was sad to confirm, that she hadn't been able to get further up the ranking. She did a great job. Ice told me once I got close. I hadn't even noticed he was there. I'm sure she did. I responded, and Hope smiled at me sadly. I didn't even put up a fight. It was over before I realized what was going on. She complained. She did great. She fought. That's a win. You know that. I used my full aura, and she still managed to connect a few hits. I don't think many people were able to follow the fight with me fighting like that. Ice explained. You did great. Accept that and be proud of yourself. I cheered on her. So, do you think she is ready for her fight with Doom? I asked. She needs experience. 
We don't know just how dirty he is capable of fighting, but I don't trust someone like him to have honor. I said. Me neither. Hope agreed. So, I think you will have to start sparring with me and Ice, maybe even our parents. Right now, what you need more than anything is experience. No matter how I hate to agree, I think that being in Alice's group help you grab the basics fast now. We will move you to the next level. What's next? She asked. Well, I have my next fight in a few minutes. What about you? He asked me. Me too I don't know who I will be fighting yet. But I'll find out soon it looks like it's going to be you and me in the final. I pointed out, looking at the board. Like usual. Don't lose before that. I said and walked away. It looks like I still have some fighting to do. Hope said. Yes, you still have to fight with the others. Who lost this round to establish your rank. Good luck. You too. I'll go cheer on you as soon as I can. She gave me a quick kiss that ended too soon. And I went to my next fight. My next fight wasn't as hard as the previous one. And before I knew it, I was standing in front of Ice, the two last men standing. We were both tired and wanted the day to end. But we had a responsibility to give it all. I could hear people cheering us. But the only voice I could hear was Hope's. Everyone was there to watch the last fight. I didn't care who would win out of the two of us. But with Hope asking me to win, I had to please her. I had to keep going. So I kept pushing forward, despite being tired, despite not caring, because my mate asked me to. The same could be said for Ice. He usually didn't push himself so much, but he kept going, not giving me a truce. That's enough. A strong voice cut through the fog of the battle, and my muscles seized. My grandma's voice. You both have done well so far. And I think that it is fair to declare this a tie. Let's give our two champions applause. It wasn't what I expected. But it was a good result. And the day was almost over. Hope. I wasn't sure what had happened. The whole fight had been a blur. I was standing in front of ice one moment. The next I felt like this heavy blanket had felt over me. And my movements felt as if I was underwater. He was fast and it felt like he knew exactly what I was going to do before I even tried it. It was a total defeat. But everyone was looking at me with awe. Something I just couldn't understand their reactions. Great job. Ice congratulated me. I lost. I answered. A little sadly. You lasted longer than most. You did really well. No one will dare to say we are taking it easy with you. Or that you don't deserve to be one of the alphas of this pack. But I lost. I protested. Against me. Just look around. No one will be messing with you anymore. I wasn't sure what was going on. But I had to admit everyone was looking at me. With something that resembled respect. I knew what would happen. But I was still sad. That I hadn't been able to get further with the fights. I wanted to prove myself. And I felt like I wasn't doing it. Dagger tried to cheer me up when we met between fights. But I needed more time to get used to my situation. I still had to focus on the rest of the fights that I had with the other losers. We needed to find out where our position was in the rankings. So, you lost to Ice. Risk said from next to me. I hadn't even realized she had arrived. Yes. From what I heard. It was a good fight. No one will look down on you again. That's what everyone keeps telling me. But I don't feel it I lost. That's all there is to it. Cheer up. It seems you are next. Go fight for your rank. She pushed me to the arena. The next couple of fights were nothing compared to what I had gone through with ice. I still wasn't sure what it had been about. I just knew that I needed to fight him again a few times to understand what had happened and to make sure I would be able to face someone like him in the future. After the tournament, I was more and more confident I would be able to take my old pack back on my own. 
Doom would have no choice but to give me back what is mine. At the end of the day, we go to watch Ice and Dagger fight for the number one and number two positions. Risk and I cheered on them as they fought with an intensity that only rivals that of their parents' fights. By looking at Ice fighting, I finally understand the difference between us. I feel proud to be part of their family, and I feel like I fit with them. The fight keeps going strong until Knight walks into the arena and ends the fight. That's enough. She calls and you can almost see their bodies freezing at the command. I also feel it resonate in my body and once again, I'm surprised at her strength. You both have done well so far, and I think that it is fair to declare this a tie. Let's give our two champions applause. I didn't ask for permission. I went to Dagger and kissed him to congratulate him. It was no surprise, but I can see the toll that all the fighting has taken on his body. I'm exhausted myself, and I want to drag him to bed and get ourselves some rest, but I know the day is not over yet. Well, it was worth it to win, if I get a prize like that. He told me between kisses. You can have all the kisses you want, no fighting necessary. I replied. Now, what's next? I asked. Do you know your rank yet? He asked me. It looks like I'm number 12 in the global ranking and third rank for females. I said proudly. It was better than I could have expected. And at the same time, it felt like it was not enough, since my true mate had tied for first position. Well, now people will submit their petitions for challenges and once they organize those, they will cow the challenges. Do you think you will receive many of those? I asked. I don't think so if you will challenge our parents, but that's more to measure their levels against them, not because they expect to win. In my case, it might be someone crazy enough to think they can win against me, but I doubt it. He said, not worried at all. What about me? I asked. Do you think many people will challenge me? This morning I would have said definitely, but now I'm not so sure. You have proven yourself. But let's wait and see what happens. Let's grab something quick to eat while we wait, or do you want to challenge someone? He asked. No, I'm fine. And I was. I felt like I had done my best and didn't need more. We went to join Risk and Ice and as planned, grabbed something to eat. Not much, just in case we needed to keep fighting, but enough to compensate for the energy we had burned. It looks like mom got a couple of challenges. I said. Mom got one, dad another. Dagger said. What about you two? Risk asked. I don't know yet they are going to let our parents fight first, so we can have some rest, before having to go into the arena again. I was curious, so I went to see what was happening. I was surprised at the number of challenges and really respected that the people in charge were able to organize all of them. It looked like a logistics nightmare. We went to watch the fights and it was incredible to see them in action. It looked different than when they were fighting between them. Now, it looked almost as if they were toying with their opponents. Only Scar looked like he was taking it seriously as he fought a man. Storm is one of the few crazy enough to challenge them, and strong enough to put up a proper fight. Dagger told me. That's how I imagine our fight looked. Ice whispered to me. Storm is going to lose, but no one will be able to say he didn't try or that he didn't do a good job. Watching them fight was pretty impressive. If I looked like that fighting ice, I was starting to understand what everyone was telling me. I didn't need to win to prove myself, only to do my best. I knew what was coming next for me. Lots of training, but not with Alice. I would be fighting. Getting the experience I needed for the next step in my fight to recover what was mine. I was going to get my pack back sooner than anyone expected. I got overwhelmed just thinking about it. I still had a lot to learn from Knight and the rest of the family. 
but parts of me couldn't wait to go back. Now, let's see if someone was dumb enough to try and pick a fight with us. Risk said once the challenges to the Alphas ended. There had been no surprises, everyone we expected to win, won. But a couple of those fights had been pretty impressive. I was surprised to see that I had a challenge when I got to the boards. Not so surprised to see it was Alice. Alice. Seriously. Does she like to be defeated by you that much? Risk asked. This is getting ridiculous. I should have a talk with her so she can stop this nonsense. Dagger complained. No, that would only make this issue bigger. She has been claiming we are here only because of your influence, and any intervention on your part will help her. I pointed out. Then, go and do your best. I'm sure you won't have any trouble defeating her a third time. He said. Thanks. I wasn't sure what her game was. This was getting ridiculous. At least I knew I wouldn't be going back to her classes. I would stay away from her and her toxic attitude. Again. I asked Alice once we were both in the arena. You don't deserve your position. You don't deserve to be here. She was angry and looked a little crazy. I don't get what your problem is I think I have already proven that I deserve to be here. I defeated you twice. I don't accept it. You will have to Alice. This is the last time I want to see you antagonizing me like this. I was tired, both of fighting and of Alice. I had been enduring her vicious training because I truly believed it was helping me. But I had outgrown her training, and I was ready to move on to better things. Dagger. It was so satisfying watching Hope beat Alice once more. Alice was exhausted. She had no energy to even transform into her wolf. She had no place to get into a fight again. Hope had more energy, and it showed as she was able to quickly take the upper hand. Just like what I heard from their first fight, Alice refused to submit and Hope choked her until she passed out. No one would be able to say that it wasn't her win. She had shown great strength and I was really proud of her. As soon as she got out of the arena, I took her into my arms and kissed her. I want to get out of here. I whispered. Me too. She agreed. But don't we have things to do still? She asked. I'm not sure this was your only challenge, isn't it? I think so, but what about you? I don't have any, nor did Ice, and I think Risk also had one. I didn't pay much attention to her. I was focused on Hope, as usual. But since neither Ice nor Risk were watching Hope's fight, I guessed it was because they were occupied. Let's go see, Hope said, and we went looking for my cousin and his mate. We found them near the boards. So. How was your fight? Ice asked Hope when we got closer. Did you totally humiliate her? Risk added. It was almost a repeat of our first fight. She refused to submit. So I choked her until she passed out. We left her in the arena. I'm sure someone should be helping her right now. Hope said. And I couldn't help but smile proudly at her. I was sure my parents would also approve of that. Great. Too bad I couldn't see it happening. I also won my fight. But it wasn't as easy. The guy was relentless. Risk complained. I have no idea what was going through his head when he decided to challenge her. He was nowhere near her level. Ice didn't sound happy. And I was sure he would go and confront that person and put him in his place later. Well, it's been a long day. And I don't think our presence is required. Any more the challenges will still take a while. But none is left for one of the top spots. I said. Agree. Let's go back we all deserve some rest. Ice agreed. I sent someone to let my grandma know we were going. Most of the people that had come to watch the fights were already leaving. So it wasn't really a problem for us to go. I was exhausted but more worried about Hope than me. She had done well, but she had to be even more tired than me. At least she was happy. 
What do you think about a bath? I asked her. I can prepare one for you that might help loosen up your tired muscles. That sounds good, but only if you join me. She agreed. With pleasure. I answered. We got to our room, and I went straight to the bathroom, and started setting up the bath. I added some oils to the water, and made sure it was nice and warm. It's almost done. I called, but when I turned, Hope was already behind me, completely naked. Why don't we take a quick shower, before going in the tub? She suggested. We are both dirty with all the blood and the transformations. We don't want to get the bathtub dirty. No, I can think of other things I would rather get dirty. I said, taking her into my arms and walking into the shower. Wait, you haven't taken your clothes off, Hope said, and she helpfully helped me get them off. She got soap on her hands and started cleaning me, and I returned the favor. But her touch was just too much, so I took her into my arms and kissed her senselessly. Then she pushed me away and got to her knees. Before I could protest, she took me into her mouth, and after that all thoughts left my mind. I finished way too fast. It was just too erotic to see her on her knees in front of me. She was going to move away, but I needed to return the favor, and I did. In a few minutes, I had her moaning with pleasure, using only my mouth. We eventually moved to the bath, and just laid there for a while, letting the warm water and the sweet smell seep into our tired muscles. It was very relaxing and something I was sure Hope needed after such a long day. When the water started to get too cold to stay there, I got out and grabbed a towel to wrap Hope in. I carried her to bed, and we kissed. We both fell asleep before we could get carried again. But once we woke up, we made love again. It was glorious to wake up next to my true mate, and be able to have sex with her any time I wanted. After we were done, we had enough time for a quick nap, and then we went to join the rest of the family for breakfast. Congratulations to both of you. Grandma said as soon as we walked in. You both did really well. I tried my best. Hope said shyly. For your first time, it was remarkable child. I'm really proud of you. I think you will need to increase the time you spend with me going over the administration of the pack. For soon you will have to take care of your own. Thank you. I will do my best to learn as much as I can. Hope said happily. And I will help as much as I can. It's safe to assume Hope won't go back to training with Alice, right? I said. Right, she has outgrown that need. I suggest you take her with you for training, and we should start setting some sparring with us. Mom suggested. Good idea. My aunt added, once a week with each of us. I call first turn. I will be honored. Hope said. And what about you? She asked Risk. I guess you won't be going back to Alice's group, right? No, in fact, Ice and I are leaving later today. We still have some things to do. This was just a quick trip back to participate in the tournament. Risk responded. So soon. Hope asked. It's our job. I said. Our responsibility is to investigate. For that we need to go away. I get it it's just I will miss you. Hope said. You won't have much time to miss us while training don't worry. We will be back before you decide to go challenge Doom. Work hard in the meanwhile. Risk said. Before, it felt like that day was very far away. Now. It felt like it could be any day now. Hope had grown really fast. Since you don't have training, why don't you spend some time with Risk before she leaves? I suggested Hope once breakfast was done. And what about you? She asked. I have some things to check before training today, and we need to talk to Grandma about our other training. Don't worry about me. Just go relax for a while. After a kiss. She leaves with risk. Ice and I followed our parents to their office. So, is everything ready for you to return to your mission? Uncle asked. 
Yes, we left some things there. So there's not much that we have to pack. I just need to check some information before we leave. Ice explained. And what about you? Mom asked. Do you know what you need to do moving forward? First of all, we need to keep working with Grandma. I need to involve Hope more in the paperwork. She is a fast learner, so that's not going to be an issue this afternoon. She will be joining me for training. I will have her spar with a few of my strongest, and I was also thinking of letting her take on groups, just in case she needs that kind of experience. I added as an afterthought. I hadn't thought about that before, but once I mentioned it, it made sense. It wasn't the same to fight one-on-one, -on -one as fighting against groups, and I couldn't let that aside. If there was a chance for her to be in that kind of situation, she needed to be able to do it herself. I wanted to be there for her, always, but it might not be possible. The next best thing to being always there to protect her was to teach her how to protect herself. I'll have a sparring session with her tomorrow mid-morning. My aunt said. I'll take the next day. Mom added. Do you really think she is ready? I couldn't help but ask. Don't worry about it. It's not like we will go all out with her. The point is to find her weaknesses and strengthen her. And to give her the chance to gain experience. After going a few rounds with us, fighting a second grade alpha, like Doom, will be a piece of cake. I don't trust him not to find a way to cheat. I complained. And that's why you will be there, to keep things fair and clean. And to support your true mate. Dad added. After watching her fight, I feel more confident she will be able to achieve her goals. So don't worry so much, she will be fine. What saddens me is that the time for you to leave is fast approaching. Mom said. I know that your future is by your true mate's side. But as a mother, I would have liked you to stay here. Don't worry. I'm not going to try and change your minds about leaving. It's just wishful thinking. Even if you go, you will always have a place here and the full support of this pack. Now. Taking over won't be as easy if Doom already has hold of people's minds. Dad said. I know we will have to work on undoing any brainwashing he has done. And there's also Hope's brother to think about I don't know. If she even knows what to do with him exile sounds like a good option. But they are family. And it will be hard for her to make that kind of decision. That's something for both of you to decide once the time comes. Uncle suggested. Family is family, and both Hope and her brother will have to talk it out. That's right. I agreed. There was still a lot of work to do. But as long as Hope was happy, everything would be fine. Hope. I was sad to see Risk leave, but grateful that she had been with me during the tournament. It ended up not being as hard as I had expected. It had actually been kind of fun. But facing it alone would have been difficult for me. The best part of having done well in the tournament was the way people looked at me. No longer did they glare at me and look down on me. There was respect on their faces. As Risk had said, I just needed to kick some sense into them. Being one of the high-ranked females made everyone look at me differently. I was sad. I had to go this far for them to accept me but satisfied that I had won. I joined Dagger for lunch, and then we both went to Knight's office to keep working on the PAX business. It wasn't so hard once you got to understand the basics. This was all the stuff I needed to know if I wanted to rule my own pack, so I was working hard to master all of it. So, do you want to join me for training? Dagger asked. Yes, better than doing nothing. A much better option than going back to Alice's group. Although it turned out to be really good training. It's just that I don't know what kind of handicap. She will try to impose on me. So her people can keep beating on me. I could already imagine what she would do to me given the chance. Don't even think about it. I was already thinking that maybe you should try to fight more than one opponent at a time. 
but it will be done under my supervision. He warned, and I had to agree. I had no desire to be put in an unsafe situation. Not when my goal felt so much closer. That actually sounds good. I agreed. My people will be much calmer now that new rankings have been set. Alphas like that kind of stability. It will last for a while. But they will still try to prove themselves. And since you got a good rank, they won't feel the need to hold back while fighting you. He warned. But I kind of like that. I'm ready that's exactly what I need. I needed new challenges, if I wanted to keep getting stronger. I also need to warn you that my aunt wants to fight you tomorrow. He said, staring at me, as if trying to read my expression. That's actually a little scary she is really strong. She has more experience than you, that helps. But don't worry. She knows how to teach while fighting. You will be able to learn a lot from her. I'm thankful for everything you and your family are doing for me. I felt moved by their generosity. You're family now. That's how it works. I couldn't help but think back to my blood family. Grandma had been like that. She was kind and supportive. But my father had been sick and my brother betrayed me. I had no idea if I would have to fight him too. He didn't seem to have any interest in the position of Alpha. But he was obsessed with Doom, and I was afraid he would try to stop me just to stay on his good side. I miss my brother, but the brother I knew when we were little, not the one who ran out leaving me behind, nor the one who sold me for security to a madman. I wanted a family like the one I had when I was young, like the one Dagger had. Was that too much to ask for? What's on the agenda for today? I asked trying to change the subject. Budgets and more budgets. Dagger responded and proceeded to explain, at length, the papers he had in his hands. It wasn't complicated, but it took some time to go over everything again. A pack was a lot of work. Again my mind wandered to how my old pack was doing under Doom's rule. We can finish this later. It's time to train. Dagger said, and we both walked out onto the field. A group of warriors was already waiting, and most of them greeted us warmly. Is it bring you mate day? One of them asked. Something like that. Dagger said. Let's start with the usual let's run. He started running, and I kept pace next to him, with the rest of the group following us. The pace was fast enough that we couldn't talk but not so hard that I was out of breath. We reached a clearing where we did some exercising, and then we ran back to where we had started. No one in the group looked in bad shape. They were all holding up well. Did you have fun during the tournament? Dagger asked and received a chorus of agreement. Then I guess you don't want to fight anymore. He asked sounding disappointed, and received a lot of responses but all pointed to the willingness to fight. Okay, then pair up, we are going to do some sparring. Dagger called, and they all cheered. One would think they would get tired of fighting. I said to Dagger, Well, most of them lost fairly fast, so they didn't get much chance to fight. A warrior called, loud enough for most of the group to hear, and they all started to trash talk to him. Ignore them. Dagger said. I could tell that the group knew each other very well and that they were friends. I had no trouble finding someone to spar with. One of the older women, one that I knew had been in the top, offered to be my first opponent. It wasn't an easy fight, but I was able to win. I had been on edge during the fight, knowing that if I made just one mistake, that would be enough for me to lose. Everyone in the group was good and my opponents were eager to prove themselves. But it was different from when I had been with Alice's group. Here, I could tell they respected me, and were just trying to learn and, in a way, to have fun. By the end of the training session, I was tired, but not exhausted as I had been before. My muscles ached in a good way, and I felt satisfied with what I had learned during my fights. I knew that I had done a good job. 
even before Dagger told me. Now, we need to do more boring work. Dagger said. It seems like leading a pack is mostly doing boring work. I said. Not that I minded. Leading a pack was a work of love. I hated to think how a pack that was only being led out of ambition could function. More work at the office, dinner with family, then rest, and a new day. Fighting with the Alphas was a whole new experience. It wasn't like fighting with Alpha Swift. With her, I knew she was on a whole other level. But part of me still thought I had a chance to win. With Shadow and Venom, it was more of a question of how long I could hold on. They were both very good at what they did and had a lot more experience. When I managed to block or counter one of their moves, they used a different one. It was very challenging, but I was learning a lot. And they knew how to pull their hits, so I wasn't as hurt as I had been before when I was training with Alice. In that group, it was like everyone was trying to see how much damage they could do. I was getting all the knowledge and all the practice I could. I was eager to go back, and I needed to be ready as soon as possible. If I needed to get a few hits to make that possible, I would. Because from every hit and every defeat, I was learning how to be better. Everyone was helping, and I was doing my very best to take advantage of their help. My goals hadn't changed, and every day my return to my pack was closer. I was going to fulfill my destiny. But I would miss the Uber pack and everything they had done for me, Jagger. It had been months since the tournament. The growth that Hope had shown was amazing. It was hard to believe she had close to zero training when she started. Now, she was able to give anyone here a good fight. It was too much to ask for her to win against my parents. But they had to make an effort to stay ahead of her. My own fights with her were very difficult, and many times she had been closer to winning. I wasn't going to insult her and let her win against me. But so far, she was one of the best fighters in the pack. I think she is ready. Grandma said as we watched Hope fighting with my aunt. I think so too but I still worry. She has learned a lot. I trust her with this pack, so she should be more than ready to take over her old one. It's time to start preparing to go. She said. I knew she was right. But it was harder than I anticipated. Both leaving and letting Hope challenge a dangerous man. That was close. My aunt said as she pushed Hope out of the arena. It was. Hope agreed as I helped her to her feet. Are you okay? I asked. Yes, just a few bruises. She said. But I think I lasted longer this time. You did, child. You did. Grandma agreed. You are ready now. It's time for you to start thinking about going back. Really? Hope asked, not quite ready to believe it. Really, I agree with that. My aunt said, moving closer to us. Not many are capable of lasting so long against us. If we wait until you can defeat us, it could take years, and it would be pointless. Most of our warriors are capable of defeating a small Pax Alphas, and you are ready to. If you want, I will start preparing everything for our trip. I offered. Yes, please. She said excitedly. I'll see you at dinner. My aunt said, and walked away. And I'll see you later. I don't think you need to go to the office today. Take the day to make plans. Grandma ordered, and she too walked away. Do you really think I'm ready? Hope asked. Truth be told, I think you have been ready for a while. It's only that we want to make sure you will be safe Doom, as an older Alpha, with more experience than you. And we were trying to give you that experience. And I'm grateful that you have been careful I will only get one chance, so I have to do it right. She said. Even if you fail, I'm plan B, and I won't fail no matter what. I know, but I feel like I need to do this myself. So, what's next? She asked. Well, we need to pack our stuff, see what we are taking with us, and what we will leave behind to be sent later. 
For security, I want a group of warriors to be close by in case things get difficult with Doom, and he tries to ignore the challenge, or fight back in numbers. We need to choose a day to go, and we need to plan our arrival in a way, that it can't be denied that we are there. We should stay one day with Swift and Trunk. That way we will have another pack as a witness of our plans. She suggested. That's a good idea. Then we will leave for your old pack early in the morning. And we can make sure that everyone notices your arrival and can see your challenge. The more people there, the harder it will be for him to try and get away from it. Are you going to go with me? She asked. Of course I will. I was surprised by her question. It's just that, maybe it would be better for you to lie low and let me face them. I don't want them to know I have the support of the Uber pack. Nonsense. You can't go by yourself besides. You need someone to see what's going on I can tell them. I'm there to make sure things are done by the book. If you don't want to reveal I'm your true mate. I felt hurt by that. I wanted everyone to know we were together. And it was like she didn't want to be associated with me. I don't want them to say that I'm only doing it because my true mate is from the Uber pack. But I am, and they will have to deal with it. And I'm not going to leave you alone with them, not even for a second. I know you're strong, but he won't be alone and you can't take on a whole pack. I wasn't sure if I should feel angry or sad at her attitude. I was trying to understand, but I couldn't. I'm sorry, I know that. I just want to do this by myself. With you there. No one will pay attention to me. They will think it's all you're doing doom. Has been saying the uber pack wants to take over and you being there, with me, will only help his case. We can leave the fact that we are true mates alone at first, but once you defeat doom, you need to present me as your mate. I said. I wasn't going to pretend we weren't together. I kind of understood her reasoning. We would have pushed back no matter what we said. And Doom didn't need any excuses to try and claim the challenge wasn't valid. But it still hurt. So, we will have time to think about the details of how we are going to introduce ourselves. First, let's plan for a date I guess that the sooner the better right? I asked, trying to act as if nothing had happened. Saturday will be a good day. Most people will be free to witness my return. She said, thinking about it. We could leave on Thursday, arrive at Swift's on Friday, and stay one night there. Sound good. I will contact them to let them know we will be there. I left with the excuse to start working on everything we needed to set up. But I needed a little distance. The hard part of being true mates, is that I kind of understood where she was coming from. She had been working hard to be recognized, as a strong warrior in her own right. But she was part of me. As true mates, we were the same. It made sense to hide the fact that she was alive and she was my mate when I had gone talking to them. But if she was ready to face them, what was the point of hiding? I spent the rest of the day setting everything up for our departure. Not only what I needed for the trip, but what I needed to leave ready for my absence. With I still going away on missions, most of the tasks I had taken over would go back to my parents. They insisted they didn't mind, but I wanted to make it as easy as possible for them. You didn't go to dinner, my dad said, walking into the office. I have a lot of work to do. I will be busy until we leave. We only have a couple of days, I said. You know you can ask us for help. What's on your mind? He knew me so well. I feel like Hope is trying to deny me. She should be shouting to the sky that we are mates, not hiding me from her family. I confessed. The family that says that true mates are not real, and that she should get a chosen mate. He asked. Have you considered that she is afraid for you? No. It's not that knowing I'm her true mate will certainly cause trouble. But they can't harm me. But it can be used against you both. The anti-true mates campaign that doom has must be going strong within the pack. 
she needs to gain control of the pack before letting everyone know that not only has she found her true mate, but he is from the most powerful pack. They suffered because of her father's rule. They might be afraid of what another true mate couple could do. That does sound like a valid concern, but it still didn't make me feel better. I've been thinking about it. I will go and present myself as part of the Uber pack and will ask to be a witness to the challenge. Then I will let Hope take the lead and act as she wants. I will be there to support her in whatever she needs. Good to hear. Now, you should leave son. It's late I'm sure you will find something to eat if you go to the kitchen. Just then, Hope walked into the office carrying a tray of food. Sorry to interrupt, she said, looking at my dad. I didn't see you at dinner, so I brought you something to eat. Thanks, I needed that. I'll leave you alone, dad said, walking out. Are you okay? Hope asked. Yes, I just had to think over some things. And you know I have to prepare everything. After we leave, I'm not sure how long it will take to prepare everything there. We won't be coming back anytime soon. Are you sure you don't mind leaving? She asked a little unsure. I told you, my place is with you, wherever it is. And it's not like I will never return here once everything is settled. I'm sure we can visit and Ice is always on the move. I'm sure he and Risk can visit us. I know something is bothering you. But it looked like she didn't know what. It's nothing let's focus on what's next why don't you help me here. So we can finish and go to bed. I suggested. That sounds like a good plan. Tell me what you're working on. And I will keep going while you eat. You will need your energy for later. She said. And I felt myself going hard at her suggestive tone. I could already imagine all we would be doing later. That was something I knew I would never get tired of. I loved being with my true mate. Nothing would change that. Hope. It was time. What I had been working on for so long was finally within my reach. I wasn't sure what would happen. I was beyond nervous. But I needed to take back what was mine. I didn't like the idea of facing Doom and his son. Even the idea of seeing my brother. Once more was making me slightly sick. But it needed to be done. I had to face them. Do you want to go out for dinner once we arrive? Dagger asked. We would be staying at the same hotel. We had been in the last time. One of the many family-owned businesses they had. Sounds good. But nothing we have to dress up for. I want something calm just for the two of us. And then to go back to the hotel room. I said. Your wish is your command. He said and smiled at me, but I could tell he was still angry, that I wanted to keep the fact we were mates hidden. I had no trouble claiming him most of the time, but in this case, I was afraid of what they could do. And not only to me, like turning people against me, or trying to deny me the right to challenge him. I was afraid they would try to kill him to weaken me, and to have an excuse to keep pushing me into Doom's son's arms. We got to the hotel and then went to our room. I'll grab a quick shower, and then we will go out for dinner. The receptionist told me that there is an Italian place nearby. It's supposed to be very good, and it's casual. He said as he started stripping of his clothes. Sounds good, I said, distracted by him. When I heard the water in the shower, I decided that I needed one too, and went to join him. Needless to say, we were a little late for dinner, but we still managed to get there. We shared a pizza and a plate of pasta. We went back to the hotel, and we continued from where we left of after our shower. The next day was the day we would arrive with Swift and Trunk. Now, that I was so close, I was feeling weird. Like time was going too fast, and not fast enough. Are you okay? Dagger asked as we drove closer to our destination. We were a few minutes from the entrance to Swift's territory. I'm a little nervous. I have been working on this for a long time. But I'm not sure how my people will receive me. Even if I manage to win the challenge, 
Will the pack accept me as easily as they accepted Doom? I felt so angry with how happy people were after Doom killed my dad. And now I'm wondering if they are going to be as happy with me. The guy you met here last time was happy with the idea of you taking over. He reminded me. And from what I saw the last time I was there, everyone loved you. Thinking you were dead hurt them a lot. But it's not the same to think I would be part of the new family in power, to think I will once again change it. Don't worry. Everyone loves you. And we have time. Even if not everyone is happy at the beginning, you can win them over, after you show them what a great alpha you are. Trust me, you will be fine. And I will be there to help you with anything you might need. He said, and I felt better. Thank you, that does make me feel better, knowing that you are going to be there with me. That seemed to cheer him up, at least his smile felt more real. We arrived at our destination, and Swift looked very happy to see us. Since Dagger had contacted them ahead of time, they were ready for us, and had prepared a banquet for us. You didn't need to do all of this, I said, looking at everything they had prepared for us. Any excuse for a party is good, Trunk said. We have to celebrate that you are ready to set things right once again. Your pack will return to its rightful owners. Your parents would be so proud that you have worked so hard for this. Do you think she is ready? I heard Trunk asking Dagger. We wouldn't be here, if I didn't think so not only me, but my family also thinks she is ready. And not only on the fighting side. My grandma thinks she is ready to take on Doom, but she also believes she is ready to lead the pack. She has been training with my grandma, Alpha Knight, on how to lead a pack. Then I'm happy that the pack of my friends will be in good hands. I felt good hearing him talking like that. I love that he believed in me. And not just him, but his family as well. I knew that I wouldn't have gotten so far if it wasn't for the help of the Uber pack. I also knew that it was thanks to the bond between us that I had gotten stronger. But like Dagger had said many times, if I wasn't strong and worthy, I wouldn't have been his true mate. I had everything I needed to become strong. They had just helped me along. You know what we should do? We should spar. Swift told me later that day. I would feel so much better after I get another taste of your strength you surprised me last time. And I'm sure you have improved, but how much? She said. I don't think it's a good idea. She needs to be rested for tomorrow. Dagger said. In the end, Swift convinced me to join her for a quick sparring session. It was very different from the first time. I had fought her. I felt more sure of my movements. And I didn't have the feeling she was just toying with me. I was keeping her on her toes. I think that's enough. Dagger called after a few minutes. Agree. I don't know if I would be able to win. Even if we keep going your defense is strong and your reflexes are faster than last time. I do think you are ready. If you need a witness for your challenge, we will be happy to assist. Swift said. It's okay. I will act as a witness. Dagger called. No disrespect. Trunk said. But her true mate might not be the best choice for an impartial witness. If you don't mind, we will try to be there. Thank you for your offer. I said. Knowing it would be better to have more people in my corner. I just hope that Doom didn't take it as an attack. It was a long night of eating and drinking. I couldn't drink as much as I wanted, and Dagger took me to bed early. We had to be rested to face Doom and my former pack. I prepared a big breakfast for you. Swift greeted us the next morning. You need your energy, so eat anything you want. I can make more if you need. Your breakfast is very good. But if I eat everything I want I won't be able to move. I said, earning a big smile from Swift. Where is Trunk? Dagger asked. He left early. We talked about it yesterday, and it would be better if only one of us go. He went early to visit Doom. He wants to be there already when you arrive. 
That way it won't feel like we are ambushing Doom. That's a good idea. I don't want you getting into trouble because of me. I said. Don't worry about it. Swift said as she pushed more food my way. I was feeling really well by the time we left, but once we made our way there, I started getting nervous again. Everything is going to be okay, don't worry. Dagger assured me. So, you might want to cover your face, we're almost at the border. He said, and I pushed my hood down. Soon a couple of warriors walked out of the woods, blocking the road. I couldn't see much since my head was down, but I saw them moving to both sides of the car. What are you doing here? The one on Dagger's side asked. I'm here to see Doom I have something to discuss with him. Dagger said. He is busy right now. The warrior responded, and immediately I felt Dagger's aura going out. I have to talk to your alpha. I'm Dagger from the Uber pack. And I have something really important to discuss with him understood. Understood. Give me a moment to let him know you are here. His aura went down again. And I could see the warrior breathing easier, but still a little scared. Was that necessary? I asked, and I could see my question bothered him. Of course. I had to do it, or we would be here all day. He said. We still had to wait a few minutes, until they moved out of the way, and we could keep going. Dagger let his oar out once again, as we slowly made our way to the pack house. I knew what he was doing. He was making sure that everyone knew he was there, and hopefully, they were curious enough to go, and see what was going on. He was setting the perfect scene for my return. I could see people getting out of their houses, and peeking through the windows, as the car drove by. By the time we stopped in front of the pack house, a few people were already following us. But most importantly, at the front of the pack house, a large number of warriors, and even Doom were already gathered. It was time, Jagger. I was angry. I wasn't sure why, but I was. I stopped the car in front of the pack house, and I saw that Doom had already gathered his people in the front. I could see Trunk standing a little behind the group. Doom didn't look happy to have me there, but it looked a little excessive to have that group of people with him. I wasn't sure if the show of strength was for me off her trunk. Welcome again to our humble pack. Doom greeted me. I wasn't expecting you so soon and I apologize, as you see. I already have a guest here. So I'm afraid I'm a little busy right now. I think you will be interested in what I have to say, as will many of your people. I responded. I walked around the car and opened Hope's door. She climbed down her hood still covering her face. She turned to face the group of people that had gathered behind us and slowly pulled the hood back. A lot of gasps and cries followed her action. And then she turned and faced the warriors. In that group, the responses were mixed. But it was Dune's response that I was worried about. You are alive. He exclaimed and ran down the stairs to where she was standing. I blocked his way. I didn't want him anywhere near her. It was bad enough. They were going to be fighting soon. Thank you for bringing her back. He told me, still oblivious to what was coming to him. A lot of people were now moving closer, everyone eager to see if it was really her. I could feel her getting tense behind me, and I wasn't sure if she was ready for this, and if I should do something to help her. That's me. Hope said and no one brought me back. I decided to come here, but not for the reason you think. Doom, I challenge you for Alpha of this pack. What nonsense is that? Doom said. You can't do that. Actually, she can. I said. Anyone can challenge for Alpha of a pack. You should know better than anyone since that's how you became Alpha of this pack. She is a child, so no she can't. Doom said, I'm not a child besides, this pack belonged to my family, before you came here. My line had been the alphas of this pack for generations. 
Hope said. Helena. Hector screamed and ran to his sister. That actually made Hope take a step back. I had to grab him to stop him from getting to her. Let me go, that's my sister. And she wants nothing to do with you. I said, pushing him away. He was going to move again. But Doom put a hand on his shoulder and stopped him. I thank you for your help bringing back our missing child. But this is a family matter. Doom told me. You are crazier than I remember. This is not a family matter, because we are not family. Hope said. I left, because of what you wanted to do with me. I left, so I could train and become stronger. So I could challenge you and take back what belongs to me. I don't accept that you need to calm down and come with me. Doom said. I challenge you for Alpha. Hope screamed, making sure everyone there could hear her. I don't accept that. Doom said. Stop talking nonsense. It's a challenge issued with witnesses. I said. If you refuse, then you are accepting your defeat and hope will automatically become the new alpha of this pack. Is that what you want? Look, this is not your problem. Stop interfering. Doom said, and I could see he was losing his temper. He didn't like that the situation had gotten out of his control. I'm also a witness. Trunk called from behind him. She issued a challenge and you have to either accept it or admit defeat. Helena, stop this. You have no idea what you are doing. Come here and let's talk about this. Her brother called. I know exactly what I'm talking about. You are the ones who need to stop wasting time and give me an answer. Are you going to fight me or are you going to admit defeat? Hope moved from behind me and stepped in front of Doom. People were talking, some were trying to dissuade her and others were cheering her. You are going to regret this child. Doom said. I accept your challenge, but not right now. You have just arrived and must be tired. Why don't we wait until you have time to rest? I don't need time. I'm ready right now. Why are you trying to stall? When you killed my father you didn't give him any time. You attack right away. Hope said. Okay. If that's what you want but don't say that I didn't warn you. Doom said. Helena, please reconsider. You have no idea what you are doing. Doom is the right alpha for this pack. And I just got you back. I don't want to see you hurt. Hector said. Don't make me laugh. And don't pretend you care about me. You had no trouble selling me to that sicko there. And now you want me to believe you care if I'm hurt. Hope challenged her brother. At her words, people around started murmuring. That's right. My brother sold this pack and me to that man. They tried to force me to take Doom's son, as my chosen mate. I had to fake my own death, because it was the only way to save myself from them. Is that true? One of the warriors asked. I have no idea what she is talking about it's clear. She got traumatized by her accident, and that this man from the Uber pack put her against us. Doom responded. Don't you dare try to put the blame on Dagger. Hope said, letting her alpha aura out and making several of the people there step back because of the pressure. No one influenced me. You are angry you couldn't make me submit to you you are angry that I preferred to leave the pack before obeying you. This is all a waste of time. It's time for you to face me let's put a stop to this. I won't allow you to be in control of my ancestors pack for any longer. Let's go to the clearing it's the best area for us to fight. And don't worry Hector. I won't hurt your sister too much this is actually a good thing. After a good beating she will understand who is in charge. Doom said and I wanted to go to him and beat him senseless. This is such a bad idea. Hope please reconsider this. It's not too late ask Doom for forgiveness. I'm sure he will take you back. Hector insisted. Is it true? One of the warriors asked. You fake your own death because they were trying to force you to be with danger. You know how it was. Hope said. You stopped me from leaving the house 
Under Doom's orders, he told me, I would only be allowed to leave if I accepted his son as my chosen mate. His son even attacked me during the full moon ceremony and tried to force me to accept him. He did what I bellowed. I couldn't help myself. I knew he had been harassing her, but she never told me he had attacked her directly. Nothing happened, she said, but I knew she was lying. I ran away from him, and he couldn't hurt me. It was then that I renounced the pack and asked to leave so I could search for my true mate. But Doom wouldn't let me go that's why I had to trick Hector into letting me out of the house so I could escape. It was all a misunderstanding. Her brother insisted. Danger never intended to hurt her in any way. She just overreacted. You are not helping yourself. As a representative of the Uber Pack, I will be investigating this issue. You all know that true mate bonds are sacred, and anyone who dares to mess with them will be punished. I said, I can take care of the business of my pack. You don't need to get involved with this. Doom said, Just because your pack is strong doesn't mean you can impose your will on others. This won't be your pack for much longer, so you don't have to worry about this. Hope said, And once I take control, you and your son won't be welcome here. So his past transgressions won't be a problem anymore. I don't know where you get that confidence from, but soon you will regret challenging me. I will be merciful and won't kill you this time, but this will be your only chance. You will have to obey me from now on and do as I tell you. I hope I don't have to remind you that every person is free to choose their own destiny. Even if you were to win, as soon as the fight ends, she is free to leave if she wishes to. The winner doesn't own the loser you should know that better than anyone since you lost to your brother so many times in the past. I said, letting him know that I knew about his past. I wasn't going to let him try and manipulate the situation. Stop stalling. Let's start this. Hope called. Okay. A challenge for control of this pack was called. The heirs of the former alpha of this pack. Hope. Challenge the current Alpha. Doom. I called. Alpha Trunk. And I witnessed the challenge being issued. And will act as observers of this fight. The winner will be the one that either makes the other surrender. Makes him unable to keep fighting. Or kill the other one. Hope. That was it. The moment I had been waiting for. Doom was in front of me. And we were about to fight for control of the pack. I could see he was angry, the whole situation was out of his control, and he didn't like that. My brother screaming at me was distracting. I wanted to hit him, so he would shut up, but I knew it wouldn't help me. I needed to focus on Doom and only Doom. There is still time to stop this. Doom said once again. I will take you back. I don't want you to take me back. I want you to give me what is mine and to leave this place. I want you to stop manipulating my people with your insane ideas. I heard from the Uber pack what happened in your old pack. You couldn't do what you wanted there so you came here to spread your disgusting ideas. I won't allow you to mess with the lives of the people here, like you tried to do with me. You are just a child who has no idea of how the world works. Your brother understood that fairy tales are not real that you need to take control of your life and leave weaknesses behind. He was talking calmly one moment. The next he was moving faster than I thought possible, aiming to hit me. I managed to dodge him. Even if he was fast, he was slower than Shadow and Venom. All my training was helping to stay a step ahead of him. I could see that he wasn't holding back and that I needed to start taking this seriously if I wanted to win. He wasn't going to make things easy for me. I would have to fight with all my might to defeat him. I managed to connect a few hits, but those didn't seem to affect him much. He was getting angrier, and that was making his attacks more desperate. But still, he wasn't making mistakes. I knew that if I shifted first, it would be the same as admitting he was stronger, 
so I needed to hold on and keep pushing. I managed to kick the back of his knee and sent him to the ground. I thought it would give me an advantage, but when I tried to step on his throat, he grabbed my foot and threw me to the ground next to him. He was trying to sit on top of me to hold me down, but I kicked and managed to get up. The problem was that I had to move away to gain space, and that gave him time to stand up as well. He attacked right away, but I kept dodging or blocking him. I felt like we weren't getting anywhere, but at least I had worked on my stamina, and I knew I was able to keep fighting for a long time. He was already looking tired. He put some distance between us, and then I saw him shifting. I let my alpha aura out, hoping to stop him for a moment, as I did my own shifting. I finished the shift in time to see Doom jumping at me. From the way he was attacking, he no longer cared about killing me. He was going for my throat, so I did the same, attacking without restraint. I felt his claws tearing my side, and his teeth trying to hold on to anything they could. I was fighting back as well, I managed to bite his back leg, and he managed to bite out a chunk of, of my side in return. At least his movements were slower now. His attacks were getting out of control, and since he was slower due to his injured leg, I started to get the upper hand little by little. I could tell he was tired and trying to end things quickly, but I kept dodging and saving my energy, looking for the perfect opportunity to attack. When it finally came, I didn't hesitate. I wasn't planning on killing him. But if that was my only choice, I would do it. I got hold of his neck and started biting down. I was waiting for him to submit, but he kept fighting me. I could feel his claws tearing the flesh of everything within their reach. Even my tender stomach got open, but I didn't let go. I bit harder and harder the longer he fought, until finally, he stopped moving. I let go. Unsure if he was alive or dead. It was also possible he was just faking it. I took a tentative step back and watched the body. He wasn't moving. The clear winner of the fight is Hope. Dagger called out. I took a step back and started shifting back. Most of the cuts closed up. But I was missing a few bites and some parts were tender with a few open cuts. Where there wasn't enough flesh to mend the wound. I was vulnerable and would be hurt for a while. Father. Doom's daughter screamed and ran to his body. I felt sick. It was just like when my own father had died. You killed him. His son said to me. I didn't want to. But he didn't submit he kept fighting. I said. I wasn't sure why I felt so guilty. I had done what I needed to do. Some people started cheering and chanting my name while a few were standing around Doom's body. I could still hear his daughter crying for him, and I wanted to shut her up. But I understood what she was feeling. It wasn't part of my plan to hurt her like that. I was just doing what needed to be done. You will regret this. His son told me. You are an ungrateful brat, and I will teach you some manners. I danger, son of Doom. Challenge you for Alpha of this pack. Hey, that's not fair. She just finished a challenge. Trunk interrupted. I witnessed the fight, and it was a fair one she would be at a disadvantage if she fought again. A challenge was issued, and I demand it to be answered. If not, she will have to forfeit. I knew that I was in no shape to fight, and I felt a little sick. I wasn't going to let him get away with it, but I wasn't sure what to do. I felt a soft cloth over my shoulders, and saw Dagger putting a sheet over me. He looked at me, determination etched on his face. I accept your challenge in the name of my true mate. He said. I knew I had asked him to stay quiet. But I also knew it was time to accept his help. What are you talking about? Hector said. I think I forgot to mention, that while I was away I was able to find my true mate. I said, let me introduce you all to my true mate and my alpha pair, Dagger. 
He is from the Uber Pack. He can't intervene. Doom Sun said. I left the Uber Pack to come with my true mate. Dagger said, taking a step closer to him. And as his alpha peer, I'm capable of taking any challenge issued to her as my own. That's true. Trunk said. If one of the alpha peers is unable to accept a challenge, the other one can take care of it. That's how it's done in my pack. I'm the bronze. My true mate is the brains. He joked, but no one was in the mood to laugh. No, I don't accept that. Doom said. She is mine. She was promised to me. We were going to rule the pack together. Once my father was ready to retire. I never accepted that hell. I told you over and over that I wanted nothing to do with you. Lead me out of whatever deals you made with Hector. I refused to keep referring to him as my brother. He had lost the privilege of that. The challenge was issued. Do you want to keep going or do you want to forfeit? I have to warn you. You have no chance of winning against me. Dagger told him. If it's true that you are true mates. One of the warriors called. Why was she the one to challenge Doom? You could have issued the challenge in her name. Doom was my problem, so I had to deal with him. But I don't mind my true mate taking care of the trash. I said, referring to Doom's son and his stupid challenge. You didn't have to kill him. Hector said, Daniela is heartbroken. I had to he wasn't going to accept defeat. I didn't intend to kill him. He forced me. But Doom didn't have to kill our dad. And you don't seem to have a problem with that. I said. It's different our father was mad. He had to be stopped. He was dangerous with his crazy obsession. Hector said. The same can be said about Doom. His ideas were against everything the pack stand for. His old pack had been having trouble with him for a while. And the only reason he could still predicate his craziness was that his brother took pity on him. Dagger said, Even before I found out about Hope's circumstances and the fact that she was my true mate, the Uber pack was already taking an interest in Doom's activities. We also know that some members of this pack have left because they were prohibited from looking for their true mates. They both had their faults. And I'm not going to start a fight to see who was worse the fact is that I did what I had to do and now I'm the alpha of this pack. I told him, since you no longer seem to have this pack's interests at hand you are no longer welcome here. None of you are, I said, including Doom's son and daughter. And you haven't said if you want to fight me or not. Dagger told Doom's son, I see how things are. He responded, this is all part of the Uber Pax propaganda, and efforts to control everyone instead of putting some nameless puppets in control of this pack. You got control of someone already related to it. This has nothing to do with the Uber Pack. Even if they weren't involved with this, I would have come here and claimed what is mine. I said. I knew they would try to play that card, and I wasn't sure how effective it would be. The pack had been under Dune's control for a long time. Now, you are no longer welcome here. You can either follow on to the challenge you issued and fight my mate, or you can leave. Either way, I want you out of my territory in an hour. That goes for you too. I said to Hector. Either way. Hector asked. What if he wins? Then he will decide what to do. Don't be silly. There's no way he can win against Dagger. Dagger. I felt great hearing Hope's trust in me. But I finally understood what she had been talking about. The way people were reacting to Danger's words worried me. It was true that most of them were happy with the way things were going. They truly appreciated Hope. But they weren't as happy to know I was part of the deal. It looked like the idea of the Uber Pack. Trying to take more control over the packs was getting popular. Your time is running out. I told Danger. You either fight me or leave. I'm giving you the chance to step out. Since I know you have no hope of winning against me. You are so full of yourself. 
You think that because you have your pack behind you, you can do whatever you want. I was losing patience with that man, and I was already angry at him for daring to desire my mate. Part of me wanted the fight, I even wanted the chance to kill him in combat. But his family had already lost one man, and I didn't want to kill another. And I didn't want to set a bad precedent, or to make people think that he was right and that me and my family were monsters. I let my alpha aura out, and I wasn't holding back. Only Hope remained standing, the rest of them went to their knees. I could see that Danger had tried to stay standing, but the pressure was too much for him, and he also had to submit to me. I could force you to honor the challenge, and I could kill you. Easily. But I know you are grieving your father's death, so I will give you a chance to go. So take your sister and your father's body, and go back to your pack bury him, and try to forget his teachings. Find a life for yourself. My mates said that there's no place for you here any longer. Take whatever you need for your trip. I'll take care of sending anything that might stay behind, but your time is running out. I want you out of here. Hope said, her tone not leaving any room for debate. You will regret this. Danger murmured, but I could hear him loud and clear. I was tempted to stop him, but instead I cancelled my aura and allowed him to walk away. Congratulations. I heard some people saying, I'm so happy you are alive. An old lady told Hope as she hugged her. We are happy you are back where you belong. And similar things were said by the warriors. Most of the people around agreed they were happy to have her back. But I noticed a few silent ones at the back of the group. I knew I would have to keep an eye on them, to make sure they wouldn't cause trouble. I thank you all for your kind words, but right now I need a shower to wash all this blood. Hope said. Could you make sure that my brother and Doom's son leave this place in the time frame I gave them? She asked one of the warriors. I'll take care of it. He said, and from his attitude I knew he was one of the good ones. I'll go with you, in case, you need help washing your back. I said and followed Hope in. As soon as we were out of sight, I took her into my arms, and carried her the rest of the way. The battle had been brutal and I knew she was really injured. She was most likely putting a strong front because she didn't want them to think she was weak. But she didn't need to pretend in front of me. I can walk, she said. But she wasn't trying to get out of my arms. I saw him take some bites out of you even if the wounds are mostly closed. You must be in pain. You need rest and food. I said. I wouldn't mind some food, but I need to address the pack properly. And I need to talk to the warriors and see what has been going on since I left. She said, Don't worry about it right now, let's take care of you first. I insisted, and she left me. So, where are we going from here? I asked at the top of the stairs. Let's go to my old room. First, we will need to check what damage Doom did to my parents' room, before we can take over it. I could hear the resignation and sadness from her. Lead the way, I said, and took her to a girly room. It was so her that it made me smile, much more when I saw her blushing. I haven't been in the mood to change it from when I was a teenager. She tried to justify it. It's okay, don't worry all I care about is being with you. Now, tell me where it hurts. Everywhere, to be honest. She showed me some tender spots. I had no idea how much Doom had taken out of her. But she looked thin and that was dangerous for her. Excuse me. A voice called from the hallway. I went and saw an older woman standing at the end of the hallway, carrying a first aid case. Hello, can I help you? I asked. I'm Sylvia. The PAX healer I wanted to see if Alpha Hope needed help. She said hesitating. Thank you. Go ahead. I said, opening the door for her. I'm fine. Hope protested. Let her help. Shifting helped, but you still have some nasty bruises that could do with some care. 
I replied. I stepped outside to give them space, but didn't close the door. I wanted to be able to see what was going on inside. I could tell they knew each other, which was to be expected, since we were in Hope's original pack. It was also my pack. I had left the Uber pack behind and taken on a new responsibility. I could feel my ties to the land and the people setting down over me, thanks to my bond with Hope. I heard a noise and turned to see some of the warriors standing on the stairs. It was like they had moved close enough to hear in case Hope called them. I decided to go and see what was going on. I was also an alpha, even if it took them some time to get used to it. I think I remember you. I told one of them. Yes, when we were looking for Alpha Hope, after she fell into the river. I know you all were frantic about finding her, and I'm sorry it took us this long to come back. But when I first found her, she made it clear she needed to get away from Doom, until she was ready to fight him. I didn't want them to become my enemies, before we had a chance to become friends. When did you find her? An older warrior asked. As I was passing through the nearby town on my way back, I found her at a diner and offered her refuge on the Uber pack after she explained what had happened. So you told her you were true mates, so she would follow you. A very young looking warrior asked. That's not how it works kid. We found out we were true mates a while after she arrived at the Uber pack. And once you find your true mates, no one needs to tell you about it. I saw another of the warriors whispering something to the young man, who looked mad, but at least acted apologetic. Right now Hope is getting checked out after the fight. She will talk to you all once she gets cleared. We don't mind waiting. The first one said. I really needed to learn their names and start taking control. But I needed to wait and see what Hope wanted to do. Are Danger and Danielle gone? I asked. A couple of warriors are escorting them out and helping them with their father's body. Hector doesn't want to leave until he talks to Alpha Hope. But we haven't allowed him inside. We don't want him to bother her. You have to understand. The older one said. We have been on her side for a long time. But we can't go against our Alpha's orders. That's something you don't have to worry about anymore. I said. That's a good thing. He agreed. If you excuse me. I said when I saw Sylvia walking out of Hope's room. She is taking a bath. I put some oils on the water to help her with her wounds. And I left a few bandages and creams for her when she gets out. Thank you. I said and went looking for Hope. How are you feeling? I asked, suddenly exhausted. She said, I don't know why I feel so tired. It's worse than when the tournament finished. Well, no one was really trying to kill you then. I said, well, a few of them could have fooled me. I was sure she was thinking of Alice, but even she hadn't been so vicious. Just try to relax and let the water soothe your pain. I said, well, before you start relaxing, your brother wants to talk to you. Want me to get rid of him? Yes, please. I don't want to deal with him. He made his choice. He chose them over his family. He lost the right to call himself my brother. All right. I went down the stairs. The warriors moved to let me through, but stayed in their places. I wasn't sure I liked having them between me and my mate. But I had a matter to take care of. As I expected, Hector was just outside the front door. Trying to get in. It's time for you to leave. I told him. Two warriors were blocking his way. I need to talk to my sister. He said. I won't leave until I do. Your sister wants nothing to do with you. After everything you did to her. What right do you think you have to demand to see her? I asked. Everything I did, I did it for her. He said. So, you left her behind, alone, when she needed support. You got her father killed. You offered her to a man she didn't love for her. 
It sounds to me like you did whatever you wanted and only used her as an excuse. It sounds to me as if you pushed her away when it suited you and then used her as a bargain chip when you had use of her. Your time is running out. You can ask for an audience later, but right now, there's no way I will allow you to see her. If I could just explain. He started. Luck. It would be better for you to give her some time. She is tired after her fight, and you will only make her angrier if you insist on seeing her. Leave now. I didn't mean to use an alpha command. It just happened. But at least Hope would have one less problem to deal with. Hope. I wanted to go face the pack as soon as possible. But I was too tired and ended up falling asleep. It was almost time for dinner when I woke up, and I felt awful about it. What would my pack think about me? Would they consider me weak? I was sure I wasn't giving them a good first impression. Why didn't you wake me up sooner? I asked Dagger who was on his phone. He was so busy typing that he hadn't realized I was already awake. You needed your rest. He said. And I needed some time to let everyone know what happened today. They were so eager to find out how things had gone. Grandma said she was going to contact Dune's old pack and let them know what had happened and warn them that Danger and Daniela could be on their way back just to make sure there are no misunderstandings. I also talked to Tank after you fell asleep. He already left and said he and Swift would visit once we settle in. That sounds like a good idea. I would love to have them here. And thank you for letting everyone know what happened. You got rid of Hector right? I asked. I wasn't ready to see him again. He didn't want to go, but I managed to convince him to give you some time. I know it's not my problem, but you should at least talk to him. He suggested. He betrayed me. He took their side over mine. He wasn't there when I needed him. I replied. I knew Dagger had good intentions when he tried to fix what was broken between my brother and I. But I didn't want to even think about Hector. From what I heard, Doom was very good at turning people. I'm sure he convinced him that what he was doing was for the best it doesn't mean. He didn't love you he was just misguided. I know you mean well, but I'm still feeling betrayed I loved my brother. But the man that came back wasn't the brother. I knew right now. I need time to come to terms with having my pack back. I need to see the damage that Doom caused, plus the damage my dad did before. Then I need to work on fixing everything. I need time. The last thing I wanted was to deal with Hector on top of everything else. I understand don't worry. I will follow your lead. So, what do you want to do first? He asked. Food. I'm hungry. I said, and my stomach growled to confirm my words. Your people are waiting for you, and from what I can smell, it seems they already have food ready for you. He helped me up and gave me some clothes. I did my best to gather myself, and prepared to face the rest of the pack. As soon as I walked out of the room, I could see a group of warriors, waiting for me by the stairs. Alpha, it's an honor to have you here with us, where you belong. He said. Thank you Tom. It's good to be back. It was weird, I knew them, and I liked them. But part of me, couldn't forget they had also been my jailers. It was going to be difficult to see them and not think of the times. They had kept me inside the pack house or blocked me from doing what I wanted. It's good to have you back, we miss you. We were so sad thinking you were dead. Another warrior said. But you are back where you belong. Said the younger one. I guess that means things are going to change once again. Yes. Usually a change of administration means things will change. Dagger agreed. The way he was looking at the kid was not a good one. I could tell he didn't like him. I trusted Dagger's intuition, and I knew something had to have happened for him to have that attitude. I know that the way my father was doing most things was wrong, so don't fear. 
I will turn things back to how they were if Doom did something right. I will keep it. I assured them, hoping they would believe me. We need to organize a party. Sandra, one of the housekeepers said. Not every day someone comes back from the dead. She joked. Tomorrow. I need some time to recover and go over the most important things. I said. Right now I need a big meal, and to go take a look at the office. If you don't mind Tom, could you show Dagger the patrol schedules, and everything that has to do with the warriors? He was in charge of that in the Uber pack. He could help optimize things. I heard Doom increase training. Dagger said. I'm all about training. But I would like to review and see that to make sure everything is as it should be. Don't worry we won't make any changes without discussing it first. I'm determined to be the best alpha. I can be. I have no doubt. Tom said. But he didn't look so trusting of Dagger. While we were eating, they told me a little about what had happened while I was gone. It looked like the Uber Pax petition to send people for the full moon ceremony had been both positive and negative. It had helped because one of the visitors found his true mate here. But it had also affected us because it had helped Doom spread his belief that the Uber Pack was trying to control us. My dad's madness had made true mates an easy target for Doom to exploit. And I could see that younger generations were starting to think true mates were a bad thing. Most of them were from families where the parents were true mates, as normal, but still, the attitude of their alpha, had affected their point of view. I hope that my relationship with Dagger, could help change their minds. After my meal, I went to what used to be my dad's office. Doom had erased almost everything from my dad. Only the old desk that had been there for generations, and a couple of artworks had survived. He had even painted the walls a different color. The sight almost made me cry. I missed him so much. Mostly, I missed how he was when mom was still around. I went to the desk. I tried a few different passwords, but I couldn't get access to the computer. I decided that my first task would be to get someone to help me with that. I knew that one of Dagger's people was good with computers, but I would have to ask Dagger to deal with that. I started going over whatever I could. Like most alphas, Doom still had hard copies of the most important paperwork. I will leave with the warriors to take a look around the territory. I warned them that your brother might try to sneak in, and that he should be stopped from doing so. Dagger said, Is there something else you need? A hacker to get access to Doom's computer? Maybe an auditor to take a look at the PAX accounts? I needed to make sure everything was in order, and I knew there was going to be a lot of work. We already had them on standby. He said. Grandma thought it was possible you would need them. They will be here tomorrow morning, ready for work. You had everything ready didn't you? I asked. I knew there were a few members from the Uber pack in the nearby town, ready in case we needed backup. But I wanted to avoid their help as much as possible. I didn't want anyone to accuse me of depending on the Uber pack. I like to be prepared. We weren't sure how things were going to be here. And a little help is always a good thing. Thank you. I said sincerely. I don't know what I would do without you. You would do just fine. But don't worry. You will never have to find out. Because you will never be without me. He promised, but I knew that it was an easily broken promise. No one had control over the future, and many things could happen. I was glad that I had done what I have trained so much to do. I had defeated my enemy and taken my pack back. But it was only the beginning. I still had a lot of work to do. I needed to find out everything about the pack's administration. And then, once I had everything under my control, I would finally be able to start making the changes needed to make it my own dagger. I felt like Hope was still in shock. It was hard for her to believe everything was over. At least the hard part. She had defeated Doom and taken over the pack. 
but there was still so much to do. At least she was accepting our help. I was standing at the border, waiting for the people who would help to find the true condition of the pack. It was part of what the Uber pack was known for, and we had many experts ready to do the job. When the people came, I saw an extra person in the group. Hello. I don't know if you remember me. I'm Jack I used to be part of this pack. But had to leave when I was denied my right to look for my true mate. He explained. Yes, I remember you. Swift told us she was going to let you know we were back. I extended my hand to greet him. And I noticed that some of the warriors were uneasy with Jack. Boss. Brian saluted me. I'm ready for work. Thanks for coming. We need you to work your magic on Doom's computer you know. Find everything there is to find. And if you can take a deep look into the pack's finances, make sure everything is in order. I would appreciate it. I added to our auditor. No problem boss. I'll do my best. Brian said. I could tell that some of the people from the pack weren't happy about having more people from the Uber pack with them. And I only hoped it wouldn't cause Hope any problems. Why do we need outsiders to take care of our stuff? One of the younger warriors asked. I guess he thought his question wouldn't reach our ears. But as alphas, our senses were sharper than normal. Because, kid, sometimes you need an outsider so you can get a fresh, unbiased perspective. The auditor said. It's hard for locals to find any faults with their alphas. That's why I'm often sent to packs all over the country to help them find what others wouldn't find it would be hard for any of you to find what your previous alphas did wrong and it would be impossible for Hope to be impartial. She is still very hurt over losing her father like that. You know Alpha Hope? Another one asked. Of course. I had the privilege of fighting her during the last tournament in the Uber pack. She is very strong and capable. You are lucky to have her. We know that. Another warrior said. They were there to act as guards, but I didn't like their attitude. They seemed to be very angry at us. I knew it would take them a while to get used to me, but the way some of them reacted to the Uber pack was troubling. I'll take them to the pack house. You can go back to patrolling the border. I'll see you later for training. I dismissed them, and they were not too happy to let us go. But they had no option, but to follow my orders. I had no doubt she would win. Brian said. She kicked as during the tournament. Yeah, I had no doubt either. Right now, what's important is to get everything about the pack settled down for that. We need access to Doom's computer try and see what he was working on. I instructed. I'll do my best. We arrived at the pack house. I noticed that many warriors were posted around. I had told them not to worry too much about the security around the house, and to focus on the border. I wasn't sure if they were just defying me for the sake of it, or if they were worried about hope. I knew I would have to address that problem, but that could be done later. First things first. I needed to put my people to work and make sure my mate was safe. Welcome. Hope greeted us as we walked into her office. Thank you for coming to help. It's our honor. Brian said, and without delay, he moved to where the computer was waiting. So this is it. That's the computer I found here. I'm not sure if Doom bought it, or if it was here, from my dad's time. I need everything you can find on it. I'm still trying to make sense of the pack's workings. I hope I will be able to help with that. The auditor said. It's my specialty. I guess I'll leave you to it. I said. I want to take another walk around, and maybe later we can both lead the training. I asked Hope. Sure, that sounds good. I'll find you so we can go over what you found about the training regime. I think I will go see what's going on with the welcome party. I don't want them to do something too over the top. Have fun. I said as I made my way back outside. From what we had seen, 
Doom had increased training and extended it to mandatory for everyone over the age of 15. It was actually a good thing to have the members of your pack trained to defend themselves. But the training felt more like preparation for war. I cancelled the morning training and asked everyone to gather in the afternoon. I was planning on having Hope help me see at what level everyone was, and then separate them into groups depending on their level, and also depending on their role. Unless someone was planning on becoming a warrior, basic training was more than enough. The Uber pack focused on training strong people, mostly, because it was the best way to keep the alphas under control. Most packs didn't need that. Some packs focused all their resources on a business, some just on having enough to maintain a comfortable life. Hope's father had made the pack isolated from others, and focused on being autosufficient. Dune had opened the doors of the pack, but there was still some work to be done. I found a few youngsters training despite the order. It seemed odd to me that they were there and not at school. Not all packs were big enough to have their own schools, so some of them used the school in neighboring towns, or had agreements with other packs. Shouldn't you be at school? I asked one of the teenagers. I could see from the way he turned to face me, that he was looking for a fight. But apparently, he recognized me and changed his mind. At least he was not dumb, if he could recognize I was an opponent, he couldn't mess with. We are homeschooled. He said, Wouldn't you prefer to go to school and be with people your own age? I am with people my own age. He replied, opening his arms to show the other kids around him. I see that, but wouldn't it be more fun to go to high school? I insisted. The only high school is almost an hour away. It's a waste of time to travel there when we can learn at home. It sounded like something someone had told him, not like something he believed. For some of us, it's difficult to go to school. Our presence can be overwhelming for others. But I did, and it was fun. As long as I could control my alpha aura. That's what you did yesterday, right? When it felt all heavy and stuff. A teenage girl asked. Yes, it's something most alphas can do. But if we don't learn to control it, it can be uncomfortable for others. I explained. But then, my point is, high school can be fun. Even if it's a little far, it's something to consider, if you want. The alphas never approved something like that. It's unsafe and a waste of time. The first one said. Again it sounded like a rehearsed answer. Well, you have new alphas. I think it's not a waste of time, and hope is all about freedom of choice. Think about it. If you like the idea, we will find a way to make it work. The kids looked at each other, not sure what to make of my words. Either way, training was cancelled for this morning. What are you doing here? We had nothing else to do. An Alpha Doom said we need to be prepared in case someone decides to attack our pack. A third teenager said, True, it's good to know how to defend yourselves, but it's also good to have rest days training. We'll be this afternoon, and we will be testing you. So don't tire yourselves if you want to do well. After a moment of hesitation, they all left. I would need to talk to Hope about the schooling situation as well. So many things to do. After taking a look at the training area, and making some plans for what we would be doing later, I joined Hope for lunch. How was your morning? I asked her. Well, it seems it will take a long time to understand everything on the pack. It will be easier once we get the files on Doom's computer. At least it seems that the pack's accounts are still intact. We just need to understand better how the money is invested. At least there's enough for the day-to-day -day expenses. Are you ready to face the pack? I asked once we finished our food. Not quite. But we had better start planning our training session. I want you to take charge. I will address the group and then let you guide them through training. You have more experience with that. Okay. 
Whatever you need. I agreed. Hope. I still had a lot of things going on inside my head. No matter how much I wanted to, I just couldn't stop thinking about Hector. And I was mad to recognize that I was worried about him and what he could try to do. I wasn't sure what I feared most about him. If I was afraid of his indifference or of him actually caring. He was a problem for another time, a much later time, when I was settled and I had time to process everything that had happened. It still felt unreal that dad was gone and so was his murderer and that I was back and in charge, at only 18. I had never expected my life to turn that way, but at least Dagger was with me and with him by my side. Everything felt possible. We headed to the training area. From what I had found in the few documents in the Alpha office, Doom had been seriously focusing on training. From what one of the warriors had told me, after my supposed death, he had insisted everyone should be stronger. That if I had been in better shape, I would have been able to swim out of the river, and I wouldn't have died. But the training schedule was short of brutal. They had to go through many hours of rigorous training, and then take care of their tasks. It was too much, and Dagger agreed with me. The training felt more like military exercises than caring for their health. He was indeed trying to create an army, something we didn't need anymore, but making them able to care for themselves, to protect themselves and the people they cared about, was important too. Most of the members of the pack were gathered in the training area when we arrived, at least those able to fight. I felt everyone's eyes on me, and it was harder than facing doom, or even the people of the uber pack. They were my people and for most of their lives, they had seen me as a victim. The helpless daughter of their alpha. I needed them to see me as strong. I needed to become an alpha they could respect. You got this. Dagger said, and with just three words, he made me feel much better. I know that it's been a difficult few months for all of us first. Doom took over the pack, and just as you were getting used to it, he was taken down by me upsetting everything once again. I know that most of you don't really know me. Just the idea of me. My family has been in charge of the pack for generations. I know my father failed many of you when he let himself be consumed by pain, but I will try my best to do better. My grandmother taught me all she could before she died, and I got help from other Alpas once I left here. All because I want to be a good Alpha for all of you. I know that one of the things that Doom established that you all agreed on was training for everyone. We will continue with that, with some minor changes. I took a step back and allowed Dagger to step forward, taking my place. In case someone doesn't know, I'm Hope's true mate and alpha pair. I'm originally from the Uber pack, and one of the things I was in charge of there was training. I don't know much about how things are done here. But the first step is to see where you are all standing. So we will start with a few exercises and, based on that, I will separate you into groups, and we will set up a new training regime. That suits everyone the goal here, is to make sure you are all able to defend yourselves. Understood. He asked, and I saw a few people nodding their agreement. Lead the run. He told me, and I signaled my people to follow me. We started our run, and soon the people following me started to fall back into groups. Only a few, mostly warriors, were able to keep pace with me. No matter how much they tried, soon the last group was out of my sight, not able to move fast enough. Some were still in my sight, and others were trying really hard, and were only a few feet behind. But the distance was growing the more we moved. I could see that Dagger was moving from group to group. I knew he was assessing them, deciding if they were indeed unable to keep up, or if they were faking it. After a while Dagger moved to the front with me. I think it's enough. He told me, if we keep going like this, some of them will be too tired to do anything else. Let's move back to the training area, 
and put them through some exercises. Okay, sounds good. I agreed and made my way back. Once we returned, Dagger took control once again and started to guide them through a series of exercises. It was not much different from what we usually did on the Uber pack, but I wasn't sure how it compared to their usual training. With this, I will get a better idea of how to separate them into groups. Of course, warriors will be in their own category, but I think that even they will have to be divided into two groups, and I'm not sure if age would be a good divisor. Dagger said, as we observed the groups, let's go simply by beginners, intermediate and advanced. He suggested, whatever you think is best. I can attest to the effectiveness of the training in the Uber pack. I smiled, Dagger was taking this seriously, and I was grateful for his help. I think we should stop now, or people will be too tired to celebrate. He finally said, I will post the changes later, I'm sure many of them won't like it, and I don't want anything to affect the mood during tonight's celebration. All right everybody, how are you feeling? I called out, and some only groaned, too tired for anything more. I'm sorry if we were too harsh, but we needed to see how strong you were. I have to admit that I am impressed with you all. Everyone did a good job. As you know, some of our people are preparing a small celebration. So why don't you go take a shower, and grab the rest of your families, and we will see each other at the clearing in half an hour. Everyone agreed and started to make their way to their houses. The way they were moving, half an hour would not be enough time. Following my own advice, we went to the pack house for a quick shower. Since I didn't want to be late, we showered separately. I was still avoiding the Alpha's room, because I didn't want to see Doom's damage. One of the Omegas had offered to clean the room, and I had accepted. It was Dagger who used that bathroom while I used my old one. He was ready before me, and was waiting by the time I finished. We walked together to the gathering and found that some of the members of the pack had set some tables full of food and drinks at the side. Most of the pack was gathered there. It was a good crowd and I was happy, taking that as an acceptance of my rule, even if it could be only their desire for food and a chance to party. Thank you all for coming, I said, moving to the spot where Alphas usually stood during the full moon ceremony. I know that some of you mourned my death, and I thank you for the love. I know my actions were not the best, but I didn't want to put any of you in a position where you had to go against your Alpha, and I couldn't stay any longer for those of you who don't know yet. During my last full moon ceremony here, I was attacked by Doom's son. They had been trying to convince me to take him, as my chosen mate for a while, and when we were both in animal form, he tried to make my wolf submit to him. The fight went out of hand, and I was hurt. When Doom and my own brother dismissed the attack, I cut my ties to the pack, as a way of escaping Doom, but he refused to let me go. Not many knew about the attack, and it looked like not many were aware of my issues with Doom and his son but I needed all of them to understand what had happened. I didn't want to have any misunderstanding between us. I needed to get away from here. I wanted to find my true mate, and get stronger, so I could challenge Doom. I'm sorry if my actions caused you pain. That was never my intention. We understand. Tom, one of the warriors said. I was witness to what they were doing and I felt awful. That I couldn't help you I'm glad that you could get away. And even more that you came back to us. Yes, you are our Alpha, our hope. An older man yelled from the back. Our hope. Our hope. They started to chant, and I had to fight back tears that threatened to fall. Dagger smiled at me, and took some steps back. Giving me all the attention only to me. I appreciated that. But I missed him as soon as he moved away. I know that some of you felt betrayed by my father's actions, he lost his mind, and I'm sad that he wasn't able to cope with his pain. I know he had the best of intentions, 
but he lost his way. I promise I will do my best to be the Alpha. He was supposed to be. To be an Alpha that my ancestors, and you all, can be proud of. I will fight to make this pack a great place to live. Feel free to come to me with any questions or suggestions you have. I will listen to everyone, and I will do what is best for all of us. I didn't promise to do as they wanted, just to consider them. Now, let's enjoy the feast that our Omegas prepared. Have fun everyone. The answer was mostly warm. People got closer to congratulate me and tell me that they were happy I was back. It was better than I expected, and I felt awesome by their words. But I couldn't help but note that a few of them kept their distance. Not everyone was happy with me being back. Jagger. I stood next to Hope when we arrived. I could tell she was nervous, and I needed to make her feel better. But as soon as she started to talk, my mind went to the crowd. I already knew most of her speech, since she had practiced with me, so I was more focused on how people were reacting to her words. Once people started chanting her name, I took a step back to let her enjoy her moment. This wasn't about me, it was about her finally getting what she wanted. From what I could tell by observing the crowd, most of the older ones seemed happy with her. I knew that since Hector had been gone for a long time, most people had already started to see Hope as their next alpha. Not everyone thought she would come into power the way she did. But they were happy to see her either way. The younger ones were the ones who seemed to be more hesitant to accept her. The ones who hadn't known a different life. Who had come when Hope's father was already too far gone to be of any help to the pack. They had resented him and most likely learned not to trust his family. For them, Doom must have looked like a savior, someone to put their hope and trust in. It was to be expected. Young minds were easier to influence. That had to be what had happened to Hector. Without a father figure and hurt, because of his mother's death, he was easy to manipulate. Doom must have figured that when he arrived at his pack, and once he found out, that he was the son of an alpha. He must have thought he had won the lottery, getting everything he thought he needed. Too bad he has tried to force Hope into a relationship, and had turned his back on the pack's most sacred beliefs. I hated what Hector had done to Hope, but parts of me believed he could be redeemed. He had been so broken about Hope's supposed death. He had denied it for a long time holding on to the hope that his sister could be alive. That didn't mean he got a free paw for what he had done, but maybe if the siblings talked to each other, they could find what had gone wrong between them and fix it. If Hector really did want what was best for her, then maybe he could accept he had been wrong. The problem was Daniela. Hope would never accept her since she wasn't Hector's true mate and was her father's killed. And I could guess it would be the same for Daniela. She wouldn't easily accept the woman that had killed her father. Even if Hope had given him every chance to surrender. At least Hope was really enjoying the party. Most of the people approached her to congratulate her. To tell her she had always been the rightful heir. And how they knew she was going to be a great alpha. I could tell most of them were sincere. That made me happy for Hope. She needed it. Eventually, I moved by her side and we ate and drank, and even danced for a while. It was late when we left the party. I knew from experience that most members of the pack felt more freedom to enjoy themselves when the alphas were not there. I knew the party would go on for another couple of hours, with people probably getting drunk and getting wild now that their leaders weren't there to watch them. So, how are you feeling? I asked Hope. To be truthful, I'm not sure yet it still feels a little surreal. It's been crazy. She said. People love you. They look genuinely happy that you were here. Not so happy about me. I added. I know I'm not sure if it's because of Doom and his anti-true mate's ideas, or if it has something to do with you being from the Uber pack. I think it's a little of both people are usually scared of us. 
and now they are also afraid we will come and take over their packs. Me bringing a couple of my people here didn't help. But it was necessary. I knew I could take control of the pack easily with an alpha command. I was stronger than any of them. But it was not the way I wanted to do things. I wanted their respect, and eventually their love. Well, we need help to be able to help this pack. Now, why don't you join me in the shower? She asked. We hadn't had the chance to do that earlier, and I needed to make up for the lost opportunity. And I did. I followed her into the shower, where I proceeded to clean her up just to get her all dirty again. We didn't get much chance to rest, as we were celebrating all night long. I woke up to see that Hope was already getting ready. Usually, it was me who had to wake her up. Eager to start your day. I asked from the bed. Well, your hacker told me that I would be able to access Doom's computer today. I want to start as soon as possible. You know that there are some things we still don't know and that we need before we start making decisions. I could tell she was nervous about what she would find. And it wasn't only because of Doom. She was afraid of what her father had done as well. As promised, I will be taking over training. I will post another notice for everyone to gather in the afternoon, and give them their schedules then. And I also want to talk to you about the school situation. I reminded her. Yes, but we need to talk to the parents first, and see if they are willing to send them away. It will take a couple of hours of their days. She reminded me. We can have someone driving all of the kids. Don't you have an office in the city? For business purposes? I asked. We used to have one. But my father took it down. She said. We should think about opening one. And everyone can carpool each day. With someone in charge of driving people. And with a proper vehicle. The others can use the time to work. Or finish their homework. I was already visualizing it. That's something to consider. Once we find out the situation of the pack. All right. I knew I was getting ahead. But there was so much to do. And I wanted to have everything working as it should so that Hope could relax. We went to the kitchen to grab something to eat. And then went to the office. Both my men were working. And as soon as we got inside, Brian smiled. Jackpot. He said to Hope. I think I found everything you needed I was able to access everything. The security he had was very basic. Obviously, he didn't think anyone would try to get in and I found a folder with files that I think belonged to your father. He had a lot of investments, mostly in the name of the pack, but some are in your and your brother's names. Let me see. Hope went to see and Brian started to explain everything to her. I watched for a while, trying to map what they were saying and build an idea of what was needed. The four of us worked all morning on understanding everything about the pack. Some of Doom's movements seemed suspicious, but overall, he had done good work organizing everything. He had very ambitious plans, some not entirely possible, but it was a good start. We could build from what he had done. The housekeeper brought us food around noon, and we kept working. I left them to their tasks and I focused on mine. Training. When I left for the training grounds, they were still working hard. Just like the day before, everyone was waiting when I arrived. Thank you for coming. I said. From what I saw, most of them were from zero training time to boot camp level of training. That's not good, or healthy the goal, is to make sure you can all defend yourselves, at least long enough for a warrior, to assist you in case of an attack. Instead of getting everyone working extra hard, we will decide who needs to, and who doesn't. So will you stop us from training, if we don't meet your standards? A young one asked. We will set up two training pads. One for those who are or want to become warriors, and one for the rest of you. Everyone will receive the basic training, but only warriors will get the heavy schedule. What if someone attacks us? 
We need to be ready in case of war. The same kid from before asked. War with whom? It's been years since we had a war broke out. We are friendly with all of the neighboring packs. We have already talked with a few of them. And we have the most powerful pack in the world to back us up. Who do you think would attack us? He didn't answer, and I could tell they were uneasy. There's always a risk of attack, not only by other packs, but from humans or other shifters, but the risk is minimal. We will train you in case something happens, but you don't need to worry about it. Are you really from the Uber pack? An older woman asked. Yes, I was one of the heirs. I left them to come here with my mate. But they are still my family and our allies. But doesn't that mean the Uber pack owns us? The kid said. The Uber pack doesn't have any interest in taking over Hope is in charge. I'm here to support her now. Do you want to see the new schedules? It's time to decide if you want to become a warrior. Or decide what else you can do with your life. It wouldn't be easy. They already saw me as the enemy. But I would work hard on winning them, Hope. It had been hard. But after a few weeks things had finally settled in the pack. I was starting to believe that they had really accepted me. And that they no longer saw me as a helpless kid locked inside the pack house. They finally respected me as an alpha. And it looked like Dagger too was getting the recognition he deserved. He was strong and capable and his training methods helped improve our warriors in a short time. I felt like everything was falling into place, and I could finally get some rest and enjoy my life. I should have known that things couldn't be that easy, that something would happen to break my peace. I walked into the Alpha's office, and found an envelope on top of the desk. I wasn't really worried about it. I opened it and found something I really didn't think I would see. What is it? Dagger asked. You've gone pale. I'm not sure. I offered the note to him so he could read it. It said that if I didn't go to a certain location, my brother would die. Not many people had access to the office, and it hadn't come with the mail, so that meant we had a spy within our ranks. What are you going to do about this? Dagger asked. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how to feel. Part of me thinks I wouldn't do anything, just leave him. He made his own bed. But another. He's still your brother, right? Dagger said. It's understandable you worry about him. This could be a trap. I said. He could be working with his mate and her brother to take the pack from me. I didn't tell you, because you told me not to. But your brother has been coming to the border daily to ask for an audience with you. He hasn't been here the past two days. It could mean he got tired and is trying a different method. This doesn't mean he is in danger. I tried to rationalize what was going on. But after everything, I worried about him. I can ask my parents to send someone to look into this that's what the Uber pack is for. But check the time. They want me to go there by sunset. There's not enough time for them to come here and start an investigation. Maybe we can send a few warriors to check the area. Dagger suggested. The note says that if someone other than me goes there, then they will kill him. I wasn't sure if the threat was real. And I wasn't sure if it was a risk. I wanted to take or not. What do you want to do? I don't want you to be at risk. Maybe you can follow me at a distance. I will try to see what's going on, and see if they really have Hector, or if it's something he is involved with then I will see what they want. I wasn't sure what to do. I was pretty sure this was because I had killed Doom. His son was coming after me. Let's gather some intel. I will make some calls and see if someone knows something about danger and Hector. Like me, he also suspected Doom's son. Then. I will talk to the warriors, even if they don't follow close to us, it would be good to have them within shouting distance. They left the note inside my office. We must have a spy in here. We can't risk letting the warriors know what's going on, 
not without more information. I reminded him, Okay, you and I. If they don't have more backup, it should be enough. But let's take no risks if something seems suspicious or dangerous, you leave. Dagger asked. I'll do as you ask. I don't feel like risking my life. For Hector, I'm just curious about what's going on. I said. But it was a lie, and I'm sure that Dagger knew that. I felt guilty, like I should have listened to what he had to say before. If I had just given him a chance to talk to me, he wouldn't be at risk. But maybe he wasn't in danger. Maybe he was trying to manipulate me into talking to him. I felt awful suspecting Hector. But he deserved it. He had used me, betrayed me. I had no idea why I was even contemplating going after him. Dagger reached out to his contacts to see if someone knew about their whereabouts. But no one had seen them. Even Daniela was missing. I had a bad feeling about the situation. And I knew that Dagger was also suspicious. But if there was a slim chance that my brother was in danger, I needed to go to give us a last chance. I'll be close by. Dagger said. I won't let you out of my sight. He promised. Since Dagger's senses were very developed, it gave a lot of room to act. No one would be able to detect him until it was too late. We moved as one until we reached the border. This is it. I told him. I'll continue on my own stay out of sight and don't make any unnecessary movements take care. I said. I kept moving. I was close to where I was supposed to meet with whoever had sent the note. I stopped for a moment at the limits of my territory. I knew that in half an hour a patrol was supposed to paw through the area. I wasn't sure if my enemy knew that or not, but it was something to keep in mind. I still wasn't sure that the warriors were completely loyal. I could tell from what had happened during the last full moon ceremony that some of them had accepted Dune's ideas and weren't willing to look for their true mates. I crossed the line dividing the territory and felt it in my bones. The link between an alpha and its pack was strong and I could feel the difference. I moved with caution, waiting to see who was waiting for me. I saw him first. Hector was covered in blood and hanging by the wrists from a tree. My first instinct was to run to him. But I knew it was a bad idea, and I still wasn't sure what was happening. I needed to be careful. Running to rescue him was a dumb move. Are you so cold that you won't help your brother? A feminine voice asked. Are you so cold that you can ignore your mate like that? I had only heard her talking a few times, but I was sure she was my brother's chosen mate. It was his fault that my daddy is dead. He told us that everyone would be grateful if we freed the pack from his father's tyranny. But you paid for our help by killing my daddy. He is also responsible for that. She said. What do you want to accomplish by doing this? I asked her. We want you to give us back part of what you took. Doom's son said from the other side. We know you can't give us our father back. But we want at least the rest of what was promised to us. I never promised anything. And if Hector did, he didn't have any right to do so you should go back to where you belong. Because this is never going to happen. I said. I felt uneasy. But I wasn't sure why. I still had the option of walking away. I didn't owe my brother anything. But it felt wrong to leave him especially since his allies had turned their backs on him. From the way they were acting, and what they had already done to him, I didn't doubt they would be capable of killing him. I could wait. I was sure that Dagger was close by, and the both of us could easily take the siblings. Besides, the patrol should be near, and they could act as backup if needed. All I had to do was buy some time and distract them, so Dagger could move closer. What do you think is going to happen? Even if I give you my position right now, the Uber pack is never going to accept it. An alpha position can only be won through a challenge. There are ways. He said, and then looked at his sister, 
who smirked. I don't think you have thought this through the pack saw the challenge. They know you don't belong there I have already spoken to the neighboring packs. And they know I'm the Alpha. If you arrive and claim to be the new Alpha, no one will believe you. You won the challenge, and you can take a new mate to rule beside you. She said. Don't be ridiculous. I already have a true mate. I won't take anyone else you are wasting your time. Seriously, what did you expect to happen here? Explain it to me, because I don't get it. I know you are trying to buy some time, but believe me, that's not going to work. He said. I have no idea what you are talking about. I lied. We knew you were under the chains of a true mate bond, and that makes you do stupid things. Like having your mate follow you even when the instructions were to come alone. And I also knew that you wouldn't accept me as long as you were with your true mate. So we are going to take care of that right now. A few hunters should be taking care of him right now. He said and I felt myself go cold. I turned around, ready to race back to find Dagger, and make sure he was alright. Stop. If you go, you will die alongside him. So will your brother. Isn't he the reason you came here? Are you going to leave him now? He asked. It was an easy decision. I wasn't going to sacrifice my true mate for a brother that had turned his back on me. I had only taken a few steps when I felt something hit me, and then my body started seizing. We should have known you would take the wrong side. My brother's mate said. She will go crazy like her father. Are you sure you still want her? She asked her own brother. She will be broken and I will rebuild her into someone who suits me. Don't worry soon we will be back. And we will get back what we deserve. I trust you brother. Now, let me take my useless mate down. He might still be useful to us in the future. Dagger. I could still see hope moving at a distance. But I felt something going on around me. I wasn't sure what it was, but my instincts told me to be careful. I moved carefully and noticed someone was hiding to my right. I was sure he wasn't the only one. I tried to pretend I hadn't noticed I was being followed. Parts of me worried about hope, but I knew that I had to deal with the people following me before I could think of helping hope. I jumped on a tree, and from above, I tried to find the position of whoever was following me. I saw a shadow moving between the trees, and then a bullet hit the bark of the tree next to me. The problem was, the shot was from the opposite direction of the shadow moving between trees. So at least two people, but I had a feeling there would be more. I jumped from the tree and shifted midair. I ran to where I had seen the shadow, ready to attack. I used my alpha aura to scare them. I saw a man getting ready to fire at me, and was able to dodge at the last second. But a shot from another direction, managed to hit me. Not before I jumped the one in my sight and bit him. He was wearing armor, but I had some training to face people like him, and was able to find a spot on his neck, where he had no protection. I felt his blood flood into my mouth. I wasn't sure if I had reached his jugular, but I knew he would have a hard time fighting while trying to stop the blood. I didn't care if he bled out. I just needed him out of the fight. More shots were fired, raining around me. A few even hit me. From the impacts, I could now tell there were three different shooters, all positioned at different points. I started running in zigzag making it harder for them to hit me. I needed to find them and neutralize them. But my wounds hurt and I was afraid that the bullets had poison on them, as I was feeling dizzy. We had made a mistake. We thought that Danger and Daniela wouldn't have the resources to hire anyone, and that we would only be fighting them. It was clear they had brought backup. I had to trust that Hope was taking care of herself. I needed to deal with my opponents as fast as I could. I went after the others, but they were firing at me, and it was becoming difficult to pinpoint their location. I managed to catch another, killing him wasn't as easy, 
but I managed. Still, two to go, maybe more. I needed to stop them and then go after Hope. You don't have much time. A voice called. Somehow it was echoing in the forest, and I couldn't tell where it was coming from. It's pointless to resist we can give you a quick death. There is no need to suffer anymore. I couldn't respond even if I wanted, since I was in my animal form. I used the chance to hide and rest for a moment. I was pretty sure they were humans, maybe hunters. They were using something to hide their scent, that's how I knew they were professionals. I didn't have much time, so I started moving again, hunting the hunters. There's poison running through your bloodstream right now. That confirmed my suspicions. It will lead to a slow and painful death. It depended on the kind of poison he had used. Since he was a professional, I had to trust he knew what he was talking about. But on the other hand, I was an alpha, a strong one, and that gave me some advantages over the rest. I found a hidden spot and shifted to a human. That way, parts of the venom would be burned away, then shifted again. The quick shifts took care of any open wounds, but left me exhausted. I needed to conserve energy, and only attack once I was confident I would hit them. I knew the patrol should be getting closer, but I wondered if they could hear what was going on, and there was still the fact that we could have a spy in our ranks. What if one of them was working for Dune's children? They could take longer to move through this part of the forest. I stalked my way to one of them, but before I could attack, bullets started raining around me. At least they didn't have a clear idea of where I was, since none of them hit me. But it alerted my prey of my presence. I moved away, to a secure location, from where I could see my target looking for me, ready to shoot as soon as he found me. I was at a disadvantage once again. My alpha aura was not affecting them as I expected. I couldn't understand why since they had to be humans. The only advantage I had was that they had to be confident that the poison would stop me. But I knew better. I was able to fight back. The poison wouldn't kill me like it would a normal wolf. That didn't mean it wouldn't affect me. I was already dizzy and I felt myself moving slower than usual. I had to be very smart about this. Did you get him? A voice asked, not as loud as before. He got away, but I saw blood. We definitely hit him before. The one I almost caught responded. Find him. He must be easier to find now. The other ordered. I shifted once again. That many shifts were good for my injuries but they were taking up way too much energy. I was going to be unable to move by the time I finished with them, and I still had to find Hope and see how she was doing. I climbed a big tree and hid in the branches. I searched for the enemy. I knew at least one of them was up in a tree, but he was too well hidden, and I couldn't see him. The other one was moving through the forest, and after a few moments, I was able to see him. He was looking down, searching in the bushes, or the roots of the bigger trees. I waited. I knew that sooner or later, he would be within reach. I still had no idea where the other one was, but at least that one was in my hands. I jumped on top of him. I took his rifle and used it on him. I usually didn't like firearms, but I knew how to use them. Did you find him? I heard the question. But no one was left to answer. At least that meant that there were no more hunters. Answer me. I took the rifle and went back to the tree. I couldn't move much. I could barely see. I needed to end the final hunter. Soon before I was useless. I heard howling. And I knew the patrol was getting closer. They had heard the shooting and were coming to investigate. I reined in my aura. I didn't want my own people to be affected, and started watching the treetops, looking for the final hunter. I saw flashes of light followed by the sound of shooting. I heard a cry, and I knew that he had hit one of the wolves on the patrol. At least I had his position. I positioned the rifle and searched for him. 
More flashes, more shots, and a direction. I fired, reloaded, and fired again. I wasn't sure if I had hit him. I just hoped I had. I shifted again, and ran to the last position of the hunter. I found blood, but nobody. I started following the trail, and soon I saw the last man trying to get away. I jumped at him, but he turned and too late I saw he had a knife in his hand. He stabbed me as I fell onto him, but I accepted the wound and used my weight to immobilize him. Then I attacked, tearing his neck. I needed to close the wound. It was too big and too deep. But if I shifted again, I wasn't sure I would have enough energy to do it again. With no option, I shifted again and sat with my back against the tree. Here. I called, and the wolves from the patrol moved closer. I couldn't feel animosity from any of them. But I couldn't be sure none of them were working for the enemy. Injuries. Max was hit, the other managed to hide in time. One of them reported. The bullets are coated in poison. Take him to the clinic and have someone treat him as soon as possible. Hope could be in danger. I need two of you to follow me. I said, and barely managed to stand up. With all due respect, I don't think you are in any shape to fight you should go to the clinic. The warrior said. My mate is in danger. I won't stop until I find her and make sure she is okay. Hope. I felt numb. Dagger was in danger and I couldn't help him. I was unable to move. I could barely breathe. Doom's son was standing next to me, looking down at me. He had something in his hand, a couple of cables dangling from it, a taser maybe. That would explain the feeling and my inability to move. I didn't have many options, so I shifted. What the hell is she doing? Doom's daughter asked. What does it look like? She is shifting. Her brother responded. Do something, hit her again. She yelled. The metal prongs from the taser had fallen during the shifting, and I was able to move. The change from human to wolf had given me the energy I needed. I didn't think twice about it. I attacked Doom's son. He took a gun out and pointed it at me, but I was faster and bit his wrist, forcing him to drop it. He hit me on the head with his free hand. The first couple of hits didn't affect me, but by the third, I lost my grip and he got free. He was crab walking away from me, but not fast enough. I jumped at him again, going for his throat. He had threatened me and my true mate. He deserved to die. I was about to close my teeth around him when something hit me. It took me a moment to realize that Doom's daughter had shot me. I turned as she was getting ready to shoot again. I jumped to the side and the shot hit her brother instead. Danger. I'm so sorry. She yelled and for a moment she didn't know what to do. But then all her hate showed on her face as she turned to face me. You will pay for that. I don't care what he wants, I will kill you. She started shooting at me again, but her aim was awful. I could feel blood seeping from my wound, and it hurt, but I didn't let that stop me. I dodged her while getting closer to her. When the gun clicked empty, I jumped at her, ready to kill her, but her brother, who had shifted into wolf form tackled me to the ground. We started fighting, both going for each other's throats. We were both trying to kill the other, no more pretenses. I let all of my alpha aura out, it made the wolf pause for a second, and I used that time to get some distance between us. Dune's daughter was on her knees, fighting to shrug the aura of. Despite all their bravado, None of them was strong enough to claim the pack. They were weak, and I needed to end them. I knew that the real threat was the wolf. He was already preparing to attack again. We clashed in a battle of teeth and claws. We both had been shot, but his wound had closed when he shifted. Mine was still bleeding. I needed to end the fight fast. Not only did I have to take care of the siblings, I still had to go help Dagger against the hunters. The idea of my true mate, 
facing them made my blood go cold. My father had lost my mother to them. I didn't want to lose my true mate to them as well. I knew how capable Dagger was, but the fear didn't care. I was still afraid of losing him. We had just found each other. We still had a lot to experience together. And I wasn't going to let them get away with this. They had taken my father and my brother from me. They would not take my true mate. I pushed my aura to its limits. I needed just a small opening, so I could get the upper hand. Leave my brother alone. I heard her yelling, but her words had distracted him long enough for me to bite down his throat. I bit harder, and I felt blood in my mouth. He was lashing out, clawing my sides, and doing as much damage as he could. But I felt his strength going out. I felt a hit and pain on my side. Doom's daughter had stabbed me. I told you to leave him alone. You won't take him. She lifted the knife and she was aiming at my heart. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to dodge the attack. If I wanted to avoid her attack, I would have to let her brother go. And I was so close to killing him. His movements were weak and slow. I hated to give him a chance to recover, but the risk was too great. Just as I was letting him go, another wolf attacked her, grabbing the arm that was holding the knife. The wolf's movements were slow and he didn't look that strong. She was hitting him, and I could tell she was doing some damage. It was Hector. Even after all this time I recognized his wolf. He had attacked his chosen mate. I finished Doom's son. I bit down, until I heard a crush and his body went limp under me. I let him go and went after his sister. She was still trying to fight back but she wasn't shifting. I jumped at her and tore her throat out. It was easier since she never shifted. I shifted back to human so my wound would close. I had lost a lot of blood, and I needed to stop the bleeding, or I would paw out. Are you okay? I asked Hector. He was winging next to his mate. He looked at me, tail between his legs, ears down, and I could tell he was embarrassed. I wasn't sure what to do about my brother. I wanted to know what had happened to him. But then I decided it could wait. He was hurt, but alive, and I still needed to check on Dagger. I need to go. We'll talk later. I said. I shifted again. It would be easier to move on four legs, and it would also be easier to attack. The shift took care of the last of my wounds, but it also used the last of my energy. I started running back to where I had last seen Dagger. As soon as I crossed the border into my territory, I felt the group of wolves nearby, and got the feeling something bad had happened. I was about to go crazy with worry, when I saw him stumbling through the trees, a warrior following him a few steps behind. You should at least rest for a moment. The warrior was saying. Dagger didn't respond to him. I could tell the moment he noticed me. He looked at me and decided that I was okay because he collapsed. I ran to his side and noticed he was pale and sweaty. I looked at the warrior, waiting for an explanation. He was shot at, and it looks like the bullets were coated in poison. He explained. I growled, angry at the bastards that had dared hurt my true mate. I looked around ready to tear to pieces the ones who had hurt him. The Alpha already took care of them. He assured me, and I was glad to hear him call Dagger his Alpha. I moved closer to Dagger. He hugged me, his arms around my neck, his face hiding on my shoulder. I was so afraid for you. I had no idea if they had more people with them. It seems they might have underestimated us. He sounded happy but exhausted. He was an alpha, a strong one. He was resilient, but that didn't mean he was invincible. He needed to get checked. I did too. I was too exhausted, and I wasn't sure I would have the energy for another shift. I looked back at where I had come from, and that was enough for Dagger to understand my worries. She fought her own battle. She went to retrieve her brother.
She looked at me and saw the answers he was looking in my eyes. But I had no idea how. Go and do some cleanup, bring Hector back. He ordered, and two warriors walked out of the forest, in the direction I had taken. I trusted they would help my brother, if he was still there. I had nothing else to worry about. They will take care of it. Allow me to escort you back to the clinic. The warrior said, and Dagger looked at me again. If it was just him, I had a feeling he would reject the offer. But he was looking out for me. That would be great. Dagger agreed, and allowed him to pull him up. Then accepted the offer and used him as support to walk back. I moved to his side. I was tired. But I could still make my way back. I hadn't forgotten my fear of a spy. People like Doom and his heirs, some more than they like me. There was still a possibility that someone had been working with them, especially since I found the note on the inside of my office. I needed to be careful. Even if they were gone, there could be danger lingering about. Jagger. We made our way back in one piece. I was taken to a room where they started running tests trying to identify the poison. The other warrior had already been checked, and he was in a much worse state than me. When Hope had finally shifted to human, she had explained what had happened at her end, how the siblings had ambushed her using her brother as bait. I was still surprised Hector had helped with the fight, but hoped that would mend some of the problems between him and Hope. They deserved a second chance. I told her what had happened with the hunters, and I could see the fear on her face. She had lost her mother to them, and it had brought bad memories. I was sure they had used them for exactly that reason. If they hadn't been dead, I would have torn them apart piece by piece for the pain they had caused her. She was exhausted, like me, but other than that, she was in better shape than me. Luckily. The bullets the siblings had used had no poison on them. I knew I would be okay, but it would take me longer to recover. My body was fighting the poison, and that required a lot of energy. I knew I had to tell my grandma and let her know what had happened. She needed to know that we had been attacked and had responded to it. I also needed the Uber pack to report to Doom's original pack what had happened. It wasn't their problem. But it was their family and they should know. I was mostly confident they would understand we didn't have a choice. But there was always a chance. They would be mad and try to ask for compensation. So I needed the Uber Pack's influence to act as a buffer between us and any conflict that could arise. Are you sure you are okay? Hope asked me. She was lying down next to me, looking at the monitors they had hooked me up to. I will be I just need time for my body to burn through all of the stuff. You know alphas are strong, and I'm stronger than most it's not me you should be worried about. I reminded her. They are not sure the warrior is going to make it. They are testing different antidotes, but they are still not sure what poison they used. From what they told me, it seems like it was something used for shifters in general. It would have been worse if it was something targeted at wolves. That's odd. They knew who they were coming after. I'm sure Danger and Daniela gave them all the information they needed. I said. We are not certain what the deal was. Maybe they didn't give them all the information. We won't be able to know exactly what happened. Unless we manage to contact the rest of them. You think there are more of them? She asked, and she sounded scared and angry. I think this might be related to what Ice and Risk were investigating, but there have always been hunters. Humans fear us because we are faster and stronger than them. Naturally, some of them would specialize in stopping people like us. But they usually hide and only attack those they deem a risk. It's been a while since we heard of a big group. I definitely needed to contact the Uber pack. I was fairly sure. They wouldn't be a problem now that Danger and Daniela were dead. But I couldn't risk it. I'm still worried about the note it was inside my office. That means someone put it there. Someone from inside the pack. 
Do you think that person is still a risk to us? She asked, and I wasn't sure what to say. We will need to investigate that. Maybe not, maybe yes. It depends on a lot of things. Since they don't have support anymore, everyone from Doom's family is gone. The person involved could just forget about it and accept the changes. Or try to get revenge. She added, and I had to agree with that. We still needed to be careful. After a while, Hope left to take care of the PAX businesses. I wasn't allowed to leave yet, but I was given my phone and started making calls. My family wasn't happy about me being hurt, and they told me a group was going to be sent to investigate what had happened. I was grateful for the backup, but wasn't sure how the rest of the pack was going to take it. The offer to send a medic was a good one. The warrior that had been shot and poisoned was in bad shape, and he, more than me, needed medical attention ASAP. I finished my calls and closed my eyes, but I wasn't sleeping, I was thinking. I was sure, and Hope suspected, that one of the warriors had been working with the siblings. It had to be one of the young ones, the older ones seemed to like and respect Hope. They knew her grandparents and her parents in their good years. They wanted her back. The young ones only remembered the bad years and saw Doom as their savior. My main concern was to know if they still presented a risk or not. I had work to do. I heard movement in the clinic. I didn't recognize the steps. It wasn't one of the healers, but it could be a visit. I found something odd about it. So I paid attention to the sound and could map it going into the room next to mine where the warrior was. I stood up, not an easy feat since I was still tired, but I moved closer to the door so I could hear better. I'm so sorry, a young voice said. This wasn't meant to happen. Could it be that easy? It looked like I had found my suspect and I didn't even have to leave the clinic. I waited to see who stepped out of the room. Soon, one of the younger warriors came out. Just as I suspected. He saw me and was startled. He wasn't expecting me, but then he just nodded and started walking away. That's no way to greet your alpha, I said, and I could see him flinch. I'm sorry, I'm worried about my friend. I don't know where I have my head. He explained, but still, he was showing me disrespect. What do you know about what happened? I asked. I heard you talking, and you felt guilty about your friend. I don't know what you were talking about. He said and tried to walk away. You don't like me as your alpha, do you? I asked. I don't like that the Uber pack is manipulating people and taking over the rest of us. He couldn't help answering. If the Uber pack wanted, it could take over all the packs with force, and no one would be able to stop them. But my grandma doesn't want that we stayed isolated for a long time. But we ignored a lot of problems that way. So now we want to be more involved, not to take over, but to help smaller packs to be as free as they want. You might not believe me, but that's the truth. Alpha Hope was going to be Alpha's doom heir. But you took her away and brainwashed her into thinking she was your true mate. Everything was going well before that. He accused. It seems you haven't been paying attention Hope wanted to kill Doom. Since the day he killed her father. She left the pack before I even met her. And there is no power in the world that could fake a true mate bond. You don't understand because you haven't experienced it. But I assure you. No brainwashing was involved in our union. You are doing your Alpha a disservice by thinking she is not capable of making her own decisions. She won't be happy to hear about this. I wanted to help. I never thought Alpha Danger would hire hunters. He confessed. And now he is gone, and Kit is dying and it should be you, not him. I wanted to help too. Hector said. He was standing just inside his room, and I ended up causing a lot of pain. My chosen mate turned on me. Daniela only wanted to use me for power. They including Doom, 
knew that in their pack, they would never get to rule. Not that they didn't try that's why they came here only to fulfill their ambition. I was fooled by them. I ignored my sister's wishes, because I believed I knew better than her don't let yourself be fooled by them. They were not thinking of your best interests, they only acted out of greed. No, they would never do that. The kid said. It's easy to fall into their lies I did, for a long time. I even put my sister in danger because of that. And still, she saved me. His voice was breaking and I could tell he wasn't well. He turned and walked back to his bed. This isn't over Tom. I called one of the warriors. From his grim face, I could tell he had heard our talk. Please take him to the cells. We need to know exactly what he did for the siblings. I was only trying to help. He protested. I did nothing to endanger the pack. I'll be the one to decide that. Hope said from the doorway. But not now. I have more important things to do. The young warrior looked broken, and he allowed to be taken out. You should be in bed. You are still fighting the poison. She told me. Only if you join me. I said, and she smiled at me. You are supposed to rest. She joked at me. Let's rest together. She followed me back to my room. Hope. It had been really hard to just stay still and listen as the young warrior confessed to helping Doom's family for my own good. I recognized the same speech as Hector had used. Hector, who had fought his chosen mate for me, and who has confronted the warrior about his mistakes. I knew I needed to talk to him, but I wasn't ready. First I needed time with my mate. I just wanted a few minutes with Dagger, but we ended up falling asleep. We were both tired. The fight had taken a lot out of us, and we needed to recuperate our energy. I woke up before Dagger. He was very brave. But I knew his injuries and the poison running through his body were affecting him. I left him and went to Hector's room. I guessed it was time to stop avoiding him and have an honest talk with him. As Dagger had told me, he was the last surviving member of my family. And even if I was building a new one with Dagger, he was part of my past. And I needed to decide if I wanted to keep him around. I went to his room and hesitated at the door. I knocked on it, part of me hoping he wouldn't answer. Come in. He called from inside. I opened the door and took a couple of steps inside, unsure what to do next. I was the Alpha. I was supposed to be in control, but I didn't feel like I was. How are you feeling? I finally asked, tired of the silence around us. I'm sorry. He said, I really thought I was doing the right thing I love you. Sis, I really do. Whatever else you think of me, please believe that. I see now that I was wrong, and not just because my chosen mate betrayed me. When Daniela started bitching about you killing her father, I realized how hypocritical they were being, and I finally understood your point of view. I hated father and believed you hated him too. It took me a long time to understand that you loved him despite everything. I did you wrong and I regret it. I really do. Thank you for saying that. I said. I had no idea how much I needed to hear him say that. It's the least I could do I just hope that you can forgive me someday. I know that everything I did was wrong and that I hurt you. But please, you have to believe me. I do love you. And I just wanted to keep you safe. It didn't feel that way. I confessed. It felt like you found a new family, and were using me to please them. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. He said. And I'm sorry I let you down. When you needed me I know it will be hard for you to forgive me, and that I will have to work for it. I'm just asking for the chance to do it. For a long time, I hoped you would come back and save us. Not me, but us. I believed that together we would make our father see the error of his ways. But you came back a different man. You became an enemy, not a savior. I told him, and I could see the guilt and pain reflected in his eyes. 
I miss my brother and I want him with me. I'm just not sure about you. I don't recognize you as my brother anymore. You are a stranger. Give me a chance. I can be your brother again. He pleaded, and it hurt. I wanted him. But I was afraid we could never go back to what we were. I'm afraid. I confessed. I don't want to let you in just for you to hurt me again. I will do my best just let me stay in the pack. I'll work my way into your trust, again. I will show you that I can be your brother and that you can trust in me. Just give me a chance. I swear I won't disappoint you again. I now see that you are a strong person, who knows what she wants. I will listen to you and I will respect your wishes. Please. You can stay. I agreed. Wishing this would work. But you need to give me space. I'm not ready yet I need some time to process everything that happened, and to learn to trust you again. I'll give you all the time you need I won't disappoint you, I promise. I will do whatever you need me to do. Help you in any way you need. I promise. Thanks. For now, rest and heal. I left his room, feeling like a heavy weight, had fallen of my shoulders. It wouldn't be easy, but we were on our way to becoming a family once again. I wasn't going to make it easy for him. He would have to really earn his forgiveness. But Dagger was right, I needed my brother. I went back to Dagger's room, and found him texting on his phone. One of our healers is on his way. He will arrive by noon. Dagger said. So soon. He had only called for him the day before. A couple of warriors are coming with him. They drove through the night. He explained. Ice and Risk should also arrive today. But they are coming from another place, so I'm not sure of their Ada. They know that time is important right now. They sent an expert on poisons with a variety of antidotes available. Those also need special care, and being on the road is not optimal, so they are hurrying here. Don't worry, they will save him. And Ice will take care of the hunter's investigation. He knows what he is doing. I know, I trust them. And I'm thankful for their help. But I couldn't stop thinking of the young warrior that had betrayed me and his hate towards the Uber Pack. If more people thought like him, the Uber Pack's members coming to my aid could cause trouble. Don't worry about what the rest of the pack thinks we have been visiting since Doom was in charge. This it's more of the same. They won't interfere with your job, only help. I know that, but not everyone else does. I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea, when we are just starting to get things on track, and I don't want anything to ruin it. Don't worry, everything is going to be alright. He smiled at me, and he had been right. The healer arrived and within an hour he had identified the poison and used the correct antidote. As we suspected, it was a generic poison used for shifters. It would take some time. But the warrior would make a complete recovery. Ice arrived later that night. But he already had some clues as to who was involved. There weren't many hunters left. And apparently, he was in contact with a group of them. That only targeted shifters that broke human laws. They were trying to keep a peaceful existence with us. And often provided intel on the rogue elements of their kind. Good news. The group Dagger had killed was a mercenary group that killed shifters for profit, not for sport, and apparently, the whole group was now gone thanks to Dagger. No one would seek revenge for them. We were safe from that front. I wanted nothing to do with hunters, and I was grateful Ice had dealt with them. Doom's brother was notified and he said that he wouldn't seek revenge either. He knew his brother and his ambition and didn't blame us for what had happened. He mourned the deaths of his brother, niece, and nephew, but understood it was something that was going to happen sooner, or later, if they didn't change their ways. I was warned to be careful, just in case, but it looked like we were safe from that front as well. Against all odds, everything had turned out okay. I had my pack, my true mate, 
and a bright future ahead of me. Some people still needed time to accept things had changed, but we were on our way to becoming a strong and happy pack. I was going to make my ancestors pr- Jagger. I never expected to leave my pack. I always thought that I would be old by the time I got to be an alpha, and that I would have to share that position not only with my true mate, but with my cousin and his true mate as well. I didn't feel bad about it, since the Uber pack requires a lot of effort to function, but I had to admit that being the alpha of my own pack was a totally different feeling, one that I liked. It took time, but eventually, Hope and I showed our people that we were our own people, and that the Uber pack had no control over our decisions. Ice and Risk visited every time they had the chance still traveling to different missions around the country. But people no longer feared their arrival. The youngsters finally got over their fear of true mates, once a few of them found their own, and realized what a blessing they were. The last of Doom's influence seemed to be out of the pack, and Hector had been a huge help in that department. He had told everyone willing to listen how Daniela had used him, and Danger had hurt him for failing to give the pack to them. Best of all, Hope was happy. She implemented a lot of changes that improved the pack's quality of life. Things like building a road that allowed easy access to nearby towns, giving us better access to the modern world, better education and more freedom for the members of the pack to pursue their own interests. I was sure that in the long run, these little changes would make the pack much stronger. Every business was flourishing and people were happy. What else could we wish for? I thought I had everything, but Hope still had a surprise for me. What are you thinking? She asked from the doorway of my office. We had decided to have separate offices because we couldn't get any work done otherwise. Being close to each other proved to be very distracting. I'm thinking that everything is working like a well-oiled machine, and that there are no more challenges to be tackled. I said, even if it wasn't exactly what was on my mind. Well, I'm sure we can find something to keep us occupied in fact, I'm sure of it. She said with a mysterious smile on her face. Is that so? I asked. What plan have you come up with now? Well, I'm going to tell you. But first, you have to catch me. She said and ran away. There is nothing like a good hunt to get your blood pumping, and I was primed for it. I followed her laughter out of the pack house, and watched her race for the woods. She had a good head start. I was going to enjoy the hunt. I found her dress on the edge of the forest. She had used it on purpose, because it was easy to get out of it while shifting. I took a little more time getting my clothes off so I could shift easily and started following her. I knew the woods of the territory better than I knew those around the Uber pack. The connection that the Alpha had with the territory was strong and formed a map in my mind. I knew where she was heading a couple of minutes into our run, so I was able to take a shortcut and arrived at the same time she did. She shifted and walked my way. I did the same. She threw her arms around me, and kissed me, with a desperation I responded to. We had arrived at a clearing next to the river. It was secluded enough to give us privacy, but still open enough to give us enough warning in case someone came, and enough space to plan a defense. Not that I expected any danger to find us there. I think I did catch you so. Are you going to tell me what you have planned? I asked a while later while we watched the sunset and rested from our lovemaking. Well, yes, I think it's time to tell you about the new challenge we will be facing together. It's something we will be working on for years, and it's going to be the biggest, most important challenge we are going to face. She said solemnly. I was getting worried, even if everything building up to it had been carefree and happy. Just say it. I was starting to get nervous. She didn't say anything. Instead, she took my hand and put it over her belly and smiled at me. 
It took me a moment to understand what she was hinting at. Are we having a baby? I asked in a whisper, as if loud words would break the moment and change reality. We are having a baby. She confirmed with a smile. I was in awe. It was something I didn't know I needed. It was the perfect addition to a perfect life. Hope had mostly mended her issues with Hector, but she still wanted a family. I had shared mine with her, but they were away. The baby would be the start of our own family, and if I was lucky, it would be the first of many. I kissed her belly, imagining the baby growing inside. We are going to be parents, I said. We are. She confirmed again, her face soft, her smile angelic. I didn't know I could be this happy. I said, wait until you can't sleep at night, because the baby is crying. She joked, I don't care, whatever comes, it will be worth it. We will have our heir, we will have our family. I kissed her again, and proceeded to worship every inch of her body. I never expected to leave my pack. But now I couldn't imagine any other life. I was right where I was meant to be, with the woman I loved. Hope. I never wanted to leave my pack. I always knew that my place was in the place I had been born, where all my memories, happy and sad, were. I wasn't like other heirs, who wished to find their true mate in another place, and leave the pack they had been born in. I loved my pack. Even the years when my dad's madness had turned me into a prisoner in my own home didn't change that. When my brother left, I assumed the responsibility of becoming the heir. Even when I decided to go look for my true mate, the goal was always to return. It had been hard work, but the pack had become what I always wished it was. The dark years of my dad's last years of rule were behind us and Doom's reign was barely a memory. We have accomplished what we wanted to do. Relationships with neighboring packs were good. Our connection to nearby towns was re-established and our businesses were blooming. I knew that I wouldn't have been able to do it if it wasn't for Dagger. He has been my biggest supporter and his knowledge of business inside and out of the pack was better than anyone else. He helped me turn my dreams into reality. Giving me a cub was just the icing on the cake. For the first time, since I became the Alpha, I was leaving my territory for more than a day to visit the Uber pack and present them with our future. Everyone had already visited at least once to meet little Sebastian, but not everyone at the same time. And the celebration for Alpha Nights, 90th birthday, was the perfect opportunity to have everyone together. Are you nervous? I asked Dagger as he drove us back to the Uber pack, where he had been born, and he had grown up. It's been a while since I was here, and I'm not sure how it's going to feel like besides. There's a rumor that Grandma is finally going to step down not that she will completely leave her work, but she won't be the one in charge anymore. Dagger explained. He was right, there was that rumor going around. But it was just that, a rumor. We arrived and were immediately surrounded by warriors. The warm welcome was a surprise to me. I knew that after the tournament their attitude had changed. But the welcome was more than I expected. The family came and guided us inside. Risk was waiting for her second child. Her baby girl just a few months older than my little one so she was waiting for us inside. It was strange, but comforting, to be with all the alphas of the Uber pack. Let me hold my little grandchild, Venom said, taking Sebastian out of my arms. Everyone surrounded her, trying to see or touch the baby. I see how it is, Dagger joked. There's a baby in the room, and they forget all about us. You get used to it, Risk complained. Since little Andrea came, it's like I don't exist. Oh shut it. Shadow said. You know we love you all, but a baby is a baby. She said like that explained everything, and it kind of did. Who could resist such adorable little cubs? 
Night's celebration was everything you could expect. The air was so heavy with alphas that a normal shifter would have trouble even breathing. But the stronger were sitting close to the alphas, table, and the weaker ones were further away, where it wouldn't affect them. The power in that place was immense, and I was part of it. Something I would never have expected. I have been your alpha for a long time, Knight was saying. But it's time to paw the title down to my daughter and son Shadow, and Scar, have been taking care of this pack for a long time, and acting as alphas for years now. It's time I recognized them and gave them control of the pack. I know they will make me proud, and keep doing a good job. A new generation has already been born. Our little Entria already has some of our warriors, doing her bidding. She kind of joked, everyone adored her. And our dear Sebastian, even if he is the heir of another pack, is already shaping to be an alpha, that will make us proud. She added, he will always have a place with us, even if he has his own path. And any child that comes after him will also be part of this pack, if they want to. So it's time for me to step aside, and give way to a younger generation. It was expected, so no one made much fuss about it. They all congratulated the new alphas. I moved closer tonight. I owed her so much. She had been there to support me, when I needed her. Are you sure you are ready to retire? I joked with her. No, but it's time holding on to power when the best decision is to let go is what makes tyrants. I will stay here to help my children if they need it, but I don't think they will need much. She extended her arms and I put little Sebastian in them. This right here is the future, and he, just like you, will always have a place in this pack. Never forget that. I won't thank you for everything. Nonsense. That's what family is for. She smiled at me and then turned her whole attention to the baby in her arms. I never wanted to leave my pack. As the Alpha, I never would have to leave it. My child and the children that may come later would have the whole world in their hands. Just like me, they would be able to do whatever they wanted with their lives, with the support of the Uber pack, and my own pack. I would never cut their wings like my dad tried to do with me. They would be free and they would be happy, as happy as I am now.